Anyway, let's get going with it. New, interloper, confirm. Uh, I usually play as male shepherd, so I'm going to play as fem shep, and if fem shep fails me, it'll be up to, uh, up to the man. Now, there were no rules against feats, and for once in my miserable life, I will actually use feats. I'm going to use snow walker, and I'm going to use cold fusion. There's a very strong case for using fire master. Being able to immediately start fires with almost 100% chance at the get-go would be pretty good. So I would take that, but I don't have it unlocked. And I do think in this situation Snow Walker would be better. I might really need that stamina for going the extra mile. So let's get on with that. And this is our weekly one-shot. Can I put in 277? Of course I can. Can I put in the pound sign? I really can. Oh, nice. Alright, let's get going. So, a huge amount of this is our spawn. Is it day or night? Is it in a good location? Is there a blizzard or other kinds of snow? We'll find out. Hmm, doesn't sound too windy. Doesn't sound bright though, and yeah, things can sound bright. Oh dearie me, it is snowing, it is Pleasant Valley, and it's morning. Morning is the coldest time of day. We absolutely need to get moving then. Let's see, there's... I'm in a place that has a relatively good sight line. I have managed to defamiliarize myself. Oh my god, I'll tell you what I didn't do for this. I apologize for the flow breaking moment that this is, but that is making my background a solid matte black, my desktop background that is, and then increasing the brightness of my monitor to a staggering 20% because this game gets very dark and I, like a sane person, keep my monitor extremely dark most times. I mean I spend most of my waking hours, oh well we are off to a miserable freaking start. We just shattered our delicate Canadian ankle. I can't run now. Okay, this is a disastrous start. Oh, okay. There is no timer. There's, there's nothing to check by way of time. Okay, I just have to really hope I don't get uh, rounded by a wolf then, because what can I even do here? Hmm, hmm, okay, okay, well. Wellity, wellity, well. I'm already going hypothermic because it's so bollocking cold. I'm going to very quickly drop a single stick and that's going to tell me that that is east. Okay, if that's east, then I think I'm going in a generally good-ish direction. I want to get to the farmhouse of all things here. Farmhouse will have half-decent supplies. Oh my god, I can't believe we immediately broke our ankle. Oh, right, it's hard to put into context just how bad that is, but we are we are slowed down and hobbling and can't even run, and we are immediately going to be losing quite a lot of health here. I hope to god we don't go fully hypothermic. Um, we have a hypothermic risk that is building up right now, and when that maxes out we go hypothermic, and we have to stay warm for a long time. To, uh, to get rid of it. 24 hours of never getting cold, which in a game like this is no small task. Alright, Shepard, well you've already shattered your pathetic little Canadian ankle. So surely there's no problem in just throwing you down here a bit more. Alright, alright, I think over in the distance there there's something good. Come on, let's not throw this away, shall we? I know the I know the starting situation is already grim, but let's push through. Continue to ruin those odds for everybody. Come on, Jake. It only smarts a bit. Yeah, that's just Shepard putting on a strong face. She's in terrible pain. She's in so much pain. You might notice in the bottom left, my health bar is just diminishing like crazy. It is going down by, what is it, 20% per in-game hour. And I've got double frostbite risk because Shepard decided to take a journey over to Canada 
whilst wearing uh, practically nothing. There's our clothes, there we go. So we've got a plaid shirt on, some jeans, socks, and I think those are leather shoes or running shoes. No gloves and no hat mean frostbite risk is growing on the hands and the head. And if I take frostbite risk, that is 5%, uh, or is it 10%? It's either 5 or 10% permanent unhealable damage. You can never get it back. No matter how much you warm yourself up or how much you cover up your hands, that health is just gone. I'm starting to think I'm not in the right place here. But this is the birch bark forest. I would love to stay and grab some birch bark. What I will, however, grab are some cattails, not for the food, but for the birch bark. Uh, not the birch bark. For the, the head of them. The cattail heads are good tinder. So I can use that to start a fire. Those mushrooms are useless to me because they're calories and we're not allowed calories. Right, dare I grab some birch bark while I'm here. I don't need to and I am dying here so I shouldn't... Oh, hello bear. Well, if Lord Barrington is on the prowl then I certainly shouldn't be hanging around. But if I do see a bit of birch bark here and there, I'll take it. But this staggering from my shattered ankle is just awful. The odds of immediately shattering the ankle were not high. Normally, when you're in a, when you're on a nasty slope or something, yes, you can sprain your hands and wrists. That happens. But normally, it only happens when you're overburdened. And we were absolutely not overburdened. We are not even three kilos encumbered, including our clothes. And in fact, we were less back then. Right, I see birch bark. I take birch bark. I have got to get a freaking move on. I would love some more birch bark. I'd love to not have my busted wrist, uh, busted leg, though. Alright, alright. That tiny amount of birch bark is going to have to do me. Can hear wolves all over the place, which, as I'm sure you can imagine, is not great. God, Shepherd's going so slow because we're also going into the wind. Ah, man, that frostbite risk is building bad. I really think the wind in this game knows where you're going and decides to blow directly against you whenever it can. I can't. Oh, God, there's a wolf over there. And in my current state, I'm not actually sure I could out-limp uh, out that wolf. I'm pretty sure uh, bears eat birch. I'm sure they'd happily gnaw off those bits. Right, uh, where's the farmhouse? It is around here, right? Am I looking at it over there? Or is that just a farmhouse looking rock? I might take shelter over there. Yeah, I will take shelter over there. I will I will get frostbite otherwise. <clears throat> Hell, I'm likely to get frostbite going in here regardless, but uh, we'll do what we can. I just need to warm up a bit and I should be able to warm up in there. Might even be able to sleep off this sprain, which is kind of necessary to not die right now. That a bit. I'm aware that you're in pain, Shepard. Yelling about it doesn't make me any more or less aware. Take those stones while I can. I will forget where the entrance to this place is. There we go. Now, I don't think it'll be warm in here, but it won't be quite so cold. And then I can claw, crawl my way into here and be barely, barely warm. Oh, look at that frostbite risk. I am very nearly losing a hand. Ooh, an emergency stim. Well, now that's a bit convenient. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sleep. Uh, even though I can't sleep for very long, it will bring me back some health. I think first I will pass two hours just resting here. That'll make me a bit more tired, it'll warm up outside. I myself am warming up slightly. Not enough to get rid of much of this frostbite risk though. And then I'm going to sleep in here for 
Three hours, I reckon. Well, I'll just sleep for as long as I can. When you're sleeping inside a vehicle, you get a little bit of a warmth bonus. You're not covering yourself with anything, but I imagine just the warmth of preserving heat between your back and the seat that you're sitting in. Anyway, with that amount of rest, I was able to get rid of my sprain. So, Shepard's gonna stop moaning all the time. Now, let's see if we can find anything of use in here. Other than that stem, the stem was a good find. Do I want charcoal? No, but I guess I'll take it just in case. Now, let's get looting. This is no outer loper. We can grab whatever we want and use it. Wow, that's lucky. Yeah, the stem is certainly a great find. Almost makes up for breaking our leg. Right, so dog food. Normally, I would be grabbing this going yum, 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 but uh, no. Food, calories, disallowed. If I ever accidentally... Ooh, a recycled can is actually pretty good. Antibiotics, I'll take them. They're not calories. If I do accidentally eat food, I will be able to use the console and just remove the calories and there'll be no, uh, no lingering effect from that. Not that I plan for that to happen, but you know how it can be with muscle memory. I'm not going to throw a run away just because I uh, mashed a button too quickly to put something in my belly. Besides, I'm sure people will be yelling at me to no end. One would be a fool to vote lose on a long dark challenge, says Tarkin. Absolutely. I have a great affinity to games that sound like bowel movements. And out in there, you're locked with a pry bar. And out going on over there. The frostbite risk is ever present and ever terrifying. Cured leather isn't calories, we can take that. Cloth isn't calories, we can take that. Uh, I am about to start taking dehydration damage, which is very unfortunate. I don't have any water to drink. However, if I get to the farmhouse, I will be able to drink there. And uh, the delicious toilet water should be fine for me. Generally, toilets do use potable water, at least in any country I've been in. So there's nothing uh, unsanitary about drinking toilet water. You're not drinking it out of the freaking bowl, you're drinking out of the... What's it called again? I think it's called the cistern. Don't know, it's been a while since I worked in the water industry. Uh, right, even so, even so, I'm tempted to make a bandage. I will absolutely make a bandage. Two bandages, even. It does pass a bit of time here to make me even thirstier and lose even more health, but the bandages will be able to help me if I get a sprain again. Looking back on it, the moment I got that first sprain, I should have tore my socks into pieces Water. and use the uh, the scrap cloth from the socks to make a bandage. All right, I think I want to go west. As we all know, sticks drop and show you stick north. Stick north on this map is east. So if I want to go west, we're going this way. God, I hope I'm right. I think I'm right. No good reason why I wouldn't be right. Now we're going to leg it. One of the advantages to this run is since I'm always going to be starving, there's no real problem with running lots. Running drains your calories really quickly. But who cares? Once your calories are zeroed, they don't go negative. So you can just run, 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 run. And then you just need to worry about your stamina coming back. Of course, I do have calories in my belly. You always spawn with a full belly. Our shepherd here, she's an American one way or another. She makes sure her belly is full every waking hour of every waking day. Betting the farm on wind says love saves. Please don't let me down. I like that. I like to hear a bit of desperation out of the voting masses. Also, a bit of manners, please. I'm actually going to check over there. Uh, human corpses can spawn with all kinds of things, including matches. Hmm, I'm not familiar with all the spawns in this. I'm playing... Oh, I should point that out. The version I'm playing on currently is the third release of the Tales DLC. Um, I got absolutely hoodwinked by that DLC. It's been very poorly handled, and it's more like an early access DLC. Hey, where's this corpse? There's our corpse. Our corpse has da da da, -da painkillers. Pretty good. Means if we end up in pain, 
We can take those pink hills. Tell you what, even though I really shouldn't, I'm gonna take these feathers. Is there another feather? No, that'll do. Uh, no, we, well, let's get moving. I shouldn't exhaust all my stamina because I run into a wolf, though. I could brain a wolf in the face of a stone to chase it off, but that would be assuming that I can land such a hit, and that is quite the assumption. Did I say I hate being cold? Because I really do. So this DLC, or this frozen bit of the DLC that I am playing on, was after they added the skillet and cooking and the airfield, but it does not contain the zone of contamination or the uh, travois or... I forget anything else. I'm really disenfranchised with the development of this DLC. Right, I don't need that corpse. I could take its guts and its um, other bits, but I will not. Instead, we will get indoors as quickly as possible to not take any cold damage. And there we go, we're in. We are barely warm, but barely warm is warm enough, but we are very thirsty. Aquapure is actually an interesting find. Um, it's not unthinkable that I could have a use for it. It is unthinkable that I could see down here. The only thing I'm going to stop and grab are these because it's easy to check the dryer. For some long johns and the washing machine for some nothing. But the, the thermal undies are a great find, so absolutely putting them on. I'm just going to make my way immediately upstairs. I'll check the rest of down, uh, down in the basement later on. Uh, unless the pry bar is in there, no, no, uh, where's the stairs here? Come on, eyes, work for me, not against me. Here we go. Okay, here we go, here's the toilet. Shepherd, just shove your face in there and go glug, 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 glug. And by in there, I mean in here, not in here. We're not playing Fallout. And now I can just drink a bit, and there we go, all of our needs are met. For now. We have a little bit of uh, calories in our belly, a little bit of water. We're not tired and we are barely not cold. In fact, we're actually rather warm in here. This farmhouse is well insulated. Now we get our first real influx of goods. Sadly, we find amazing stuff like this and we can't have it. So let's just leave it there as a reminder of what we cannot have. Same with these lovely peaches, verboden, flower, nope. Can opener has no use. I can't think of anything you find in a can that you'd want the can opener for. Is that strictly true? Dog food, peaches... No, no, it would all just give me food. Regrettable. We'll just leave the can opener here. I could turn the can opener into scrap metal, but how often do you really run into situations where you need more scrap metal? Especially in a run like this, nothing comes to mind. Can you not get rid of the food and leave the can? No, you cannot. In a survival situation like this, oh, see, there we go again. Dog's best friend. Why don't you go here? This is an excellent find, though. Cooking pot, definitely carrying that with me. It's going to mean much faster creation of water. Uh, I will be tearing this place apart, by the way. We can't stay here for too long due to our lack of calories in the belly. But I'm certainly on the lookout for some matches or any source of ignition. And then before the day gets too dark, I want to double back to the um, the birch bark area and gather some birch bark. After all, as I say and say often, it is the warmest time of day in the late afternoon, early evening. So as long as the weather isn't inclement, we want to go over there and rake the place clean for birch bark. I would also quite like to grab a bunch of cloth here. Actually, that's going to eat into my time. Maybe I shouldn't go out for the birch bark. I don't know. Seems like a good thing to do. If I can find a source of ignition, uh, specifically some matches, I'll go out and get the birch bark. Oh, well, that's an excellent find. Got ourselves some gloves. So now uh, all uh, chances of getting frostbite on the hands are almost nil. It could happen. What could happen is you get really wet and cold and then your gloves freeze and then they don't prevent frostbite. Of course you have to really go out of your way to put yourself in a bad situation like that. And this game is all about preparation. There's almost never a bad situation that you'll find yourself in this game that you didn't create yourself. Even that snapped ankle that I had earlier on, I could have taken it a lot easier, just crouched and slowly, slowly inched my way forward. 
And then I would have had uh, little to no chance of snapping my delicate ankles. I really need a source of light before it gets too dark, that's one thing. Stack of papers, that's an out but tinder. Mmm, good coffee. We are not allowed coffee because coffee is calories. Which is a shame because coffee is probably the best thing in the game. Take some books, I'm not overburdened and I could do with the extra, um, extra chance for starting a fire. This game does not do any adaptive difficulty. I don't think it would be very fitting for adaptive difficulty. I'm sure it would be very frustrating to do excellent with your survival skills and the game just go, yeah, nah. Here's 15 Timberwolves. Cope with the situation. Okay, uh, not a great find down here, although I'm hard pressed to complain. It's just the farmhouse has so many goodies that uh, anytime you find yourself short on something, it can feel a bit of a, yeah, come on, where's my, where are my matches, right? Matches are the big thing that I need right now. Which reminds me, oh crap, I just flashbanged myself by alt-tabbing to the wrong thing. There we go. Let's tick off matches. We know we've got them. I want a pry bar. I want a source of ignition. Without ignition, I cannot uh, boil water and I cannot make birch bark. Which will make sleeping here rather painful. I won't be able to restore health. Uh, yeah, you're right. I clicked the wrong thing, didn't I? There we go. Got sewing kit, not matches. That's right, we'll use a tool and then use it incorrectly. Fortunately, the farmhouse has a lot of water and we'll be taking it all. Because we won't be able to hang around in any one location for very long. The birch bark will go away. We'll be left high and dry. This will come in handy. Uh, the antiseptic is very unlikely to come in handy, Shepard, but I will take it for now. There's a lot of sources of cloth here, so I'm a little torn about heading out or not heading out. It all comes down to if I can find ignition. And it's not looking good. Are there normally matches in here? I do not know all of the match locations. But here's to hoping. And all things considered, Pleasant Valley not nighttime spawn was rather nice of the game. Just the immediate snapping of the ankle that had adverse effects. My super senses to try and sn you didn't learn the match look I'm sure I learned a lot from single region survivor but I also forgot a lot due to passage of time my memory is already abhorrent mm, troubling thing is it's difficult to search in the basement without a source of light and it's only getting darker down there the Sun has almost set entirely and part of this game's wonderful graphic design choices is to make indoors just pitch black even if there is uh, visible sources of light outside. Even if the lights are on indoors due to an aurora, the game just goes, nah, pitch black. That's what people want. They want to not be able to see whatsoever. Okay, so no source of ignition. A bunch of other stuff. It's thirsty work surviving in the freezing cold. All right, let's go and have a go in the basement, see if we can't find anything. It's very dark, but maybe my own eyes can adjust. There's a crate that we could smash. I will not smash that crate. Not with nothing to smash it with. Cardboard box, metal shelf. Potato sack will only have potatoes in it. So let's not waste our time with that. I'm not a big fan of sh uh, female shepherds quipping. She talks about eating horses and trees in a very jovial manner, which seems very ill-fitting for her situation. Maybe she's just really... Hey, there we go. Rainy calling me blind, and what do I do? I pull out some matches out of nowhere. Yeah, chew on that. Genuinely hope you get cataracts. It'd be the ultimate revenge for me. It's just everybody who's ever called me blind on stream wakes up one day and just finds their vision permanently clouded. Alright, well that means we can check off the match and that is indeed a big win. It means I have very little fear of heading out and exploring. Uh, I'm sure there are still some things here that I cannot see. So I wouldn't mind coming down here with a torch. I certainly don't need fuses. There's no way in, no way in heck we're doing the signal void stuff here. 
All right, all right. Might look intimidatingly late and dark, but I want that birch bark. Jesus, nobody should ever have to deal with cataracts. Exactly, just like nobody should have to deal with being called blind every working day. Ah, man. Even by uh, someone that's backing me in the wind lobby. Right, uh, before I do start a fire, let's consider how much burnable stuff we have. The answer is probably not much. I got nine sticks. Not even any firewood around here. I could break down these crates for firewood, burn them in the stove and liquidate them into torches. That would pass a disturbing amount of time, though. Not the world's biggest fan of that. Even though I have fire, it might be a better idea. Oh, but it's... How, how warm is it out there? I would really like to double back and get that birch bark. Only feels like minus 14. That's pretty damn good. And it's going to feel even warmer when I stick on a couple of hats, which I absolutely can do. Okay, okay. I think what I'm going to do then is I'm going to tear down as much cloth as I can around here, make myself a makeshift hat, two of them. I'm going to break these down for wood, liquidate them into torches, and if the situation is still good outside, no wind, no immediate problems like an aurora, we will make the pilgrimage over to the birch bark area and grab all the birch bark that we can get our grubby little hands on. Dan's have to tear apart all these curtains and things as it costs calories that I'd rather not spend, but oh, the devil's in the details. Let's go for it. It's going to get quite dark in here as well, but hey-ho. i got 12 matches, and 12 matches is a ton of matches, so we'll be okay. So now I'll just keep myself drank up a wee bit. How much water do we have? Two and a half litres. That, that would do me, personally, for about half a day. So I'm sure it can do Shepherd for a wee while. So we're going to improvise some head wraps. I'm not going to make the hand wraps because I already have some driving gloves, which seem to be in okay condition. So it takes half an hour. Let's make the head wrap. Man, I need anything. There we go, go, and we'll make another one. Plump, plump, plump. Gotta hand it to Shepard. There's no risk of failure making these. So even though you are a complete beginner at uh, working with the sewing kit. There we go. That's an extra two degrees of warmth on our head straight away. Sadly, you can't uh, make yourself any uh, socks out of nothing, but them's the breaks. Now, I don't want to stray too far from here. The stove is right here, uh, but I do really need some firewood. So I'm going to break down these crates and then we're going to start starving. And we are going to spend a lot of this run starving. There's the stove, but easy does it now. There's got to be some other stuff to break down. Can't do the table. I don't have a tool to break it with. How about the chair? No, I'd need a hatchet for you. Yeah, I know it's dark, Shepard. I'm not sure there's anything else. I oh, there's another crate over here. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I think I should not head out. What I will do is I will just drink one of my birch barks and sleep this evening. Are there any more sources of uh, of wood here? I'm starting to think that maybe I shouldn't make a fire, but I have a lot of matches. It just makes sense to do so better than starving completely through the night. So let us start a fire. I'm going to use a book because it increases the chance of actually getting the fire. Use the cattail heads, that's why I got them. Not using the birch bark, that would be that would be unforgivable. 80% uh, chance of success. Could be 100 if I'd taken the fire starting perk, but nope. Let's do it. I'm amazed he plays with voices on at all. Gonna get real tired of her I'm starving barks. Yeah, I see what you mean. Normally I decry games that just keep yelling at me. Well, wow, that didn't work. there was a 1 in 5 chance of that failing and wasting a match, and that's exactly how it went down. So let's take another 80% chance of starting fire. Come on, Shepard, you're doing this in a controlled environment. Match, tinder, and stuff to burn. Come a book, even. This isn't difficult. There we go. Got ourselves a bit of fire. Let's just shove on that reclaimed wood. And let's make water. And we have 
three different things to make water in. I'll just go the super max water with you, which is going to need two hours of fuel, but I'm sure we can manage that, right? We've got an hour 40 currently. I'm going to stick in all but one of my sticks. More will be liquidated into um, into torches later on. Drink while I can, because Shepard's a thirsty lass. Should I take one of these and explore the basement? I think I will. Let's do it. Heck, we're already... Uh, we're already starving. Let's see, I'm on the lookout for a pry bar. Pry bar would be really nice, and I know they can spawn down here. I shouldn't have taken that whetstone. It's not like I have anything to scrape down. I'll chuck that out later on when I'm upstairs. I pulled out like the world's worst torch here, but that's okay. Oh, I think I missed the lockers here. One is locked, requiring a pry bar, which I have not yet found. Uh, these are probably just gonna have food in them, carrots and things. I'm not taking the carrots. You right-click to not take something that you find. Carrots are calories and have no other use. You know, if you cook them down, it's just calories. So, no thank you. I checked these already. I checked the desk already. I didn't want that fuse. Huh. Well, the basement's a bit of a... bit of a buster. However, it did have matches next to that pail, so I can't complain too much. The matches are the great enabler in this game, after all. <laughs> Replace everything with wood needed, or Chefrin just laughing when you fail to start a fire. Chefrin laughing at you doesn't prove most situations. I need to get a whole lot of burnables. Okay, well, this, uh, this was a little bit of a bust with this fire. Actually, you know what, before we do that... I don't suppose there was a little bit of anything that I missed around here. Like breaking this chair down with my bare hand. It takes an hour to break a stool like that. How? Snap the legs off. Snap the legs. You're done. Shepard just has a way with cheesing me off. Right, so we're going to take that torch of ours. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm dropping one of these whetstones. I will keep one. I can't imagine a use for it, but it's only 100 grams. I'll take this 300 gram torch and harvest it down for its one stick. You dainty little fingers. How do Canadians live with being so pathetically weak? If I do need some desperate extra time, I can always throw in things like a book. A book gives oh, 18 minutes. Okay, then that's not great, is it? You'll be boiled momentarily make more water. I want to make rather a lot of water. Never know how long it's going to be until I can do some more. Uh, I completely forgot to prepare my birch bark, but that's easily sorted. We go to prepared birch bark. We make one. I'm going to prepare the birch bark and I'm going to drink it before I go to sleep and not a moment before. The later that I can do this through the night, the better, the tireder I'll get. So the, the more I'll get out of my sleep, and I don't want to I don't want to be leaving at first light. First light is bollocking cold in this game. At least just sitting here next to the fire is not doing us any real harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I'm a little torn. If I'd spent a little bit more time getting birch bark, I'd be in a much better situation here. As it happens, I'm gonna lose a fair bit of health through the night due to starvation. But if I'd spent any more time gathering that birch bark, there's a very real chance that I would have gotten uh, frostbitten. Or even worse, gotten rounded on by that bear or a wolf. Not that bears are much of a threat in this game. They're very slow and lumbering. They more act like area of denial. If there's a narrow passageway you can't get through because the bear is prowling, most notable over in uh, Ash Canyon, I think, when you're making the pilgrimage over to the gold mine using the narrow walkways. Alright, give me that birch bark tea, make more water. 57 minutes and that water will be good to go. And then I will liquidate the stove down into torches. And then we go to sleep. Ooh, a belligerent drunk can break a stool in under a minute. In this situation... Oh, listen to that. I don't quite think it's blizzard, but it's certainly not pleasant out there. We nip our, nip our nose out and, and check. 
It's windy and clear, which is a recipe for being absolutely freezing. It's minus 25 out here. So if I were out gathering... Uh, oh, I tell you what, I could actually have a quick cheeky nip over to this little shed, as long as there's no wolves to round on me. And I, again, I don't mind running. I've got no calories to lose anyway. Grab an extra stone. Uh, oh, a car battery. That is insanely useless. If you're doing the signal void stuff, then it's useful, but we're not. If you're playing on stalker or below, you could liquidate it into um, lead, which can be used for ammunition. But outside of bugs, you don't get that stuff. Ooh, hello. Firewood. Nice. A single lump of coal. Better than it might sound. That is a good Christmas for Shepard. I was always threatened as a kid, you know, if you're bad, Santa's just going to leave you a lump of coal in your stocking. But my childhood was very cold, so maybe getting some coal wouldn't have been all that bad. It's not unthinkable to find a tin of dog food inside uh, the doghouse, but I think that only happens in... Ooh, where's it called again? I don't know, I can't remember. Where's that really nasty place? Oh, potable water, done. Uh, we still have 33 minutes, so I'm going to boil another bit of water, but not all of it. We're going to need one torch to get us up to our Betty buys anyway. Yeah, the, ch the children do indeed yearn for the coal. Why deny them? There's that wet stone I left behind. Right, anything else to sort out in my inventory while the going is good? I absolutely cannot imagine needing this antiseptic. Okay, it's not unthinkable that I get bitten, and then I go, oh, I wish I had that antiseptic, but it's 500 grams that I'd rather not carry around with me. Otherwise, something I would like to do is turns boiling. Melted, boiled, boiling. Okay, not a, not a problem. Um... I wouldn't mind making some additional tinder plugs out of these stacks of papers and things. So I'm going to turn the stack of paper into two additional tinder. One of the more tragic things to happen in this game is running out of tinder. It can be horrible. You've got all the makings for fire and no tinder, and then you've just got that moment of, oh god, oh god, oh, oh crap. 19 minutes until you're done. Yeah, I guess I can wait for that. And if that's the case, I'm going to boil about 10 minutes worth of water out of you. If I said 10 minutes, then that's just enough time to do another Tinder plug off of the newsprint. The newsprint itself is Tinder, but I'd rather get two Tinder out of it, which are actually lighter. Right. I'm going to do some of the water boiling, boiling dry. Just trying to maximize the water that I get out of this. Alright, good enough. And then there should be four torches that we get out of you. Maybe three. Yeah, I want four. Um, there we go. Right, that's coming with me. You're coming with me. You're coming with me. And six minutes till you're done. So let's start taking some torches. That is a terrible torch. That's a good torch. You can tell by the condition in the bottom right. Some people ask me, that is a god-awful torch. Some people ask me why I say some torches are good and some are bad. It's all about the condition they're in. These are some awful, awful torches. I am actually going to be investing in more torches here. Uh, this whole piece of firewood, torches. So I was speaking with uh, Dougals about this earlier. I really think for future runs of the Long Dark, I want to not have this ability in the game, the ability to pull torches out of a fire. It's nonsensical. I think it would be far better balance-wise if you have to craft all of your torches. Put in one more stick to allow me one more torch. Grab my water, grab my tinny. Uh, I'm not going to use up this awesome torch that I have. I'm going to use this crappy 20% torch. That is the worst torch you can get out of a fire. 20%. So we are going to have one last quick check before we head upstairs. I think I have all the cloth that I need. 
That said, more cloth would be good cloth. I might see if there's cloth next to the bed and then tear some of that up before I go to sleep. Yeah, curtains here, curtains there. Curtains over here as well. All right, all right, I'll do this then. So I'm going to extinguish my fire. It's going to be pitch black. I'm going to chug a bit here. And we're going to tear this down in the darkness. And then look at the curtains. Miso says, hey, I just came over to say hi. I thought you will play Avorion. I mainly watch on YouTube thanks to the good content. I'm on episode 10 of Avorion. <laughs> I didn't expect anybody to be watching Avorion. It's more there as a personal vanity project, but more power to you. Yep, do love me some Avorion. Also love me some Long Dark. So this is probably more cloth than I'm going to need for quite some time, but I'd rather have it and not need it. Also, I have almost lost my bearings here. I think I've completely lost my bearings here, but I refuse to use a torch. Where's the bed? I thought I was looking right at the bed. A table? Chair? That doesn't sound right. Who has a table and chair next to their bed? Uh-oh, I have completely disoriented myself. Well, I'm looking at a wall right now, which is not a good sign. Sometimes it can be even hard to tell which angle you're looking at the world at. All right, that's the table, and that's the chair. Come on, there's gotta be a bed around here. Don't make me use that match, I'll regret it. We'll all regret it. Yeah, fumbling in the dark. Oh man, I had myself lined up so well to just go to curtain, 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 bed, but I must have slightly twitched in the wrong direction. All right, all right, we'll live with our mistakes then. Let's spend one whole match and realize that we were one, looking at the ceiling, and two, were uh, 90 degrees away from the bed, uh, 180 rather. Now we won't make that same mistake. Curtain, break it down. Then we look at the bed. We don't immediately sleep in the bed because we're going to drink our birch bark tea and get 100 lovely jubbly calories in our belly. Yum, yum, yum. And then we're gonna to top up the rest with water. Because the only way we're allowed to get calories in this is by drinking that tea. It has given us barely any calories. But it's given us this restore condition. That's going to be 5% condition back over the course of a, a couple of hours. And then we're just going to sleep as long as we can. We'll gain back a few bits of health, but then we'll start losing health because we're actively starving. You lose 1% condition per in-game hour when starving. I gotta say, we slept through pretty nicely. It's morning time, and now I need to really consider what I'm doing here. We're not that badly kitted out, although I'd far prefer some better uh, torso clothes here, or just better clothes in general. We are here in Pleasant Valley, and we have a decision to make. Do we go Timberwolf Mountain Ash Canyon? There are guaranteed matches, there's quite a lot of birch bark along the way, but it is overall a pair of very difficult regions. Also opens up the possibility to grabbing the backpack in Ash Canyon. It's a bit of an undertaking, probably not worth doing because most of the other resources we get along the way won't be useful to us. Or do we go through Coastal Highway, through Cinder Hills? There's no birch bark in Coastal Highway, but there's a lot in the ravine and Mystery Lake. It's a shame because I really could go for some Timberwolf Mountain Ash Canyon. If I don't go there now, I will never go there. And I can't justify going there. We're gonna to have to grab every bit of birch bark that we can here. Uh, over in, where was it anyway? I think it was over here. And then we go southeast to Coastal Highways, Cinder Hills. And then we have got to beeline it out of Coastal Highway. We can't survive in Coastal Highway for long. There is a possibility of getting birch bark in Coastal Highway, but it's only off of um, ooh, beach combing. And that's not a reliable source of it. Nothing reliable about beachcombing, really. Plus, most of the things you get off of beachcombing are fish, which are great for calories, and, of course, 
disallowed. Ooh, I missed this little bit of dog food. There's always bits like that that you can miss on a run. If you're doing a super long run, always comb back everywhere for a second try. Alright, alright, we survived one day game. Yeah, it looks like we have. Look at that. We're on day two. Is that what it says? Yeah, one day survived. Lucky us. Okay, in that case, we're going to be doubling back a little bit and then getting the heck out of here. Uh, depending on the situation, right? If it's uh, freezing cold or windy outside. Oh, well, actually, it looks rather nice. Sweet. Okay, let's get moving. Uh, where, though? I burnt both of my sticks, didn't I? Okay, well, I think it's this direction. And there's no problem with running. We're already starving. We're not going to get any more calorie deprived through running, so run we shall. I also don't get the warming up bonus from my teas, so uh, I'm a little scuppered in that regard. You said you were going to Timberwolf Mountain, remember, says Kaiser. It's good to know Kaiser's always got my back. Right, sometimes it feels like I'm so alone here against the world when I'm streaming, but I've got people that just have my back. Through thick and through thin. You know, since I plan on doing it anyway, I think I will light a torch. Uh, by do it, I mean make a fire anyway. So I'm going to light this torch. Just to get a slight temperature bonus as I'm moving around, it does slightly elevate your temperature, although, God, it is cold out here. Standard affair for mornings in this game. Uh, you wouldn't have happened to have dropped more feathers, would you? There we go. I don't know if I'll be making a bow. But if, it, if the stars do align and I end up finding a hammer, I see very little reason not to go to a forge and make myself uh, a knife and a hatchet. And of course some bits for a bow as well. Okay, mornings might be astonishingly cold, but I do appreciate how clear and wind free it is right now. Using all my crappy torches first. It's just far more efficient to use your crummy torches than to use your really good torches. Always save the good ones for later. I think that's a birch bark forest we can see right in front of us. I can get over there without taking cold damage. That'll be all the better. Technically speaking, 96%, 69% uh, of people have your back today. Like, so it's the one calling me blind just as I find some amazing matches. And uh, as Marvin says, it is 69% of the points. Because, of course, win lobbyists always end up with all the points, so, of course, they have more to spend on backing me and siphoning yet more out of the pitiful lose lobby. There is certainly a good path of logic that says don't vote against Jake on the long dark, and I have certainly played a, quite a lot of this game. It's not an easy challenge. That one piece of coal, by the way, is getting immediately put to work. I'm going to need it to overcome the minus 16 degrees here. Okay, well, we're already freezing, and now we're taking massive damage. So I absolutely want that fire set up. I'm going to warm up next to the fire, and then we're going to comb over this area in a search for... Um, in a search for birch bark. All right, come on. I know I need to hurry, but I also need to do this methodically. Don't want to set up the fire somewhere that it just immediately gets blown out, so... I will just try my luck at putting it over here. Torch, cattail head, book, good enough. Maybe could have put it a bit more central, but I wanted to warm up immediately. Come on, little fire. If the bear is still around, the bear will be cowed by this campfire. He's not cowed by my torch, but the campfire will cow him. Plus, the bears aren't a huge issue anyway. Right, campfire immediately eats this coal, and that will warm it up enough to warm me up. And I'm going to cook myself up a litre of water while I'm at it. Keep you out for now, let's not waste you. And I was really hoping I'd have some extra books or some... Uh, not books, I suppose I could put a book on, but some, uh, some sticks or something to warm myself up better on the fire. Because the fire is barely overcoming the cold here. Don't want to throw a book on... But I'll throw... no, I won't throw a book on. They're really good for starting fires with. Take the opportunity to drink water. I have a lot of water on me. What I would really like is just to immediately find two bits of birch bark. Then I could get the warming up bonus from them. So let's very quickly find ourselves either some sticks or some birch bark. 
Very quickly, he said. Do I get back home? Warm up soon. One will do. Because I still had one left over from my last uh, harvesting of the area. There we go. Now let us liquidate it into prepared birch bark. Taking active damage due to starvation, as well as every so often from the cold. If I ever let myself get cold. But making this is going to give me the warming up bonus, which will help immensely. But for the sake of all that is good, I would love to find some sticks here as well. No sticks. Grim situation. I need the heat. I guess I could take one of those crappy torches that I have and turn it into a stick. Boy, that is desperation. Can you tear down the big branch next to the fire? No. Well, maybe, but no. You mean this one? I'd need a hatchet or a hacksaw. A hatchet, even? Not, not even a hacksaw. Okay, so this prepared birch bark I'm just going to drink right now. Because I want the warming up bonus. The calories are going to waste here, which is a shame, but what can you do? You'll be boiled soon. I will grab one of my torches. And let's go on a hunt. Birch bark and sticks. I want them both, and I want them now. Kind of crazy to be desperate for sticks, but that's what I am. You might notice the uh, extinguishing popping up rapidly on the bottom. So I have left mouse click bound to a separate button on my mouse, which means I can just walk over something and click to pick it up. It just rapidly taps the button uh, about as fast as I could tap it in real life. That way I don't need to be uh, mashing a lot with my pointing finger. That'll look after those joints of mine, right? I was just talking yesterday about how I've never broken a bone uh, when I was doing DDR. I don't want... I don't want some karmic balance going on. Right, sticks. Sticks are good. Birch bark. Birch bark is good. We see both. We take both. I'm already getting pretty cold, but that's okay. The birch bark will pay for it. And the sticks will bring back the heat. I need to be fast, but I need to be methodical. Overlooking resources over here is reprehensible. And it's still going to happen, but let's try and minimize that. I mean, all these trees keep getting in the way of whatever I see. There's a corpse. There are two corpses. Let's check them both. And then get back for a quick bit of warming up. Alright, alright. Let's also not forget where we left our fire. You'd think, you know, it's a bleeding fire, how could you miss it? Easier done than said. I know I didn't mix that up. Missed by birch bark. It wasn't birch bark, it was a stick. Still useful. Not as useful, not by a long shot, but... At this stage, I am desperate. And yes, uh, we did see bear tracks earlier. Let's try not to say hello to Lord Barrington. Getting hypothermic, absolutely can't afford that. I'm freezing. Let's get back to our fire. I can see it, so that's good. But I'm still having a look around for sticks and for birch bark. Ah, okay, okay. We'll be boiled. He'll be boiled dry soon. The wind is picking up. That's a bad sign. It's a very bad sign, actually, if it blows out this fire. It did blow out my fire. Okay, alright. Uh, very, very bad sign because I'm very, very cold. Very, very bad sign. Um, this fire came in... Uh, this wind came at such a poor time for me right now. I don't even have my birch bark to warm myself up with, and I don't have any prepared. Let's let this boil. Is it too windy to add a stick, even? Yeah, too windy to sustain fire. It's one of the downsides of Interloper. The, uh, the weather changes on a dime. And I'm so cold that I will die. I can hope that the wind changes direction, but that's living on a prayer. And I already spent my cold, which was my main way of warming up here. Let's just get a sense of direction. That is east. 
Went ahead in that direction, get myself over to Cinder Hills. Alright, even if I started a fire here, it's just gonna go out. Oomph, yeah. Alright, so this is tragedy. I have a couple of options, none of them are good. Let's just get moving, shall we? Oh, I didn't check for all of the birch bark here, though. That's that's really bad. And there's a bit of birch bark. Remember, every bit of birch bark matters hugely, but hypothermic risk is almost unforgivable. It's just with this wind, I, I'm not exactly at liberty to stop and make a fire. The wind could even change direction and instantly give my fire as well. Damn, this is too much birch bark to give up on. I don't know of any caves around here. There's kind of shelter over here. It's not good shelter, though. I'd love a cave. Is there a cave nearby? That's kind of good shelter as well. This is where a map would come to my uh, incredible rescue. There is, of course, the place that I was in earlier over there. I think I'm going to go for it. I'm going to double back because I, I'm certain there is still birch bark here that I haven't found. So I'm going to go and warm up in there. Because uh, leaving this birch bark area unpicked clean is not acceptable. It must be drained dry. Got it. Someone must have picked up and moved that barn, because I swear it's further away than before. Could do without the wolves as well, thank you, because the wind also slows you down. Yeah, this is probably a bad idea, I should just set up a fire. The problem was I don't have a lot of burnables. It's kind of like Outer Loper, you end up severely lacking in things to burn to stay warm. I probably took far too much damage during that, but I'm still actively taking damage due to starvation. Let's get in here to warm up as much as we can. It's a staggering plus six in here. And then let's make ourselves as much birch bark as we can. How many are we able to make? Four. Oh, that's 20% healing, but it's only 20% healing. <laughs> uh, whilst I am here, despite being very hungry, I'm also going to sleep for two hours, because we're quite tired. We're taking damage as we sleep instead of healing, but what can you do? There we go, at least we're nice and warm, we are less tired. I could probably sleep for another hour quite happily. I guess we check the weather outside, that would decide a lot of things for us, but I want one more hour of sleep. Every hour of sleep that I'm doing here <clears throat> is costing me 1% health, but that's better than the, I think, 10% damage per hour you take when you're in hypothermic risk region. All right, how's the situation out there? Say hi to the bear, give it a hug, it'll warm you up. Okay, this is considerably better, still quite cold, but... Utterly mulching my way through these, uh, through these matches, but that's okay. We will find more. Will we? Let me think about where I'm going. Does Coastal Highway have matches? Surely. Also, I should stop in by the little <coughs> Pleasant, uh, Pleasant Valley community area, because I'm pretty sure there are matches there as well. I think is over in that direction. But as I said, grabbing uh, all of this birch bark, or at least as much as I can lay my little hands on, is of vital importance. I don't have a lot of burnables to overcome the cold right now, though that's a bit of a bummer. I really need a lot more to burn. I should have broken apart some crates inside the uh, the place that I was sleeping in earlier would have been a prime time to do so. Mm. 
Okay, I'm on birch bark. Don't you hide from me. Hey, there's our friend Lord Barrington going to check on his, uh, his friends, the corpses. He's honed on me, but don't worry about it. The bear is a very slow predator. It's only if you anger him that he starts tapping into his incredible halt powers and charges you down, and then you are boned. Unless you can shoot him, flare him, set up a fire just in time, and not a piddly little torch like I have, a proper little campfire will scare him off. Oof, right, there's a whole lot of wind, headwind. But I want to go in this general direction and get to the community area. Should be some extra matches. If I can find a second set of matches, I'll feel a lot better about wasting all the ones that I've been using so far. Remember, my goal is only to survive for 13 days, not indefinitely. So if I have resources, I should use resources. But I believe we are exiting the birch forest now, so I think that's our lot for getting birch. Hmm. Hmm. Sorely, sorely tempted to um to drink some birch bark tea, but I think I'll just push on through to get to the community area. But I could severely regret that, depending on how much healing I get. You know what? I already think I'll regret it. Uh, since I've found enough sticks here, I'm going to set up a fire against this rock. I'm going to warm up, drink my tea, and be a much happier survivor. There we go. Tinder plug, book, torch, go. Now you're running into the bear on a crest can be awful because you didn't see him coming and then suddenly he, uh, he gets mad at your presence and charges you down. Right, so the the oh my that didn't work. God, Shepherd, come on! How many eighty percent chances can she fail? I guess all of them. Come on. Ah. Right, how cold is it? Oh, Seven. Okay, okay, this should be easy then. We just dump on. 14 of you. And then let's immediately cook up some birch bark. And more birch bark. There we go. Okay, we're warming up now. We're still taking starvation damage, but at least we're not taking hypothermic damage. I want to be warmer than this. And I'm very diligent at finding sticks in this game, so I'm confident I'll be okay here for a wee bit. Uh, worst thing that can happen is that the wind changes direction and blows right on me here. Blowing out my fire and utterly scuppering me. But I've dealt with those situations before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have some birch bark. I'm going to warm up here next to my fire. Is there anything I can do to pass time? Anything to create? How many tinders do I have? I've only got two tinder plugs. Um, two minutes to ready, five minutes to ready. Oh, right, I've got some more birch bark to prepare. Only one, though. Well, one is still 5% health and a few calories, so it's more like 6% health. Give me that, give me that. Make more, make more. And then prepare myself another four Tinder Plus, please. Because cattails aren't such a priority for me, I'm not really going out of my way to grab them, so I don't have loads of cattail heads to survive off of. I think rather than going through Cinder Hills now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be spending the night over in the community area. Uh, is that true, though? It's not far from Cinder Hills to get to the other place. Hmm. Well, it'll depends. Depends what we end up picking up around the community area. Alright, alright. I could certainly go for being a little warmer here. I'm going to cook myself half a litre of water and some more birch bark. Do I have any or many more birch barks? Let's harvest this torch for its stick. This is a really crappy torch, and I'm going to be pulling a lot of torches here, so let's just harvest you as well. Feels good being warm, that's for sure. So 
seven minutes till ready. It's okay, I'll get a boost of heating from drinking it, and I'll get the warming up bonus. Too much don't melt, I don't want to take you for now. Leave myself a couple of these. Don't worry, they don't burn as long as you move them like that at least once. 15 minutes till you're boiled, and I have nothing to cook. So, once this is boiled, I'm gonna drink a tea, grab the other tea, and make my way over to the community area. And depending on how that loop goes, I will either spend the night in the community hall, or I will move over to Cinder Hills. I'm not at any risk of running out of matches, because I'm fairly certain there are guaranteed matches over there. I've almost, used almost half my box already, and it's only been a day. Grim. Yeah, I get, it's a balancing mechanic. If you could just warm up from boiling water all the time, it would be uh, fairly busted. Alright, give me that. Let's liquidate you down into torches. I don't mind grabbing a huge amount of torches, as long as they're good. And even if they're not good, I will turn them into sticks later. And I'm very much warmed up. These are some excellent torches. I swear that one was 50%. No, it's like a 35, 40%er. 30. Closer to 50, the happier I am. There's no good reason not to take every torch here, though. I can't think of one. I'm still warming up here. I'm nice and safe. Gives the wind a chance to settle down, although the wind could also transform into a blizzard. I'm going to drink one of these. The calories are going to be wasted. However, what I really want is a bit of healing and a bit of that warming up bonus. Now, let's make our way over to the community area. I'm actually taking the wrong way around for it, but whatever. The community area, I believe, is over in that direction. I hope I'm right. Could you imagine if I was wrong? I could imagine if I was wrong. The warming up bonus severely reduces the amount of heat you lose. Cinder Hills, I think, is over in those hills. Or maybe those hills, I don't know. This wind is pretty brutal, though. There's worse, right? This is far from the worst wind we've ever had, but... No wind is best wind. Wind is never your ally in this game. Uh, with one exception, actually, an exception that's actually very prudent for this challenge. Uh, windy days and blizzards actually blow free the birch bark. So the birch bark respawns after there's been a blizzard or a lot of wind. Or so I'm led to believe. Ah, cripes, where exactly is the community area? I think it might be over there. Well, I see power lines over there. That's a good sign of civilization. There's also a road here. That's an excellent sign of civilization. Oh, it's starting to snow as well. Goody, goody gumdrops. We're starving again. However, the healing that we are actively getting off of the birch bark is out healing the damage. Oh god, there are wolves around here. Yeah, the wolves prowl around the community area. So it's not a, uh, a be-all and end-all of safety. Oh yeah, crikey, this is turning into a very unpleasant evening. Normally in the early game, you just get you just power through these bad times through tea. Because the, even on, well, especially on Interloper actually, there's a lot of tea ingredients going around. So you will be drinking rosehip tea and reishi mushroom tea. Even some herbal tea that you can find. Alright, hello community! <laughs> That's the only tea we're allowed here, aside from birch bark, is the community. I know that was bad. It's a shame Dark Young isn't here, he'd be booing me for that one. He just came to me in a moment of inspiration. There's some birch trees, I'm not sure if you ever get any birch bark lying around here, but couldn't hurt to have a wee look-see. Yeah, it'll look like I do. Anyway, let's make our way into the church and hope for salvation. Yeah, wolves can certainly out-damage my healing buff. Uh, I can't have those crisps, but I will certainly have the books. Books give you a lovely bonus to starting your fire. 
up from I think 65 to 80 percent. Of course that hasn't stopped us failing like a mad lass. Book, book, I'm even taking that torch back so I can turn it into a stick. Papers for tinder, book. Papers for tinder. I don't need even more tinder. I'll even take the holy book. Uh, unfortunately, the church is not forthcoming. There is a hidden cache over here, which I'm pretty sure is packed full of stims. But you need to find a clue to get it, and I think they removed the stims in Interloper. Sometimes you can find clothes here. I can get another book. But it's not a day for clothes, it seems. Okay. Uh, given how knackered we are, there's no way I'm going through Cinder Hills. We will be sleeping here tonight. Since the indoors are absolutely allowed on this, there's also no good reason not to just go into all of these places and steal all of their goods. Check backpacks. Backpacks can have a wide variety of goods in them, including nothing. And although Shepard is complaining about the cold, it's actually not that cold. Normally I'd be plucking all of these cattails, because cattails are god. But cattails offer us very little. They're only tinder, and we just picked up loads of tinder, so no need. Is this dead body have anything good on it? No, and we can't strip dead bodies, sadly. We're not playing Rimworld here. Or maybe we are, and Shepard is just very much against wearing tainted armor. I unmuted you to hear that joke, Jake. At 3.30 a.m., good luck. Thanks for the luck, Invictus, but luck is one thing I do have. Could you offer something more substantial? How about some friendly advice? Oh, hey, well, there we go. Some painkillers. I don't need more, but I'll take more. They're very light, after all. Nothing in the fact. Reclaimed wood. Pinnacle peaches! Hey! Can't have it, so let's just leave it prominently on display for when I... Never come back to this save. Ooh, baseball cap. Useless. Improvised headgear is warmer. Nah, a cap is really only good for tearing down for cloth, and I already tore down a bunch of curtains for cloth, so... This, uh, this fairly abandoned shack was not worth our time. Anything in the back of the truck? Uh, wouldn't really call it a truck. In the back of the pickup? No. In the glove box of the pickup? No, in the visors of the pickup. Absolutely bumpless. Fortunately, though, that cup of tea that we had, combined with uh, sitting down to the fire, has allowed our heat to be more than comfortable for this. So that was an excellent choice. Uh, I'm not going to take that book. It's a skill book, which I'm never going to read. And I don't want to have the mental gymnastics of... Uh, clicking through the confirmation window to confirm burning a skill book. The game always stops you and go, are you sure you have not read this skill book? Oh, that's good. That's very good. Accelerant lamp oil. The best kind. It can be used for starting fires. It can be used for refueling the, uh, the lamp. It can be used for forging and uh, a 100% torch which I'm unlikely to ever want to do, but it's nice to have the option. I never use spray paint, and it's very heavy. Nothing in that backpack. We're getting actively very cold, but that's okay. Sometimes there's stuff in bins. Uh, that said, the only thing I think I've ever found in bins are crackers, and we are not allowed to eat crackers, so that's a shame. Righty, righty, ho, ho. Don't need yet more books. Well, like, what could I even conceivably find in this house anyway? Pry bar, hammer, potato. Sadly, even though this is the tea challenge, if I find some herbal tea, I'm not allowed to drink it. Which is a shame, because herbal tea boosts your healing rate when sleeping. <clears throat> and we are already very tight on healing while sleeping. No, we couldn't torch down a house for heat. We could tear apart a fair few things in the house, but I couldn't wrench these cabinets off the wall to burn them down. Oh, hello. Cedar firewood. Very much worth my time. I've been told off for calling it cedar. Running shoes. Well, maybe I can find a use for you. Oh, amazing. That's one of the best tops you can find in Interloper. 
Thin wool sweater. Not as piddly as the name implies. It's actually very, very good. It's almost a whole degree of warmth out of nowhere. Uh, I'm getting really tired, which is lowering my carrying capacity. You'll see it's now 27 kilos instead of 30. That will continue to drain all the way down to only 15. So I'm going to get to the community place, ditch a lot of my stuff, especially my very heavy water. And then I'm going to carry on over to the shop, loot the shop, double back to the community center. And we will spend the night there, because it is getting dark. And as much as I'm confident I could make it through Cinder Hills... Which is the coal mine, full of coal, by the way. Uh, Cinder Hills will single handedly fulfill probably the entire run's need for coal. But it will be very, very heavy and very, very worth it. Um, where was I going with that? Yes, lots of coal to be had in Cinder Hills, but going through it would be worse for me than simply stopping here for the night, drinking my tea, resting up. It's a uh, coastal highway that I need to rush through. Oh, hello. Now that's good. Right. In fact, I'll ditch my stuff next to these work boots then with that in mind. Uh, like you and you, but most of all, all of you. And then I'm, I'm light as a feather already, so I'll just, I'll just make do with that. Uh, this place will be looted on my way back. For now, though, I have to check out the shop as a matter of priority. Why is a shop a priority? Well, normally it'd be full of nice foodie things for me to have. Well, full of isn't quite right. It's not going to be packed to the brim. We can't have any of that food, but what we can certainly have are the matches, which usually spawn in there. I remember that much from... Eh, did, I, did I find those in single region? Anyway, I mentally see a box of matches on the... Um, on the counter in that shop, so I have some confidence. That even if they're not there, they do normally spawn there. Quick look in the cars and things around it before I pop in. Uh, Canadians are just so trusting they'll leave the boots of their car unlocked. And I've had some marginal healing, despite being starving, thanks to our birch bark tea. Which I still have four more of. That's 20% healing in my pocket. A little more if I time it good, and I will be timing it good this evening. Gotta warm up some Quit your moaning, Shepard. You're warm in here. So there's some ketchup crisps, which I cannot have. There are not matches on the counter. Well, bum. Spray paint. More beef jerky, which I cannot eat. Damn, I was counting on there being matches here. Because I have been very... Ooh, accelerant is good. I've been very uh, hands-on in utilizing my matches in the hopes that I would have replacements. No money in the counter. Oh, that's a disappointment. There's some oats that I cannot eat. This fire is getting a little lame. Hey, there we go. Needs this anymore. Trust the intuition. The primordial truths that rest in my head. Alright. There's a whole lot of nothing going on in here. Let's ditch the torch, grab another torch, and chain the fire. Is it gamey? Yeah, probably. Is it the difference between life and death? Ooh, marine flare. That's a nice find. That will even scare off timber wolves. Not that we have any intention of running into them, but more than anything, it is a source of ignition that will work in wind. There's a lot of tatties in here. I probably shouldn't waste my time searching these. They're never going to have anything other than food. All right, this was an amazing place to find. Marine flare, 12 matches. Let's move. Gonna go back to the community. Oh, it's way dark. Cinder Hills is over there. I'd cross over there, take a flippant turn to the right, and then make my way out. So we haven't had long dark on this channel in almost a year. I think it was July last year that I was doing my last runs of Single Region Survivor. Let's take that stew recipe. And it was Dougal's that said that watching it's given the, the tingle to play Long Dark again. I wonder if anybody else is getting that. I, I love watching other people play Long Dark. Specifically within the community. I don't tend to watch many Twitch streams. But if it's people in the community, I usually like to stop by. Oh, crumbs. I did not mean to pick that up. I just clicked through it, but that's okay. I didn't eat it. We just drop it. 
and leave it prominently on display. What kind of disgusting person eats food around their computer? Ugh. I did used to do that, but uh, I decided to stop doing that because I started looking at myself going, what a, what a disgrace you've become. Right, yet more water. Can't have too much of it. I love watching it, but I hate playing it, says Bazzy Joe. Care to elaborate? I mean, there are some games I love to watch and hate to play, like Shin Megami Tensei. Stuff will come in handy. A third sewing kit. Unfortunately, only the first sewing kit is of any real value. Uh, I'll gather up that water later. It's right next to the bed, anyway. Gonna do a full search of this place. I don't need to cook anything up. There is no value in warming up my birch bark teas, because I'm already warm and indoors, and I'm not heading out. The value in warming them up is when I'm going out on the prowl, sire. Yeah, this place is abandoned. The whole island is abandoned. It's kind of hand-waved away how the whole place got uh, evacuated or abandoned so quickly. The story mode tries to explain it, but I think it just makes it look even less plausible than if it's just presumed with no further explanation. Alright, there's a very nice stove here. It's a six hobber. Oh, easy now. I don't want to lose my torch. The need for map memorization turns me off. Well, we do have a quality of life setting on the mod. I say we, Dougal's made it. Uh, that will enable the map. In fact, there's even a console command to enable the map when playing, so you can always have that to check out. And, of course, there are just plain old maps if you want to consult. I shared that opinion. I really did not like the fact that uh, I would say a good 70% or more percentage of your skill comes from map knowledge. And the rest is both gameplay knowledge and uh, abilities to improvise and just generally play well. But map knowledge counts so much. If you, if I didn't know where the farmhouse was, where... Oh, I've got another one. Where this community area was, where I could get the birch bark. I'd just be dead on arrival here. And when I started playing this game, on Interloper of course, why settle for less, uh, I did just spawn and die. And I thought, well this is no fun. But the moment I knew where things were, things got a whole lot better. Which version of the game works with the quality of life mod? Uh, I froze my copy of the third release of Tales. Pinnacle Peaches, not allowed it, so I just put it back. It'll spoil in that cupboard and despawn, but such is life for Pinnacle Peaches. It's gonna be a lot of sleep I want to do tonight. I'm probably gonna drink a lot of birch bark this evening. Just so I can maximize my healing. I'll probably drink three of my four cups of birch bark. So that way I can get the calories and the healing maximized. I think we searched everything here though. There was not much. This skillet I will not take with me. It's better than a... Um, it's better than a tinny. But not by much. Not enough for me to think it's worth carrying around for one kilo. Whereas the cooking pot... Or am I even looking anyway? Here we go. Wait, where's my cooking pot? Oh, I dropped it over here. The cooking pot also weighs a kilo, but it has double the capacity, so it's really good for making huge amounts of water. Right, well, just give me all of this. Is there anything I need to do here? Anything at all? I will tear apart these curtains, do anything else needed, and then go to sleep. Oh, there's a little bit of light coming in. That's eerie. What's causing that light? Probably asking fewer questions is better than asking more questions here. Just position ourselves back on the bed. So if ever I need to go to bed, I just look down. As long as I don't move, I can just look down. So I'm going to holster my fire and I'm going to do some uh, spring cleaning of my everything right now. So first and foremost... I already have seven tinder. I don't need to make you into more tinder, but I will. So, 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 so. Tinder plugs out of stacks of paper. I'll just make four more. Because like I said, I'm not going out of my way for cattails. Normally cattail heads are my tinder. So instead I have to make these other tinders. Could make a 100% torch. It doesn't even cost that much lamp oil. Uh, and yes, I would like it if this was the only way to make torches. Pulling them out of fires is, you know, feels great, but it's just too powerful. We made it so far just by bringing torches. It would also kill the chaining of fire command, um, 
exploit dare I say completely uh, this all looks fine I'll just burn this book wow that's a lot more books than I need I'll happily ditch those when the time comes nobody needs this many painkillers I'll only keep two stacks of them I shouldn't need these water purification tablets I'm just going to drop them as well I should equip my best clothes and that includes these work boots they are a lot heavier than running shoes and actually, funnily enough, these decent running shoes that I'm actively wearing are the best. Those work boots would get better if I had repaired them with cloth and leather. And it does repair a lot of them. Can't do it right now because it's dark, right? Wait, what? Okay, for some reason it was light for a little while. I will hold on to you, actually, and strongly consider repairing you and using you, which means I'm just going to harvest... Uh, the cured leather off of my existing running shoes. And yeah, this takes time, but that's okay. I, I don't mind sleeping until pretty late into the day. We'll just keep ourselves with that. Let's grab ourselves some extra cloth while we're at it. Animal fat instead of lamp oil. Do you think you would have the wherewithal to render fat into something burnable for a torch? I don't think I could. I mean, I could try, but I'm not sure it'd be worth the effort when there's just lamp oil to be had around the area. Yeah, maybe you're just a far better survivalist than me. I'm not much of a survivalist. I'd die in this situation. No questions asked. I'm not one of those mad people that thinks I could out-wrestle a bear. I don't need all these sewing kits, and I will tear apart my crummy torches. Yeah, the taxidermy deer is glowing, probably because it came straight out of Nancy Drew and Icicle Creek. I've never seen Northern Lions, so I don't know anything I'm in particularly sh throwing shade at. The only things I hear about Northern Lion are here secondhand off of Hamster, who goes on about how much he can't stand him and how much he just keeps watching it. Mad individual, right. Six stones are three too many stones. Yeah, I'm just, I'm throwing all this junk on my bed and then sleeping on it. That's how tired we are. I don't even need one charcoal, let alone two, but I will hold on to one just in case. Never know, I could run into a situation where I have no idea where I am, but charcoaling to map the area and figure it out could help me out. I'll never forget or forgive Pepper for giving me frostbite from using that stuff before, though. Okay, is there anything else I need to do before I go nighty-night? My improvised head wraps are in surprisingly good nick. Those things fall apart very quickly and easily. Uh, I wouldn't bother repairing this raggedy old plaid shirt. The only things I bother repairing right now are the work boots, and I may do that in the morning. Could be well worth my time to get the extra condition out of these work boots. It takes a lot of time and resources and has a 30% chance of failure, but if I get it done in one or two tries, it's well worth it in my opinion. Otherwise, we are slightly overweight, but we have way too much water anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drink three cups of birch bark tea. Decadent, I know. But the way I see it is it's going to give me healing. The healing stacks, by the way. Restore condition for two hours, and then you drink another one. And then you get restore condition for four hours, and then you drink another one. And yeah, it fills me up on water, but that's also good. Now I have restore condition for six hours. And I have 300 calories in my belly. So I'm going to sleep for 10 hours. I will starve. Right? No question about it. I'm going to starve during this. However, this sleep should give me a monstrous amount of healing. I also can hear that I'm sleeping through a blizzard. There we go. Look at that. Let's just get our dehydration taken care of as well. Not too shabby. I be dying from starvation. Yeah, she complains, but she loves it. Um, I'm an, I'm an, I'm. No, there's no point in taking this off the bed. It doesn't make any real odds. Shepherd is actively starving. But we can kind of handle that. Kind of. Hmm, definitely going to drink another birch bark before I head on out. But things start getting very dangerous because my access to birch bark gets very grim. I don't have access to birch bark leaving Pleasant Valley or anywhere through Coastal Highway until I hit the ravine. And even then, it's the other side of the ravine as the birch bark. So I've got a long way to go before I have any access to a reasonable amount of healing. So this is going to cost me a lot of my health. 
I do have a stim for 15% uh, health back if things look incredibly grim, but here's hoping it doesn't even get to that point. Even so, before I head off, I am going to try to fix these work boots. 50% repair amount is a lot. Odds of success aren't amazing, but let's go, Shepard. If you're going to fail, fail early, please. Nice. We got it. We got it. Excellent. So going from 0.8 and 0.4 to 1.8 and 0.9. Excellent. And that means I could just tear these things apart. Not worth the one hour that it would take to tear apart. And I don't think I'm that desperate for cured leather. So I think I'd rather just leave these shoes behind. Otherwise, otherwise, I'm going to drop that sewing kit that I've used for a fair few things. Pick up a 100% sewing kit. Just might as well maximize that while I'm at it. Uh, yeah, we're hungry. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to check the weather before I head on out. And then I'm going to start a fire and warm up my tea. Weather isn't amazing, but I've seen a lot worse. Is it worth taking a wee nap? Mm, I don't think so. I'm going to want to be on my best coming out of Cinder Hills. I don't particularly want to drink my birch bark tea now, though, but I really want the warming up bonus for this journey in case it goes south. Uh, hmm. Genuinely pondering this one. Uh, that warming up bonus is pretty huge, but the calories would pretty much instantly go to waste. Oh, what the heck, let's do it. Right, let's start a wee fire here. Can't you just stay here for 13 days? I'd starve to death. I'd starve to death in two days, two and a half days. Start a fire. I'm not going to use a book this time. I'm just going to use a stick. I'm not going to use my precious accelerant. 60% chance of success, but I'm not in a dangerous situation, so I don't mind using uh, sticks here for a lower chance of starting a fire. Of course, nine books is overkill, but I'm happy to ditch books if the need arises. Yeah, so I lose 24% condition every day due to starvation, so I need to, I need to work against that. Alright, a simple stick is all I need. I just put my pot down, and then I cook up my birch bark tea. It's not really cooking it, I'm only warming it up. Let's put that torch out while the going is good. Never seen a stove heat up this quickly, especially a stove that's fired this way. And to be clear, I have no additional birch bark. Well, I've got one piece, but I need two to prepare birch bark. Let me shove on one extra stick just so I can pull a torch out of you. And you know what? I, I really do have too many books. I'm going to drop three books right now just to lower my weight a fair bit. Grab the torch, grab the tea, grab the pot, and let's go. Hope I didn't leave anything or forget anything here, but we've got places to be. Once I get a little bit cold, I'm going to drink my lovely hot tea to warm up and get the warming up bonus, but we are saying goodbye to Unpleasant Valley. Uh, credit where it's due, Pleasant Valley was not its usual heap of ass and chips. Normally, Pleasant Valley has horrible, horrible weather and is a very cold region. Different regions do have different temperatures, and this one gets very cold. There's no point in not running. I suppose my fatigue is an issue. You might notice that the fatigue in the bottom left has got an exclamation mark and a bit of yellow on it. And a bit of red on it, yeesh. Uh, that is telling me that I have starved Shepherd so exhaustively that she is not able to fully rest. I don't know how big that red bar gets due to starvation, but I'm gonna guess bigger than I want it to be. Alright, how exactly do I get to Cinder Hills from here again? Truthfully, I don't remember. Been a while since I've come through here to get out to Cinder Hills. No, and more no. I guess I could check in here. We might get to the point where I could mathematically just stay in one location and... Uh, and survive, but that would require me having a lot of birch bark and being quite late into the run. We have now survived for about two days. That's some nice crisps, but I can't have it. Honestly, this isn't going to have anything that I can use. It's just going to be food and... Oh, well, this could be clothes. Clothes could absolutely be useful. Always on the lookout for clothes until you have pretty much best-in-slot gear. 
most of which you have to make for yourself. Although you can't make the best socks, you have to find wool socks, and we have not found any so far. I haven't found any socks. Wool socks give a surprisingly good boost to warmth. There's a summit soda, which I cannot drink. Maybe there's some first aid stuff over here of any use, although I can't imagine what there would be. I, I don't need anymore. antibiotics. Do I already have antibiotics? Yes, I do. All right. Uh, do I want more water? No, I have plenty of water. It would just weigh me down at this point. I have a lot of torches. Let's keep them used up. And let's go. Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm going to let my tea cool down at this rate. And I don't want that. There we go. Let's drink it while it's still hot. No need to fear the wolf. The wolf will stalk me a bit, but that's uh, nobody's business but the wolves. Now, Cinder Hills is generally in this direction-ish, so I'm sure I'll be fine if I just go in this direction. And by go, I mean run. I may have to spend a very, very hungry night over in... Um, in Coastal Highway, over in the Consett shop. I'm not thrilled at that prospect. But I kind of have to. Just like this wolf kind of has to buzz off. Hey, Wolfie, come on, come on, come and have a freaking go. Is there another one? Oh, there was another one. Get out of here. That ain't your dinner. Oh, I turned myself around. Now I don't know where I am. That's bad ish. I think I need to go up there. That seems about right. Ooh, ooh, there's a cave here. I kind of know this place. Let's check out this cave. Go pet the doggy. Yeah, I'll pet him with an arrow when I can. Starvation is going to get really ugly going through the, uh, the next region, Coastal Highway. Alright, there is a whole lot of nothing in this cave, regrettably. Dang. Oh well. At least I have a good idea of where I am, though. I need to come down and around. Okay, yeah, you just you just get out of here. Not made of torches here, funnily enough. I can't remember if you can start a fire inside Cinder Hills or not, but I actually think that you cannot. It's so sad to hear the wolves whine like that. Well, what's even sadder is that I have no weapon to beat wolves back with. No crowbar, no hammer, no hatchet, no knife. So if they do get me, uh, they're going to hurt, and they're going to hurt extra bad because I have low uh, low stamina as well. Not stamina, but fatigue. But low fatigue makes no sense. Holy gee, he <laughs> spooked me there. He really did just want a petting. He was a good dog, and I, uh, I let him down. Anyway, if you have fatigue issues... Yeah, that's a better way of putting it. If you've got fatigue issues, you take extra damage from the wolves. Baron had a really bad time with wolves in this game. Just every single time there were wolves, Baron was in for a bad time. Felt bad seeing him. Alright, this is the path up to Cinder Hills. Hey, look at that. There's even a sign for it. Wonder Bar. I can just move with one. Actually, I can move with zero hands. This game has an auto-walk button. Very handy. Hmm. Shepard has to stay hydrated, and so shall I. I'm being stalked by the wolf, but it's of no consequence. The wolf can't follow me into the mine. So, hopefully you can understand now why it's so important not to take cold damage, because I'm going to be taking lots of starvation damage. So, that can generally be outhealed with a gener uh, generous amount of uh, delicious birch bark tea, but the cold damage you can't run away from. Not with birch bark alone. So I need to prevent the cold damage whilst mitigating as much of the starvation damage as I can. That's why my early start when I was limping through the frozen environment hurts so badly. I took about half my health damage when I you know if I if I hadn't fractured my delicate Canadian ankle, I would have been fine with. That actually worked out pretty well. I'm not even sure I needed the warming up bonus from the birch bark tea. But now I have no teas, no ways of healing anymore. 
At least once this thing runs out. Now we simply starve. And you cannot start a campfire in here. Okay. Well, this being Cinder Hills, it is full of coal. We shall grab every bit of coal we can. And at the end of Cinder Hills, we will triage our belongings. And try and end up with enough coal to just happily make our way through. I don't mind throwing away books. In order to make room for coal. Coal is... Wait, oh, God, I turned myself around there. Right, I think it's over here. Is there a stim in here? There might be. I should try my luck at finding some. Ye no. Oh, but there's a hacksaw! Oh, lucky day. Normally, that's an amazing find. However... Ooh, work gloves. New work gloves. Toasty. All right, goodbye crappy driving gloves. Ooh, but I could harvest them in ten minutes. I'll hold on to them for now, then. I might yet need that cured leather. No, I'm thinking too long term. I am not going to need cured leather. So let's go and just ditch these things. Oh, they only went ten grand. Bye. Yeah, so the hacksaw is normally amazing because it speeds up your acquisition of meat off of corpses massively. And it means you don't need corpses to thaw before you take their meat. So it saves a lot of time, it saves fuel, it gets you calories. It, you, you use fewer calories ripping off meat with a hacksaw rather than using uh, your bare hands. And on top of all of that, it can be fixed just with bits of metal. You don't need a whetstone, you don't need to go to a forge. It's amazing. The hacksaw is, after matches, the single greatest thing to find. In a normal run, but in this run, we can't use animal meat. I guess we could use it to grab guts if we wanted to make things that required guts. Is there anything we're going to make that requires guts? Not in a 13 day run, there's not. Get saplings now if you plan on getting the boat. There is no... I mean, it would be nice. It's a nice idea. But I'm not going and getting the bow. I can't think of any reasonable use it would have for a run like this. Because even if I had a bow, what do I do with a bow? You hunt wolves, you hunt the bear, you hunt the moose. Okay, what do I get out of that? Loads of meat that you cannot eat. And uh, some animal materials that you will not be able to use within 13 days. I can't imagine a use for that. Scrap metal. Tin of sardines, another tinned piece of food that we're not allowed to eat for the challenge. I'm getting surprisingly tired coming through all of this. This isn't Minecraft, I can't just put a piece of coal on the end of my stick and have it burn forever, sadly. Did they ever make <coughs> a torch? <coughs> Excuse me. Did they ever make a torch in Minecraft that wasn't either... Uh, thing on stick or the jack-o'-lantern because I like the jack-o'-lantern in terms of gameplay. There's a light that you can put anywhere, it works underwater. I didn't like the fact that there was a jack-o'-lantern. That just seemed out of place. But I have not played Minecraft in a very long time. Yeah, redstone as well, but that's just redstone on stick and it's not very good at lighting. It's more for using programmed commands. I've played quite a lot of Minecraft, but who didn't? I think that's the exit over there. I'll have a quick look over here. Who knows, there might be a stem. There is a huge amount of coal, though. And that is good. Has a corpse? Corpse got anything good? Nope. Like a... Like a dead spouse. Just drops a wing. Uh, just drops a ring that's lost its enchantment. Another sewing kit. This game is littered with sewing kits in this run, but we don't need them. We already have two. One is already plenty for a run like this. Two is just in case I somehow do a lot of sewing and break the hello stim. Two stims. This run's got legs. I now have two get-out-of-jail-free cards, and that's good. I'm also massively overburdened with goods here. Can we leave yet? I need to get out of here. I need to proceed. I'm not even picking up any more... Well, I suppose I am, haven't I? I'll do the big triage at the end. 
probably ditch books in favour of coal. I see the light at the literal end of the tunnel. <coughs> Excuse me, I need a coughing fit here. There we go, clearly allergic to my amazing play. Clearly not looking up game FAQs in the other corner. Uh, simple tools, I will take them. Tools don't really enable anything. And I can't actually conceivably think of when I'd want to use them, but I'll take them. I'd rather have quality tools, they're better and lighter. So much, so much coal, what a time to be alive. Alright, I'm almost 10 kilos overburdened, and that overburdening is increasing because I'm getting more and more tired. Now at least I go over to an area that I'm very familiar with. But I need to triage big time. Uh, this torch will do me for a little bit whilst I'm doing exactly this. Okay, uh, I don't need 32 coal. But coal is good. Let's see if I can make do with 20. I'm going to drop all but two of these, all but one of the books. Books are easy to find. And I'm down to 33. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to drop the tools. I can't think of a good use for them. Uh, reclaimed wood is very heavy for what it gives. This torch is dying, but it will soon be saying will soon be saying goodbye to it. I'll drop this book as well. And now I'm not terribly overburdened. Being a little overburdened is fine. It's good even. You should be carrying a lot of goods with you. Goods are survival. I'm going to take another bit of coal back. Now let's go and hope that it isn't uh, atrocious weather out here. Oh wow. Oh wow, it's a gorgeous afternoon. No wind, clear skies, bright sun. I'm not even cold. Oh, that makes me not want to go to Conset and just power through the whole area. But I will go. I will still go to Conset. Um, it's very close by, I think. I'm pretty sure it's close by to to Cinder Hills. Oh, but I really should push through while the going is good. He's going away from Conset. He's not going to Conset. Okay, I'm not. I'm not doing Conset. How am I going to sleep though? It's a long trip through the ravine uh, when you're tired. Okay, let me actually think about this one then. If I'm not doing Conset, what am I doing? There is a shack near the exit towards the ravine that I can sleep in. I'll sleep there. Yeah, Conset would be taking me in the opposite direction of where I need to go. Let's just. Uh, let's just go through this area as quickly as possible. Don't stop for every stick, Jake. You don't need them. I think it can be a hammer over here. <laughs> oh, you think I caught a cold in the mine? No, I think I'm fine. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, immediate regret. The game heard me talking about how awesome the weather was and decided to give me a strong wind. But that is a-okay. I'm gonna dump, uh, ditch into this cabin. Quick check on the floor for a hammer. I swear I've seen a hammer in, uh, in in and around this before. And that wind is really picking up. I could actually take a short nap here in the hopes that the wind goes away for a bit. Don't want to be running through with this wind hitting me. Perfectly warm in here, especially with the half decent clothes that I've come across. Um, I will actually. Sorry, Torch. But I'm taking a one-hour kip here. Make sure I'm somewhat hydrated. Hopefully the weather doesn't get worse. Hopefully it gets better. There's very high volatility on weather on interloper mode. Hmm. What if it only got worse? Well, it certainly doesn't look better, but let's get moving anyway. As long as I'm out of the wind, I'm generally okay. Problem is if I run into a wolf. So what do we do? We keep a flare at the ready. There are wolves here. There are wolves almost everywhere. Nursery lime rhyme levels of wolves in this game. Some areas, however, have absolutely no wolves. Of particular note, the ravine, which is where we're headed right now. Don't break your ankle again, Shepard. I can deal with it, but I don't want to. 
the wolves generally stay on the road. Ba -dum -ba -ba -dum. Uh, cold damage is unforgivable at this point. So, if it looks like I'm taking any cold, I sit down, I make a fire, I stick one or two lumps of coal on it, and then I don't move again until I'm properly warmed up. What am I doing switching between things? Keep that flare out. Don't play fast and loose with this game's wolves. So the main problem with the ravine is that there's nowhere to stop and sleep, because I don't have a sleeping bag. I have not found a sleeping bag. I've not been looking in sleeping bag spawny areas. Probably should have, but I've not. Oh, left or right, left or right. Right feels right, but left gets elevation, so when in doubt, take the elevation. I'm slowing down because there's annoying headwind, which is also cooling me down. But it's relatively warm today, so we will survive. Worst thing I could run into reasonably would be a bear. That would be rough. I watched your single region survivor forlorn muskeg yesterday. It was one of your best streams ever, says Ali. Wow, that is some high praise. It was a tough run, forlorn muskeg. I'd love to see somebody else do that. But then I just generally like to see other people play the long dark. Those clouds are tested to how bad the wind is. The wind chill is hitting me for twice as much cold as just general air temperature. But that stands to reason, isn't it? That's how you get cold in cold locations. It's very seldom just the cold air. It's that blessed wind, and I am very familiar with the North Sea breeze up in Scotland. It's far less pronounced in Sweden. It's a lot easier to be warm in Sweden. Where is that shack? I know it's around here somewhere. Maybe it's up another loop, or maybe it's over there and it's just being hidden by the trees. Alright, well... Even though it's very draining to run into the wind, I gotta run into the wind. And we're gonna have to take a whole evening of starvation here, because I need to rest up for the ravine. That's not necessarily true. I could just power through the ravine. The trouble is, even after I threw the ravine, uh, I have quite a ways to go through um, Mystery Lake until I can get some healing through Birch Bark. So one way or another, I'm going to have to sleep because fatigue damage is also unforgivable. There's a lot of unforgivable things in this run. Yeah, exactly. The UK doesn't know about insulation. We pound holes into our walls for airflow in our houses because that's the right thing to do. So you get this cold air blowing in whilst you desperately try to stay warm next to your radiator and or your fireplace. Could you imagine if I'm actually going the wrong way? I don't usually go to the ravine this way, I usually go to the ravine up through the creek. But the creek has the bear and it's a longer way to go, even though there's a chance of finding a fire starter over there. I'd rather take the direct route, because time is not on my side. I am quite... S well, I'm not sure that there's no birch bark here. I don't ever recall finding birch bark or birch trees to get birch bark from in the uh, coastal highway, which is where we are right now. So that's what I'm going off of by saying we're not loitering here. The only chance for birch bark that I'm aware of is from beachcombing, and beachcombing would expose me massively to the elements and the wolves, and I would take so much damage from other sources that there's no way the birch bark, if it even shows up on the beachcombing, would be enough to counteract that. Jake getting lost and going the wrong way, that's never happened before. And frame perfect. Alright, Shepard is getting tired. Oh god, I completely passed by the shack that I wanted to go to. Okay. However, the game affords me an olive branch and says here is a workman's trailer. It is such a gorgeous day. I really don't want to stop and sleep. Because when I pick up and get moving tomorrow morning, it's going to be deeply unpleasant. I'm going to have a quick check over by here just in case there's anything good. I don't know what there could be, but... Well, there could be a corpse. I'll throw a stone at it for good luck. 
And who would have thought the karmic injustice of this world rears its ugly head once more? Alright, that fatigue bar of mine is only getting worse, not better. There are beds here, however. Sleep is on the cards. However, I will not heal during sleep. I will actually get injured during sleep. Because I'm starving. Pretty hard to sleep when you're so hungry, but Shepard finds a way. Could also do any kinds of... Uh, mending of my clothes or processing of my goods. Can't think of anything I would do. Breaking down that crate to make the same kind of wood that I threw away before I came here. This stuff will come in handy. Worn driving gloves and stale beef jerky, both good things. Fleece mittens. Sounds nice, but they're actually significantly worse than work gloves. There's my work gloves. Work gloves are significantly heavier, but. Good on the temperature and uh, good toughness. Can you slow you down a bit? Uh, oh, these are ragged then, yeah, definitely not. Maybe if those were brand spanking new 90 plus percent condition fleece mittens, I'd consider them for the weight. But they're also very easy to get wet. Okay, conundrum time. Do we stay or do we go? Staying, sleeping, taking damage, powering through the ravine. I think I'd rather power through the ravine, because when I get to the other side of the ravine, I'll be plenty alert and awake enough to gather as much as I need. And heat isn't too much of a bother as long as it's not a blizzard. Because we have the wherewithal to make uh, anything, really. Making fire, though. Making fire and heat is what I'm getting at. This is the last port of call before the ravine, and like I said, no sleeping bag, no sleeping. So, so, so. Let's quickly check and see if there's anything we want to do or mend. Our head wraps are still looking good. I'm actually tempted to fix up this bleeding plaid shirt because it's in such bad condition, but I will not. I think it's a waste of resources to do so. Everything else is looking pretty good, though. I found some really good condition items. i got to hand it to my luck there. Otherwise, I don't think there's anything I really want to part with. I have very few torches, which I'm not thrilled about. One book, 22 coal. The coal is what's really weighing me down. The coal and the water. Got a lot of water. But that's okay. Water gets drank. So we're going to drink the water and we're going to sleep. I only sleep for eight hours. It's not like I'm healing during my sleep anyway. What does interloper mean? Interloper is the difficulty setting for the game. Interloper is the hardest difficulty. Uh, but you can adjust it further to make it even harder. But I'm not doing that. Okay, unfortunately we are so tired that it's just the middle of the night, and yeah, we're so starved that our fatigue is looking so just unbelievably grim. I wonder if it's making me more thirsty, no, that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, what do we do then? We are only starving to death over here. In terms of progress, we've only survived two days. Two days? I guess it is counting it by 24 hours, so we would have survived like 24, 48, and then we're waiting to get over further on the fourth day. Uh, hmm. If it weren't so windy outside, I would like to head out. I'm actually going to pass some time until it stops getting so windy. And then I'm, I'm just going to go for it. Although it's cold and dark and miserable, I need to make some... Uh, some headway on getting that birch bark. It just sounds even worse out there. Hmm. Oh, the meaning of the word, yeah, interloping. Basically trespassing. We are trespassing on nature, and nature will have its filthy way with us for it. Uh, for our insubordination. Okay. Shepard is just fiddling around here, trying to pass the time. That must be very hard to do, just laying in bed. You're not tired. You are literally starving. The weather outside is ghastly. I wouldn't mind poking my nose outside to see just how ghastly. I mean, it could be that it's just uh, we're on a very vibrating... Tr oh god, it's a blizzard! Well, ain't no way I'm going out there. I'd rather starve in here than uh, freeze out there.
All right, sounded like it calmed down. Nice, it's still, it is freezing cold and snowing, but at least it's still, so let's get moving. Let's make our way to the ravine, and once we cross to the other side of the ravine, we'll be good to go. Is there still a stim at the bottom of the ravine? It might actually be worth heading down the ravine, grabbing the stim, and then stimming up to get a net plus, four, uh, plus 15 health. Unsure about that. Our fatigue meter is just looking awful, though. That's what happens when you starve yourself to death. I think it's a counter to starvation strats. Because starvation is a very real strategy in the game. Also, I am so bleeding cold, I kind of need to have this torch going just to warm up a wee bit. It's not really warming me up, it's just cooling me down less. How quickly does starvation fatigue heal? I have no idea. I've never faced starvation fatigue before. Hopefully it never gets so bad that you end up with zero fatigue from it. But it's going to be pretty disastrous for moving around large areas. So basically what I need to do is find a large amount of birch bark where I'm going so that I can get a lot of calories out of it and a lot of healing out of it because I'm now on about half health, which is not good. If I get it right, in interloper difficulty, the indoors is extra me the outdoors is yes, the weather is worse. Everything is colder, the weather gets worse faster over a period of 50 days, there are far fewer resources, you get more damage from animals, the animals are more hostile towards you. Heck, if you play on Pilgrim, the animals are actually docile and don't even attack you unless you go out of your way to mess with them. This looks very unpleasant, look at this. Lord almighty, what did I do to deserve this passage through the ravine? Maybe it was throwing that stone at that dead body, but come on, it was already dead, it didn't feel anything. This is my penultimate torch, but that's okay, I shall pull more. Alright, so whatever you do, don't look down. Looking down is bad over here. One slip and you die. This is one of the game's very few instant death areas. This game is actually a little mean. It uses death planes. So there are locations in the game where if you just cross a plane, it will kill you outright. It doesn't care about fall damage or anything. It's kind of a, a safety net for the game to prevent you just goating down there and then being stuck. It's just, oh, you're down here. You, you must have fallen and therefore died. But sometimes the game has bugs with its death gates and it places them in places that shouldn't kill you. That was a very bad issue in Black Rock on its release, I'm told. I never experienced Jesus it, but cold. It's, there's a warning on the maps for Black Rock. Okay, like I said, cold damage is unforgivable. So in this area, I think I'll start a wee fire. I could just wait a little bit longer. There's a better place to start a fire over there. But I am not in the mood for taking cold damage whatsoever. So let's just fling it down here. Going to use my book even just to make sure it starts faster. I'm going to fling on a bit of coal and just chill out here for a bit. Unfortunately, there's not really much I can do next to a fire, but uh, warming up is exactly what I need to do because any health loss that is preventable is. Oh, see, I'm taking it right now. I'm going to lose about 2%, I think. Just <sighs> shove on one piece of coal is all I need. That'll overcome the coldness here. I don't even need to make water, I've got tons of water, I'll even drink some of my water right now, just to lighten my load a touch. There we go, we're warming up nicely. Uh, would I use a second piece of coal? No, but I'll use some additional sticks. That'll lighten my load a wee bit as well. <laughs> I'm sure Shepard would love to have something to eat right about now. But we have no food, we will never have food. So, we started in Pleasant Valley. I think we started mm, here in Pleasant Valley. Uh, no, about here, up the hill. Yeah, yeah, we were quite up this hill, the hill towards Timberwolf. We threw ourselves down, we broke our ankle, then we made our way over to the farmhouse. The farmhouse was brilliant, back through to the birch bark area, uh, then over to the area that had the little community. Up through Cinder Hills, through Coastal Highway, along through Coastal Highway, now we're working our way through this ravine. 
When we get to the other side of the ravine, there's a monolithic amount of birch bark over here. And Mystery Lake also has birch bark. And Forlorn Muskeg also has birch bark. And honestly, I'm going to survive the rest of the run in these three areas, most likely. It's just got all the birch bark. Why would I go away from it? Uh, I'd love to just take a nap here, but that's not on the cards. I don't think there's anything I can actually do of value right now. Even if I were to craft, what could I make? A bandage? Hand wraps? Tinder plugs? I could make a good torch. 100% torch, huh? There's not really any point. I'll just grab torches out of the campfire. Didn't you pick up some beef jerky in the shack before the ravine? I found it, but I, I put it back in the box. Whenever I pick up something, I either left-click or right-click. Left-click to take, right-click to leave. And most food items I am right-clicking on to not pick up. And if I do accidentally pick them up, I just drop them as soon as I can. Because it's just going to take up space in my inventory. There is no use in this run whatsoever for any food item that I can think of. Except, of course, glorious birch bark. Well, that's not entirely true. I could take a fish, cook a fish, throw out the fish, and keep the oil that came from the cooked fish. And that oil can be used to fuel a lantern, or uh, accelerate a fire, or any of the other things you tend to use oil for. I am going to... maybe not with you, but with you. James, I don't like my carry weight capacity just plummeting like it is, but that's the fatigue starvation damage for you. I'm going to make a tiny bit of water, and that's good enough. And I'm going to boil that water, and that's good enough, just to pass some time to warm up a little easier. I want to max out my heat right now. Sadly, drinking warm water does not warm you up. What are the rules of this run? Interloper mode, I'm only allowed to eat birch bark. No other food is allowed. Birch bark must be processed into tea and then drank for a staggering 100 calories each. And it's not something you can just find everywhere. Thankfully the weather seems to be keeping it real. <laughs> just notice right now the gaping hole above my head, which is probably not helping with heat insulation here. But I'm not even allowed to drink rosehip tea, or reishi tea, or herbal tea. Just birch bark. But you can live indefinitely off of birch bark. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean it's easy to do, especially not early on in the game, right? We're as warm as warm can be. I'm going to take only the best torches out of this thing. If I see a crappy torch like that one, it just gets uh, yeeted, as the kids say. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown away that second one. You're pretty good. Just trying to make sure that the torches I carry are very efficient torches. They all weigh the same, whether they're going to burn for a minute or for five minutes. Pretty good, but now I'm starting to get a bit overweight, so let's just take the next half decent one and move off with it. Yeah, you're good enough, let's go. Getting very, very fatigued, but that's okay, we've crossed about two fifths of the ravine maybe. But we are going to be hanging around the ravine for a while, picking birch bark. So I want to make sure I'm very warm and not taking fatigue damage. Fatigue damage gives you 1% condition damage per in game hour. If I Powered on through. I think I would have had to cross over this and then there's a cave over there. Would have been more convenient. But we didn't do that. What was I just saying before that? I, I completely forgot already. Fatigue damage. 1% damage to your condition. Your condition is your health, basically. No matter how cold, tired, uh, parched, or hungry you are, it's not going to kill you. It's just going to do damage to you until you die. <laughs> You die when your condition reaches zero, not when your cold or anything else hits zero. How are we looking? Are we still on the first run? We are on the first run. It's a good looking run, but it's also been two and a half hours and we're still going, so... If I do have to restart, this is going to be one long weekly one-shot. I'll probably even have to take a dinner break. Oh, hang on, birch trees. You know what birch trees mean? Possible birch bark on the ground. I'm not actually sure if this is a birch bark spawn area. But we shall be ever diligent and check, because every bit of birch bark we find is 2.5% healing to our person. And I need that badly. Actively taking damage right now, which isn't good of course, but there's some birch bark. 
there is no risk of being attacked around here. There are just bunnies and deer, beef jerky, pinnacle peaches, campfire, firewood. I'll take that, even though I'm overweight. No, we're just big boned. It's all muscle, Shepherd. That was a lovely find, because now, if I need to stop and make another fire, I can also make a cup of tea for a warming up bonus. Hot water does not give you a warming up bonus, but hot tea does. I guess uh, Shepherd's carrying around a little flask, making them all into hot toddies. Mm, this is getting colder than I'd like. Just generally grimmer than I like. I actually think I am going to start a little fire inside that cave. I know we just came away from one. But look at my cold meter already. It's not pleasant, is it? It's still early morning. Well, morning-ish. Uh, so it's very cold. But in the back of caves, it's very warm. So we're going to go back, back of the cave. Not that fireplace. That fireplace is a trap. Go into the back of the cave. Right now, it feels like minus four. But once we hit the back of the cave, it feels like plus four. Back of the cave is the warmer part of the cave. Let's just throw down a stick, tinder, torch. Anything else to use? Oh, do not use birch bark as your tinder. Uh, let's make ourselves a lovely cup of birch bark tea. Uh, warm up, heal up, and move on out. Come on, little fire. Come on. 2.5% per one. We can say our shepherd is 40 parts of a wood. Uh, I suppose we could say that, Connick. We won't, though, because it sounds stupid. But we could. All right, all right, let's warm ourselves up. I'm just going to throw on some sticks. I've got loads of coal, so using sticks here is A-OK. -okay. They're also kind of heavy-ish. And I won't make water. i got a bajillion units of water, and it's really weighing me down. But I will process this birch bark. Huzzah! 5% healing and a few precious calories. What a time to be alive. Now we're going to cook up that birch bark. La-da-da! And whilst I would love to not move after eating it so the calories can rest in my belly for a while, we are just going to drink it and move, I think. We're warming up very nicely with a 15 degrees in here. Mm, should I, though? Should I really, really drink this birch bark now? It's probably much better just to hold on to lots of birch bark and eat it or drink it all when I next sleep. That way I have a lot of calories in my belly. Yeah, in terms of healing, it's actually better for me not to drink this birch bark now. But stopping and warming up was probably a good idea. You've gotten way more mileage out of this game than I ever would have guessed. Well, it happens. I get obsessed with a game. Yeah, no problem saying that. I do get obsessed. And then I just squeeze every bit of fun I can out of a game and then move on to the next one. I play a lot of games. But I like to play them to a high standard whenever I can. Right. I already... Oh god, I got this crappy stick. Or this crappy torch, rather. I don't tolerate the crappy torches. I grab them and I tear them apart into a stick. It takes a couple of minutes. There we go, go. Pull a replacement torch and then get moving. It's getting warmer, gradually, as the day goes on. 15 degrees, that's pretty warm. I think that's about... I think I'm a bit warmer than 15 degrees in here right now. I was molded by the cold. Alright, what I could do is just very quickly pass time until I'm all warmed up. You can cancel out of that, so I just wanted to do that to pass a few of these minutes faster. Still actively dying to hunger, still actively losing maximum fatigue. I wonder if that gets any worse than half fatigue on. If it gets even worse, that's terrible. Well, of course it's terrible, but uh, the reason it's so bad is that I won't be... Oh, that's a great torch. I'm going to hold on to that one. There we go, let's get moving. Um, the reduction of your maximum carry capacity is brutal. If I have to do this challenge and I can only walk around with a maximum of... Oh god, the wind's picking up. Uh, 15 kilos, which is your carry capacity at uh, bare minimum fatigue. And that is tragically bad. If this wind picks up any more, it wouldn't be an unreasonable thing to double back and go back to that campfire. even at the expense of another torch, but hopefully I can make my way over to the birch bark, because I want to pick up all the birch bark before I get too fatigued. Uh, there's a cave nearby where all the birch bark is. I can dump my water and other heavy goods there, run out, grab the, um, grab the birch bark, and carry on my merry way. 
In fact, uh, you can already see the birch trees over there. Well, I can. So surely you can. After all, I'm the blind one, right? Oh, this wind is picking up, though. I don't like that. I do not like that at all. Notice our heat or our body warmth has already dropped down by a quarter. Oh, looks like Bambi didn't make it. Probably got splattered by the derailed train here. Plenty of feathers. The feathers don't really weigh anything, so I'll take them. I mean, they weigh a little bit, but who cares? Alright, don't slip, but do look down. You know, looking down helps you balance when you're going across things like this. Uh, come on, Shepard. There we go. I'm difficulty getting up here. These rose hips tempt me. I would love them. This wind is really picking up. I do not like this. It's almost certainly going to blow my fire out. Well, before we make our way over there, let's grab every bit of birch bark that we can. This is a birch bark bonanza. The ravine is so good for birch bark, and I want every drop that I can find. So, eyes peeled. This is a group effort, right? Weekly One Shot's always been uh, all of us working together towards a common goal, which is me winning. I think that's what everybody deep down really wants. I am not seeing a lot of birch bark. I call this a bonanza, and it's looking anything but. You're completely safe here, though, from predators. There are never any bears or moose or wolves that spawn here. Just rabbits and deer. What did I say? Moose, wolves, and bears don't spawn. I've seen a few vods with long dark. Are the conditions punishing? Yeah, very punishing. We are starving, literally starving. We are fatigued. It's getting very, very cold. I'm really going to have to make a beeline for that. Um... Is that coal? Wow. Weird. Uh, I'm going to have to make a beeline for that cave. Like I said, cold damage is unforgivable. And I'm about to start taking some. Alright, cave it is. Oh, look at the birch bark. Also, running uh, ups my fatigue as well. Alright, well, at least the wind is kind of calming down as well, so that's kind of good. I need to double back and check for more of that birch bark. This is exactly where map knowledge comes in, knowing that this cave is here. Oof, what a difference. I didn't know it was here. Ooh, the rope. The rope. Do I dare set up the rope? to go to the bottom of the ravine. It's kind of a very bad idea, but it is an idea. You know what? I am going to set up the fire on this side of the cave, the colder side of the cave. Anything about now. There is a strangely esoteric mechanic in this game where fires last longer if the character is in on, a colder location. So if we're standing at the back of the cave, we're going to be in a warmer location, meaning the fires will burn out faster. But if we're in a colder location, it actually burns for longer. That sounds weird, because it is weird. Anyway, uh, I'll put on one bit of coal, a few sticks, a piece of firewood... Another few sticks, just to get a whole bunch of temperature out of you. And then whilst you are boiling up, I'm going to prepare that birch bark that I just got. Got enough to make two more bits of birch bark. Two and a half, really, but you cannot make half a birch bark. Yeah, I'm sure story mode covers it nicely. There we go. Please cook me up my prepared birch bark. And now I'm sitting at three cups of birch bark. My condition right now is not looking good. I'm down at 47% and it's still going down 1% every in-game hour. Muckle unpleasant. But with this, I'll have 15% healing and a few calories as well. And the hope is that I am able to find so much more birch bark that uh, we're just going to heal through all of our problems. But that said, I'm not hanging around here. This is not a good place to live. There are no structures to go inside. There's a derailed train that I could, would, and maybe should check out. Uh, to lighten my load, I'm going to drop probably all my waters. The water is weighing me down. 
There we go, just like that. I've got so much more carry capacity. Just in case I need to uh, ditch a bit more, I'm going to say goodbye to you and you. And even a whole bunch of my coal, because the coal is very heavy as well. And that should let me move around a lot better. The birch bark is ready. Since I'm here for a wee bit anyway, I'm just going to boil some more water. I'm going to wait till I warm up a bit more. Uh, a little bit more. There we go. Let's grab ourselves a torch. And go hunting for that birch bark. Oh, we're getting... All oh god, no, wrong thing to drink. I dropped all my water. No, that was bad. Very bad. Right, I need to drink some water. Because uh, I don't want to take thirst damage. Thirst damage is twice as bad as hunger damage. Okay, fortunately I only drank... Um, like 10% of that Where cup. Find something to eat? Shepherd immediately starts complaining about hunger. Just a few calories in that lady's stomach, and she is just champing at the bit to have more. Calm yourself, Shepherd. Look at all this delicious birch bark you could enjoy, but no, you're too busy moaning. Pretty rare to have bot commands. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't faff around with bot commands. I would use bot commands if they were silent, but my problem with bot commands is that they spam chat. Somebody comes in and they put exclamation mark challenge or exclamation mark TLD or whatever. And then that's a line taken up with that. And then the bot comes in and puts this screed or this link or anything that just pushes away regular chat. And then someone else comes in and they don't see the chat history and they do the same thing and the same thing happens again. And I find that very contrary to... Uh, to netiquette. I just see it as spam, so I don't bother with it. Yeah, I know it's the normal thing to do in Twitch, is to have those kind of bot commands, but just because it's uh, the status quo, doesn't mean that I have to like it. We're we gonna take these? Someone did mention it, so let's just do it. I'm already getting very cold here. Normally birch saplings, you see them, you're just like, oh hell yes, gimme, gimme, gimme. Birch saplings are needed for making arrows, if I recall correctly. I think I've strayed away from the birch trees, though. I need to get back in order to check for more birch bark. Now, you'd think surely you could just strip this bark off of the trees, but uh, that, in real life, is a pretty bad thing to do for the environment. You're going to kill birch bark trees if you just strip off their bark. At least in a uh, non-renewable fashion. And obviously, Shepherd wouldn't like her favourite summer holiday location to have all these dead trees in it. So she's very mindful and she doesn't tear apart the area. Ah, there we go. I was looking at one of you. See what I mean about all this birch bark though? This is considerably denser on the birch bark than what we saw in Pleasant Valley. I hear those footsteps and my my heart starts racing, thinking, oh god, a bear or a wolf or something. I have to remind myself, I am in Ravine. There is no risk of animal attacks here. Although it would be amazing if in the update they put the cougar in here. Oh boy, that would transform this region. Back in the long dark. Yeah, Ruben, but not for a long time. I'm doing this challenge and then I will once again shelve the long dark until the DLC is completed. And once the DLC is completed, I have two things that I want to do. One is to finish off my single region survivor runs. Really enjoyed them. Excellent way to learn all the maps. I'm getting very tired here. I wish I had a cup of coffee. I suppose I have a stim. There's a very strong argument for using the stim and the rope here to check out the bottom of the ravine. But that would also invite me to go into bleak inlet and in no way are we taking a step into bleak inlet during this run heavens no that's just asking to die i don't even know if birch bark spawns in bleak inlet i think it spawns in the north west all right this is our final doubling back through here yeah i seem to recall in the northwest there's some birch trees but that is digging deep in my memory banks i'm not very good at remembering in general No, please. The Twitch chat has only gotten worse with every feature they have added. Ninja in there is a uh, brother in arms for the IRC purists. I'd like to consider myself an IRC purist, but I must kowtow to the convenience of Twitch chat. 
It is my bread and butter, but I hate using that as an excuse. I love IRC. Twitch is a bit of a Frankenstein monster of IRC, though. Wasn't even that long ago that I was still uh, frequently using some of my old channels, my old clans. <sighs> We're all such nutters. Most of the time spent with my Urban Dead clan in IRC, actually. I had that everywhere I went. I even modded my PSP to add uh, an IRC application to it. Was it Merc Portable? No, that doesn't seem right. I think it was, it was some specially, P, uh, specially made PSP IRC. Is that a bit of Birch Park that I missed right by the entrance? It is! That's why we double check. And even more here? Good lord, I must have been ultra blind. What else did I miss over here? It's alright, we can let this torch burn out. I've got my campfire in the base right next to me. Alright, that seems about right. We're going to do a count on our birch bark. We are going to prepare it into lovable birch bark drinks. And then we are absolutely going to have to move out of here because we are so tired we're about to start taking uh, fatigue damage. Fatigue damage is one of the most preventable kinds of damage in the game. You do not want to be having it. Let's take you, holster you, get warm by the fire. Uh, liquidate you into a stick. It does look bad, doesn't it? It's not completely out. Don't worry, it's just it's just very, very red. <laughs> We're feeling drained. No kidding, Shepard. Right. Drained though we may be, there's a lot of stuff I need to bring back with me. I'm going to make a little bit of water with you. And then I am going to prepare all of my... You know what? I'm not going to make a bit of water with you. Make whatever junky bit of water that is. I'm going to prepare two bits of birch bark out of the six that I could make. We're going to boil it all right now, and we're going to drink a lot of it before we go to bed, and my hope is to get a very large uh, boost in my health where we're going. So, prepare the birch bark, blonk, prepare the birch bark, blonk. That takes about 10 to 15 minutes to create, which is good. I like to steep my tea for 15 minutes as well, so we make, spend 10 minutes making some more. I've never had drained. Is it a new mechanic? Uh, no, no, it's just telling me that that is, you know, I'm warm, drained, dry mouth, and starving. It's just a descriptor for the level of fatigue that you're at. Birch bark tea done, birch bark tea done, birch bark tea. We make some more, we make some more. I don't need to take all of this, because I will, I do plan on coming back here. So let's leave a reasonable amount of coal back here. Five bits of coal seems pretty good. On top of that, I could even leave some other burnables. Uh, for example, I can leave one of my cedars and about ten sticks. That helps lighten my load, because I am dangerously overloaded right now. We are going to prepare the last of the birch bark. Don't worry, we'll be able to sleep quite soon. The downside is that nobody likes to sleep in late afternoon, because it's the warmest time of day. But no, well actually I could take a very short nap if I wanted. I could drink one birch bark tea and have a short nap. Then I could keep moving, because I want to do my moving during the good times of day. Final birch bark, final birch bark. Anything else to care or prepare? Yeah, looks pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine birch barks. That is a ton of healing and a good amount of calories for Shepard. Alright, like I said, this run's got legs. I, I guess that might not make sense. Doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense. It means that the run can go places. And you need legs to generally go places unless you have very strong upper body strength. Ready in five, ready in three. <clears throat> Yeah, I'd be very glad I have a mute button at the ready so I can stop myself from my weak coughing fits there. I don't know what's come over me today. Stick another stick on here. Maybe two, so I can grab a torch or two out of you. Uh, I want two torches, actually. One more stick. Grab our birch bark, grab our pot, grab our birch bark, grab our tinny, grab a torch. It kind of sucks. 
Grab another torch. It's also not very good. Don't let it burn those sticks, although that's not a mechanic. And let's go! Shepard is very tired. Shepard is starving, in the very literal sense. Shepard is seven and a bit kilos overweight. That's a good thing she's starving, right? But we are going to limp our way over to Mystery Lake. Mystery Lake is the easiest region in the game, as judged by me. It is the warmest, it has the best weather, and it has everything. It has birch bark, it has tea ingredients, it's got berries and things, it's got every kind of animal. Pretty sure it also has a moose, yeah, of course it does. And it's got some amazing locations. It's got the uh, post office place, or something like that, some, some kind of lakeside building. Uh, it's got the trapper's cabin, which is amazing. It's got high places to look out over, chart and get your bearings. Uh, it's got loads of natural resources, plenty of wood to collect, uh, plenty of opportunity for fishing, fishing huts everywhere, so many... Yeah, it's just the best place. Which is why it's an invalid place to spawn in Interloper. You cannot spawn in Mystery Lake on Interloper. But, nothing's stopping you going there. And that's exactly where we're going right now. Yeah, I don't want to take this fatigue damage. I don't want to drink just one of my birch barks, but I don't want to take fatigue damage, so... I'm going to drink a birch bark, take a one hour nap, one hour, two hours, depends on the weather. I'll take a one hour nap, wake up, and then make a judgment call on a second nap. But ideally, I make my way at least over to the uh, the camp office, that's what it's called, the camp office. Here we are at Carter Dam, oh, but there's a very strong argument for searching Carter Dam. It's a huge area, but it's very warm. Oh, we could do it during night time, yeah, yeah, great idea, Jake. Phenomenal idea. Okay. Plans have changed once again. I'm going to sleep inside uh, one of these places. I'm going to drink a load of my tea, sleep here, and then I'm going to be going through the dam, because then it doesn't matter if it's nighttime. It's not going to be extra cold in the dam. It's going to be a bit of a bummer on my burnables to make all these torches, but there's plenty of sources for burnables in there. So, so, so. I think I should just sleep immediately. I'm just about taking fatigue damage here. So much as I love you, Torch, well, I guess I'll explore first. Yeah, shedding the weight before summer. Calling me. I'm on a I'm on a weight loss binge at the moment. Decided to limit my calories to sixteen hundred a day, and it's been really fun. Yeah, gaming gamifying a system can make anything fun. Gotta get my beach body ready for Balaton summer, right? Actually, what's really happening is I'm getting sized up for some new kilts, and I uh, I don't want to get the kilts, then lose weight, and then have them not fit. I am too tired to think straight. Right, we're going to take fatigue damage now, so let's just put out our torch. It's okay, we have 17 matches, and now we drink. Let me think about this for a moment. Do I really want to drink all this much? Six hours, three hours, hmm. Let's go for it. And drink one. I'm saving on a kilt cloth. <laughs> drink two. I think I'll drink three of them. Also, I wouldn't be able to drink more because I'm not thirsty enough, I think. But if I drink three of them and I just sleep for as long as Shepard can, let's see how that does us. Apparently, this will burn more calories than I can. Can we really not drink another one? Yeah, you're not thirsty. You just need to be a little thirsty to drink a bit, but let's not horse around here. Let's just sleep for as long as we can. Well, it's not a ton of healing, but it was some healing. And wow, we slept for longer than I thought we would. Cool. Um, yeah, what did our condition go up to there? Uh, let's just take a little bit so we're not taking fatigue dam uh, thirst damage. We were at about 47, and now we're up to 60. So we got about 15 health or so out of that, despite the constant starvation. Pretty good. Now, I'm not going to take another one, but I will drink regular water for a wee bit, because now I'm going to Carter Dam. And it's hard as hell to see here. I don't know where I am. I think the door's around here. Leave the trailer. Oh, let's go. Let's hope we don't get jumped by a wolf as well. That would suck. It is a blizzard. Well, isn't that fun for someone? Not me, though. 
let's just leg it over here. I should probably limit the amount of running that I do now, though, because fatigue is rearing its ugly head. Do I waste a match to search this area? I do not. We're not going to search this trailer until we come out the other day. Uh, during first light. The reason I didn't want to use a match was because it would be blown out by the blizzard on my way over to Carter Dam. Have a quick check in here for anything of value. Breaking through for tinnies. And <laughs> a bar of nuts. Oh my days. Could you imagine starving yourself for five days and you find a bar of nuts? I think even if you were allergic, you'd be waffling those down. Right, let's move. I don't worry about the cold here. I won't be out in it long enough to take cold damage, probably. I have found tools here before. So I'm going to take a quick look around me. I don't have time to loiter, but I have found a crowbar here before. Not seeing it, and there's no way I'm loitering in this uh, blizzard, so we'll have a proper look when it's light. For now, though, enter Carter Dam. We did not do this place in Single Region Survivor, because it is a, uh, a transfer area, as in it leads to another area, so I consider those off... Uh, well, disallowed. Anyway, as as Shepard considers how much she would love a fire here in Carter Dam, I myself will take a quick water break. After all, Shepard can't be the only one that allows herself loads of drink at this time. I will be back momentarily. There we go, much better. <clears throat> I have no problem going long periods of time when streaming without food, but without drink, intolerable. Now, it is plus five degrees for us, which is wonderful, but 
we'll warm up even more with a torch, and I need this torch to see anyway. Slight problem, <clears throat> I only have five torches, so I will have to make a fire at some point in here. Uh, but that's okay, I've got the cedar firewood that I can liquidate into more torches. Yet another match used up. And let's get searching. Oh nice, I didn't have to forget to start my timer again. This is not the timed weekly one-shot. Although I hope it takes under 12 hours, because when a weekly one-shot takes over 12 hours, I have to slice it up into multiple parts for YouTube. And that's no good. So what am I looking for here? A crowbar would be nice. A sleeping bag would be amazing. I don't think a flare gun ever appears here, but a flare gun would be an excellent get-out-of-jail-free card. Pretty sure the hammer never spawns here either, but that would be another fantastic find. I need a weapon. You can't beat wolves back with sticks and stones. You gotta use a hatchet, a knife, a hammer, crowbar. Oh, big this find. Oh, man. <laughs> it was such a waste making this torch. Uh, wait, how much fuel is in it? Not a lot. Okay. Um, I might still use the torches then. Ooh, scarf. That's nice. Um... Um, yes, I will continue to use the torches. Only three hundred, uh, <clears throat> only point three liters of fuel inside the lamp lantern is very pitiful. I'm gonna take this water and just leave it by the entrance. Notice that we got some of our maximum fatigue back. That's useful. It's a good sign that even a small amount of birch bark and a good night's sleep can really help manage our fatigue. Yeah, you can tell if we're on the first or second life by the character. If it's Femme Shep, it's first life. If it's Male Shep, it's second. But here's hoping we never have to bother with a second, right. Oh wait, no, I said I'd use that for, uh, for fuel, didn't I? In that case, I'll just drop all of my coal. I'll keep you, and I will drop all of my water. Uh, maybe grab a little bit of it just to slurp down. I'd hate to get dehydrated here in Carter Dam. I check you already? Yeah. Alright, let's go. I do have the oil, and I could refuel the thingamajigger with it, that lantern. I could refuel it with oil. It's not unthinkable, but the oil could have other uses as accelerant. You can run into a situation where you desperately want a fire started extremely quickly, taking cold damage in an awkward place, or being hunted by a bear. I'm slowly getting concerned, says Acronis. Why would you bet against me at the long dark? I know it's a hard challenge, but come on. I'm me. Carter Dam is actually... Uh, Ooh, jeans. Jeans is a good find. Second layer of trousers and jeans, even though they're starting gear, at maximum condition they still give one degree of warmth, so they're rather nice. I don't want to go down there just yet. I want to explore everything over here first. One thing that could kill me is an aurora. An aurora would make these wires suddenly electrical, and uh, that could just straight up kill you. So you don't want that to happen. I don't know how much warning you get of that either. Especially if you're in the middle of searching something to suddenly and then you're dead. And of course auroras happen at night, not through the day. And we're here at night. Oh, hello. Do we dare to search the safe? We will not search the safe, because what would be in the safe? Food? Okay, there can be some nice bits of gear in the safe, but I don't want to do it. I hate the safes in this game. <clears throat> the downside of using torches. They certainly do like to burn out. That's okay. Torches are very easy to get more of. And as long as I preserve the light, I preserve my options for making a fire without wasting another match. I know, I know. So I've got the matches, use them, and I'm sitting on, what, 16 of them? And I'm quite likely to find more and or even find a mag lens here in Mystery Lake. I'm still going to be in the guard with my matches. They are going to be... Well, they were the difference between life and death at the very start. Thank goodness I was able to warm up inside that barn early on. We had a pretty rough start in Pleasant Valley. The 
the story mode in this game is ridiculous, but I think entering Carter Dam is where it just starts really jumping the shark. Probably because that's where the most other people get involved. I was never a big fan of Grey, Mur uh, Grey Mother's Lark to begin with. Okay, we're finding a whole lot of not much here. Uh, oh, tell you what, I didn't check off my lantern. Let's make sure everybody knows that we've got the lantern. The lack of a crowbar is... Oh, that would be such a good find if we were allowed to drink herbal tea. But unfortunately, herbal tea gives a minute amount of calories, so we're not allowed to drink it. Yeah, this is day four we have survived. For fi uh, day five we've survived for four days, right? Day survived three. Okay, I think we need a little bit more passage of time. So three, three down, ten to go, huh? Hmm. On the plus side, as we build up our repertoire of matches and better clothes and things, we are getting stronger. Every day that passes, we should end up better equipped to handle the day than the previous day, unless we go a day of not finding any birch bark tea. To break even, we essentially need to find 10 units of birch bark every day. That's not very feasible. But we could do some little tricks to squeeze some more out of it, such as sleeping immediately after drinking our birch bark to squeeze out a few more units of health regeneration. I do plan eventually on just filling up on birch bark and sleeping for a long time. That's why I've kept, I think, six of them. Yeah, I got six birch barks to enjoy. How many torches do I have? Ooh, not very good. I don't have two more backup. I'll need to go and light my fire. That is my only desire. My win rate on bets is close to zero, says Wake Up Drux. I will do my best for you. But also for me. Let's pour a torch in the left. Well, I probably should have used the lantern, but the lantern would not be lasting very long either. It's okay, once I've done this I can make my way over to the area that has a place that I can start a fire. I can't go down a campfire here. You're not allowed to make campfires indoors. Why? I don't know. I guess Shepard is concerned about burning the place down. But how hard would it be to just start a fire inside a controlled environment like a drum? Clearly we're not concerned about things like uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. Is that the one? Carbon monoxide? Dioxide? I don't know, I'm not good at my physical sciences. I could use <laughs> that stale granola bar would be a great find if we could eat it, but we cannot. All right, let's work our way down then. I think we have squeezed this dry. No sign of any crowbars, that's very regrettable. I'd love myself a crowbar. Does someone throw a crowbar in the trash can? Of course not. I don't think there's anything further up. Nope, well, there's a copy of a shooting guide, but that is of no coincidence to us. It's no coincidence on it. Uh, on oh, interloper at all, anyway. You don't get access to firearms on interloper. Some bugs can cause firearms to spawn, and of course you could always debug spawn in a firearm. Some people like to play gun loper. They do a setting that's interloper difficulty, but gun spawn. Sounds like a very American-centric choice to have. Or maybe the Swiss like it that way. They like their guns too. I've been shooting, but I don't have much experience with firearms. Not overly taken with them. Only a fool would trust his life to a weapon. <laughs> I went to America to, uh, to fire German guns. Dioxide is what we routinely breathe out. You need a ton of it to get poisoned. It's mostly a threat on submarines and spaceships. Oh god, I've been in a submarine. I will hopefully never enter a submarine again. It's harrowing. Okay, this is our place to start a wee fire. Doesn't cost a match. We already had the fire on our torch. <laughs> yeah, my legs are huge. Huge enough to make a doctor surprised. A Swedish doctor, that though. Work. They were Swedish. They were probably just really starved for some physical contact.
Come on now, fire, and it's only 60% chance. But I'm going to bung on my firewood and just liquidate it into torches so I don't have to waste my precious uh, lantern Perfect. fuel here. So I'll just put you out and then shove on this cedar. And that's good for about six torches. Uh, maybe I want more. What else can I put inside you? Uh, not a whole lot. I'll throw in some sticks though. We're about to find some more sticks where we're going. I don't need to make water. don't even desire to make water here. Normally I always make water, but... This run is proving to be an exception to a lot of my standard ways of playing, uh, just about said into the airlock, but interloper the long dark. But that's good though, because honestly I have uh, almost 100% confidence that I could survive indefinitely on interloper no matter how badly you spawn me. That's why I need extra difficulty settings like, say, single regioning. Or uh, Outer Loper. Outer Loper was so good. I love that run so much. It's kind of a shame that it's already done. I'd like to do it again, but I'd just be retreading steps I've already been through. So when I do my next Long Dark Challenge, it's not going to be Outer Loper, but I need other ways to make it more difficult. So it's going to be Ultra Loper. I'm going to max out every single difficulty setting there are, even beyond Interloper. I'll get thirstier, hungrier, more tired... There's going to be dramatically fewer cattails and tea ingredients. Oh, yeah. And the goal will be to make a, uh, a giant meal and place a giant meal in every region in a prominent location. I'll figure out what those are ahead of time. So it's going to be the Ultra Loper Chef or some take on that. That name's kind of lame, but I'll think of something better. But I'm not doing that until the DLC is completed and bug fixed and the DLC's production has so far been god-awful. I hope they hear that. Interlan, your base game is great, but your, your DLC is just terrible. Get better, please. Ooh, a flare! Lovely. I know I already have matches, and that makes a flare less of a wow factor, but a flare will burn even in a wind, even in a blizzard. So it could be very useful for getting me out of tight situations. And now I have two of them. One regular, one marine. Regular ones are better than... Oh god, I almost fell through that. Regular ones are better than marine flares. They burn for longer. And I swear they even burn brighter. But marine flares spook timber wolves. And that's a pretty big deal when you are in timber wolf territory. And we will never be going to timber wolf territory. There's no point in risking the run like that. Timberwolf territory would be Black Rock or... Mm, don't need that scrap metal. What's the other place? There's Black Rock and there's Bleak Inlet. There's no way I'm leaving the dam. I've got little to gain from doing that. Let's make our way back then. We can have another wee nap before, uh, before it lightens up outside. You more afraid of Timberwolves or Juggernauts? Uh, Timberwolves. You can outrun a Juggernaut. You can only temporarily outrun a timber wolf. Disappointed in still not finding a crowbar. I would really like a crowbar. Uh, a hammer would be a suitable substitute. Uh, they both have different uses, but hammer or a pry bar would both work pretty well as a weapon, and I do need a weapon right now. Hammer would enable forging, but I don't think this is going to be a forging run. I struggle to see the point in getting into forging in this run. How about a no indoors challenge? Well, that's what Outer Loper is. Outer Loper is interloper difficulty, but you're not allowed to go indoors. I did a rather lengthy campaign of Outer Loper. I believe I called it Outer Loper Shopkeeper, because I also had to go to the concert shop and stock it full of goods. Which was an exception to the no indoors thing. I could go indoors explicitly only to loot goods for putting in my shop. I could not use them. I could not go indoors to warm up. I could not loiter indoors. I could only go indoors to gather materials for my shop. I'm feeling like I overlooked a significant portion of the dam. But... I'm gonna go sleep. Maybe drink one birch bar tea and sleep. And then we're going to continue our way through this area. Or we just move it anyway. I'm 
would also quite like to check around the area here, but I don't know how the weather is. Tell you what, here's what I'll do. I will drop this torch. I will quickly poke my nose outside and see if it's a blizzard or not. It's not. It looks horrible outside because it's horrible outside, but it's not a blizzard. Can you tell what you're already on your death's door. You were already a really crummy torch. There we go. We should be safe and not have you blow out out here. Yeah, there we go. Looks grim, feels grim, but I don't think it's enough to blow my torch out. That said, I still think I'm going to sleep before I get moving. It is very dark, cold, dangerous, snowing, windy. It's so windy. Look at, look at my slow speed when I walk into the wind. But I did want to spend a little bit of time just poking around out here, seeing if I can find a crowbar or anything else of use in this yard. Of course, it's hard to see. This will be better done during the daytime. But time is a valuable thing. Watch it fly by as it ports to PC. Okay. <coughs> oh goodness, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Yeah. I think we'll go in here. Now that we have a light source, I'll actually do one loop around it. Ooh, should I go and check for the sleeping bag? That would be a very considerable use of our time, but it could be well worth it. There's an area that has a reasonable chance of spawning a sleeping bag. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's where we found the sleeping bag in our outer loper run. Definitely a desirable thing to get, the sleeping bag. That opens me up to a lot of possibilities for resting anywhere. I can rest in that crummy bed. I might take this book. I've been burning through a lot of my books. Alright, honestly, this bed's as good as any. Um, two hours of sleep, one birch bark tea. Let's do it. Put that fire out on our body. One bit of birch bark. Glug, 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 glug. Top myself up with water. And then two hours of sleep. I miss Bleak Inlet. I don't. Or rather, I miss Bleak Inlet by a wide margin. Alright, weather dependent tells me whether I risk it for the sleeping bag or if I do a beeline for the... Oh my... God, it's so freaking dark everywhere indoors. How is it this dark inside? I know it's bright outside. Look at how bright it is. Bedazzling. All right, it's still cold and unpleasant, but I'm making this pilgrimage because the sleeping bag would be a great find. It is the opposite of where I want to go. Kind of, I can arc back around from here and that'll be okay, so let's keep that in mind. I'll arc back around to the camp office from this location. I will also ignore this crappy torch. It's almost dead, but I will take this torch and light it up because as you can see, I'm very quickly losing a lot of heat. There's some birch trees. I don't think these crummy little twig boys drop birch bark, but birch bark is the... Hello, birch bark! Right, this immediately paid off. I love it when good decisions are rewarded. I also like it when poor decisions are rewarded. I think I just like being rewarded. Is that a moose? Well, the answer is that. much faster than I want to. If I got curb stomped by a moose, I think that would just be a run ender. Don't know how I would come back from that. The damage would be immense. Okay, I don't think I'm finding more birch bark around here. I guess it was just one little errant bit of it. That'll have to do me then. Yeah, my good friend, the rib breaking moose, broke my ribs twice in Outer Loper. And I got parasites in interloper. I got just about everything other than dysentery in outer loper. You have to go out of your way to get dysentery, though. There is no good reason to drink uh, rancid water. Even in the off chance that you can't boil water and uh, 
all you have is for some reason non-potable water. Just drop an aqua puree in there. One tablet will do, I think, a liter. Alright, so over here, as you can tell, there's no birch trees. I don't know what kind of trees these are. Yeah, no idea. Like I said, not good at my physical sciences. But in this hunting posty thing, in Outer Loper, I found a uh, bedroll. And bedroll is amazing for Outer Loper because obviously you can't go indoors to sleep. You are at the mercy of finding little packs of leaves outside and or cars. And there is no bedroll. In fact, there's nothing here. Unless this is full of something amazing, which it is not. Wow. This is meant to be an amazing spot and there's nothing. <laughs> okay, well, that's how it goes sometimes, right? There's a corpse. Nothing of value for me on that corpse. Well, the long dark giveth, the long dark certainly taketh away. Permanent dysentery challenge run. Ah, that doesn't seem very appealing, does it? Just feels like you're weighed down. I'm more interested in a challenge run where your resources are incredibly limited. And that is something Outer Loper did very well, because not only do you have access to... Uh, you don't have access to all those lovely indoor goods, which is where you're going to find all your... Your tinnies and your tools and your cloths and things. Cloth in particular. But you also have to spend more resources because you have to warm up outside. And that's pretty expensive on your wood and such. Uh, you can die from parasites, Alan Oaks. You must clear your parasites. And you cannot constantly get rid of them because you need to drink racial tea to get rid of them. And racial tea will eventually... Uh, you will eventually pluck all of the mushrooms and not be able to make any more. So no, I'm not interested in a permanent friends run. Already getting rather cold out here. I don't know of a nearby cave. I know of a nearby wolf, it seems. Sorry, there's plenty of stuff here for the wolf to grab. I'm gonna set up a little fire next to this rock, just in case the wind picks up. Oh wow, Wolfie caught a... Uh, Wolfie caught a deer. Sorry, Wolfie, but uh, you're not allowed that, dear. Let it rest in peace. I'm going to set this up next to these rocks so that there's you know, more than a 50% chance that I'm going to block any incoming fire. Yeah, exactly. Good challenges limit methods, but don't limit opportunities. I like that. I will forget that, but I hope I remember it so I can use that later on when describing good challenges. All right, nice. You actually got a fire made in one. It is not that cold. I'm gonna pop on one bit of coal, a handful of sticks. Come on, come on, no hypothermic damage, please. There we go, there we go. I think I got enough just to make one more itty bitty bit of birch bark. Wow, that dog is on a rampage. <laughs> I'll let him eat the bunny. Well, you know what? I could actually do with that bunny. If I had some bunny skins... Oi! Leave that bunny alone. It's mine now. This is just pure opportunism, but if I had bunny hat or bunny gloves, I don't know which I'd prefer, then that could be useful to me. So, whilst I'm warming up next to this fire that's going to be going for a wee while, I'm going to take its hide off. Which is faster done by hand than by hacksaw, but it's still 40 minutes. It's alright, I'm pretty... Well, I might not be safe from rem from attack over there, but... Wolfie Boy seems to be just doing fine on his own. Um, do I want to make anything during this time? Warm up my teas or anything like that? No, I do not. We've got the time, we've got the warmth. Let's just skin this rabbit with our bare hands. Look at my heat just coming back to me, but I'm not gaining health because I'm actively starving. Good timing. Uh, oh, I think I need the guts as well, don't I? Half an hour to take the guts out. Yeah, let's take those guts out as well. And I will use the hacksaw because it's marginally faster. It uses calories, but you can't go negative on calories, so this is okay. The guts are a bit of a pain. I'm probably going to leave this over in the... Oh, it started snowing. But it's still still, so that's okay. Um, I don't mind being a bit thirsty. But I do need some torches here. How many do I have? Six. I'm not going to count this joke torch. Five. Six. 
seven, eight. Stick on another stick. There we go. That's number seven. And that's number eight. Let's go. So I stink a little bit, courtesy of having that gut on me. But I might go rabbit hunting later on just so I can make some rabbity goods. I forget. I sw the hat and the gloves are what you can make. And you can have one of each. You can't wear two rabbit hats. One is a purely outer hat. Uh, but what I'm getting at is... What am I getting at? If I opportunistically grab myself three or four bits of rabbity fur and two or three guts, I can make one or the other. I always forget which one costs three and which one costs four, though. And don't worry, this ice is solid. Southern access. If I go through to about where you see that hut and arc to the right... Or, or is it around here to the right? Oh, crumbs. I, I don't know. I don't remember my way around this place well enough. Anyway, somewhere around here we're going to find the camp office. And sometimes you can find a hammer inside these uh, little fishy huts. On top of that, if I see some cattails, I'm actually going to grab some cattail heads just for tinder. I noticed myself running a little low on tinder. Oh, there's the camp office. I got here faster than I thought. Very convenient. In that case, I might actually head down that way to check out those wee huts. Yeah, yeah, that seems not unreasonable. In the interest of not stinking, I'm going to leave one of my things here. Flare is good, wood is fine, so in case I don't need... Yeah, the going is good, so I'm going to check over by those huts. Cloth is okay-ish. Yeah, I've got plenty of access to cloth where I'm going. Let's see if I can remember to come back in here. I'm playing on an older version of TLD. Uh, I'm very unhappy with the progression of the DLC, so I froze my version on the least buggy release that they had, and I've been playing on that ever since. In my files it's called Tales 3. You can't access this, sadly. Their little time capsules don't work for incremental DLC parts, but using my giant brain, I just made a complete backup of the game in my directory. I think the game is DRM free. I don't want for scrap metal, it's just going to weigh me down for no real benefit. I keep thinking there's something on the back of the pot belly stove, but there's not. It's just a leg. The snow's getting heavier. I'm not fond of that. And this is not birch bark zone. I need to get over to birch bark zone, which is a very real zone. Cattails. Tails? Come on, this is fresh water. Mm, a little too fresh for them, it seems. Plenty of deer, but deer don't go hostile. They just run away from you. Tremendous sources of food in this game. Not to mention their deer hides. Very useful. The Long Dark is not DRM free. Really, because I, mean, I, just, I just pulled out the files and it runs just fine. Portably, even. I don't think I even need steam running to get this uh, this game going. But I could well be wrong. For all I know, there's some other DRM check that's passing, because I did legitimately purchase my copy of Long Dark many years ago, in fact. Played it for a little bit when the game was relatively new out, and I thought it sucked. <laughs> so I, I put it down and never played again. Only Mystery Lake was around in free play mode, and the story mode I've always hated in this game. I think I played through two and a half chapters of it, and then uh, watched the rest of it on a YouTube run, and wow, I was unimpressed. What the heck is that big door there? There we go. Okay, I can warm up slightly in here, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to steal some matches. This is coming handy. Twelve more matches. Okay, we are set for the rest of this run in terms of ignition. We're still going to grab matches if we see them, but the the need for fire is no longer dire. We have all the ignition we can possibly need. I can even be a bit flippant with my usage of them. I don't need that sewing kit. I already have two. No sense weighing myself down with more. I suppose there's that argument. If it's on Steam, it's got DRM. And yeah, once upon a time, Steam sucked, but these days, Steam 
I gotta say, it's pretty good DRM. I'll take it. Oh, finally. I was waiting on this for a while. Also, I grabbed some scrap metal that I didn't want. But I did want this plaid shirt much better than the old crappy one. I'm just going to drop the other one. I won't even harvest it for cloth. We've got plenty of access to that. Don't want scrap metal using up my inventory space. I know some people are vehemently against steam, but not me. Like, steam's great. I'm sure some of the practices aren't amazing, but you got to weigh everything up. And uh, I don't think it's any exaggeration to say that Valve saved PC gaming. Oh, bollocks. Well, someone didn't get saved here. That's me, a blizzard. Hmm. Right. That's not ideal. It's anything but ideal. I'm very quickly going to freeze out here. I'm not going to double back just yet. Wow, this blizzard came out of bleeding nowhere, didn't it? Okay. Alright. It's livable. As long as it doesn't last too long. Here we go. We're warm enough in here despite the blizzard. And the question is, what do we do with our time here? I don't particularly want to drink a birch bark tea and sleep for two hours, but that's exactly what I'm going to do in the hopes that that passes the blizzard. Going out there in that blizzard is assisted suicide, so we're not doing that. Let's just take one sip of birch bark tea and sleep. I gen generally only want to uh, use my birch bark tea right before I go to sleep, because that way I heal in my sleep from having calories in my belly. If you sleep when you're starving, you don't heal, but if you sleep when you have uh, calories, you do. So it's, you know, it's twice as good, really. We're going to pop our nose outside and see how we're looking. Oh God. Probably very bad. Very bad. The only good thing is that the wind turned, but it's still a blizzard and I'm not sticking my neck out there. Do we drink another birch bark tea and, uh, tea and sleep again? I say yes, we do. I know I wanted to save up something like nine birch bark teas and have a massive sleep, but I won't. I'll sleep for two more hours here. Two? Yeah, two. Go on then. Good thing you found that shirt just before the blizzard started. <laughs> that little plaid shirt wouldn't save me from the blizzard, but it's still nice. Still sounds grim out there. Our condition right now is 69%. That's pretty good, considering it went down into the mid to low 40s previous. My stomach is eating itself. I do like hearing people say that when they're in great pain. Eldon was saying it during one of his long Mass Effect runs, and I, I just couldn't stop giggling. Okay, it's still chuffing miserable out there. I think I drink another birch bark tea and take another one hour kip. We're only healing 1% from the sleep, but we heal 5% from the birch bark tea, which is pretty good. Oh, sounds like the blizzard let up. Just in time for it to be late afternoon, the warmest time of the day. All right, excellent. Gonna go back, grab our guts. Oh, this is excellent. I don't even need a fire here. It's so warm. So warm. Thank you, extra shirt. <laughs> don't know what I'd do without you. I'll probably freeze. Grab some more sticks along the way, thanks to all that resting. Resting with food in our belly, I might add. We've actually mitigated some of our fatigue damage. And now we're dying again. Well, that's okay. Shepard is used to it. So normally, at this stage in the game, when you harvest a cattail, you leave the head and you take the stock. We leave the stock and take the head. So we're going to leave a trail of those. It's, uh, it's funny to me. Because uh, once you have fire starting level 3, there's no need for cattail heads whatsoever in the game. They serve no purpose. You can't eat them, you can't burn them, and you don't use tinder after you hit that higher level. I'm not going to go over there. It's not worth tangling with the wolves. Well, is it? Could be. I'm not scared of wolves, they're scared of me. Even so... I mean, you know, it's really nice and warm. I think I'll just give them a wide berth. But I will still go over in this direction. What time of day is it, Jake? The warmest time of day. Uh, he says, as the wind is notably picking up. Oh, unless you mean that as a genuine question, in which case it's late afternoon, early evening. Uh, 
I'm under the impression this game models scent on the wind. So I'm downwind from the wolves. They should have a hard time detecting me. Okay, this, this wind is starting to make it quite a bit colder. It's already dropped three degrees just because of the cold wind. Don't mind me, wolfykins. I'm just here to get a single tinder plug. Huh. Okay. Don't need that metal. Bit of a bust. It is slightly warm in here because I'm shielded from the wind and also it gives you a very minor air temperature bonus inside one of those things. Some people say that the fishing huts are okay in Outer Loper, some people do not. I'm pretty sure I said they're okay in Outer Loper, but some people can do really strict Outer Loper runs where anything resembling a man-made structure is absolutely disallowed. I still giggle at when I took refuge in the broken lighthouse in Bleak Inlet and somebody said, is that lighthouse a natural formation? It was very blatantly not. Gave me the giggles though. Alright, we should be running a bit more. I don't want to spend too long out here. Even though it's not that cold, the snow is melting on my clothes and making my clothes get wet. And 5% wet on my head. Hold on, didn't I get a scarf? Oh, the scarf is worse than my improvised head thing. That's... That doesn't speak well to the scarf. I'm not taking that newsprint. It's not worth it. It's twice as heavy as regular tinder. Wow, slim pickings in the uh, fishing huts. That's unfortunate. Lord Barrington is often on the prowl down here. I'm not seeing him today, so I'll just count my blessings. Now I need to make my way back to the uh, the lakeside shack place, which is a very good place. It's full of resources. Sadly, most of them will be useless to us because it's mostly uh, food or food-enabling resources. But still a nice place to be. How far into the challenge are you? I believe we have survived for four days. Four out of thirteen. Shepherd, leg it a bit. Move like you plan on living. Since we're warm and safe in here, we can actively check. It is day five, meaning we have survived four. Four days. You might think, why even bother looting these indoor places if you're not going to take any food? Well, I'm still on the hunt for... Uh, a mag lens, some tools, and some better clothes. Some much better clothes, honestly. You expected day seven? Wow, you think my run is looking that good? You may or may not have meant it that way, but generally if someone says, oh, it looks like you're on day 20 or 25, you'd think, oh, that means they think I'm doing really well. Are those birch trees? I don't think they're light enough to be birch trees. Birch bark is my life, so if I see anything that looks like birch bark, I've got to go for it. I know a general area that has lots of birch bark in it in Mystery Lake, though. Oh, wow, wow. Up until now, we were still restoring condition. That's great. We expected time to pass faster. Time does not pass fast in the long dark. The clue is in the name there. It's not the short dusk. It's not the brisk eclipse. Scant twilight. Okay, you get the idea. Alright, I am running low on my birch barks after the heinous amount that I drank earlier. I want to go and get my gut from there. Get back over to... or back over. I've never been yet over to the uh, lakeside shack. What the heck is it called? I keep thinking it's a post office. It's obviously not a post office. This wind is just in the perfect location to stop me going to both this hut and that shack. Camp office, that's what it's called. Camp office. <laughs> so they've discovered your camp. They're coming for your hole. Alright, there we go. Let's just lag it over. Don't mind if we get tired. It's going to be a lot of sleeping tonight anyway. I'd like to lambast Shepard for being exhausted from doing a run from there to here, but I don't often run lugging 30 kilos of odds and ends with me, so I struggle to judge. 
Plus I'm terrible at running, so I shouldn't be mocking anyone for their ability to run. A five kilo jog wipes me out. Despite my performance at DDR. Oh yeah, uh, also subsisting on tea for four days probably takes it out of you as well. This is a nice TARDIS camp. It's much bigger on the inside than the outside. We'll still have a quick look around the outside first. There's a deer over there, which is almost of no use to us. But uh, some deer guts and deer hide could actually prove useful. I'm not sure mind getting the rabbity goods. All right, immediately greeted by something this I like to see. Handy. Lantern fuel. Good for accelerant, good for my torch. Let's do a lot of exploring while we can while it's still light. I do not need antibiotics, but I'll still take them. I'll just lay them out here. Six antibiotics yeah, here. Yeah. Here's maybe a bit more prominent. Skillet. I don't like skillets. I only use skillet if I don't already have access to a cooking pot. Tomato soup, salt, all lovely things, but we're not allowed them. That's well, not we're not allowed them, we just can't consume them. Even salt is off the menu. How much salt are you going to get out of some birch bark? I'm guessing not much. Flour. Mmm. Oh, man. Mmm. I need to whap out my flour later on. I want it with some bannocks. Lovely oaty bannocks. Some wheels. If I had a hatchet, I could trash them down to make uh, some burnable wood. Quite a few tatties lying around. Hey, cooking pot number two. I will not take it with me. I only see the utility in taking one cooking pot. It's a lot heavier than some recycled cans. I like some cans with me. Besides, we're not heavy on water making in this run, nor are we heavy on cooking lots of meat. Or in fact, any meat. Getting my cooking skill up would be almost useless. It does not speed up the boiling of water. I think it marginally speeds up the creation of tea, but I could be wrong about that. Alright, so far it's been pretty terrible here on the ground floor, but we haven't checked everything, have we? I don't need a whetstone. i got nothing to wet or stone. You know, I never noticed this can before, but I was actually watching someone else play The Long Dark and they picked this up and I went, What? There's a can there? It's hardly a big deal, but how do you walk past that so often and not notice it? What are bannocks, please? It's a very simple kind of bread. But you can mix a lot of different things in it, so I fancy making some bannocks with suet and oats. Maybe some raisins as well, or some cherries. Ding, 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 bedroll! 72% condition as well. That is wonderful. Oh, that is so good. Now we can sleep anywhere. We don't always want to sleep anywhere, but the enabling to do so is big. Alright, alright. There is another, like a 1 in 3 or 1 in 4 chance. And it's not here. But you can find a mag lens right there. Very easy to miss. I've missed it myself. But underneath the pillow, there can be a magnifying lens. Which means it might be in the lookout tower, or it might be in... The... Come on, Jake, use your head. Use that other part of your head. Yeah, it could be in the trapper's cabin, which is definitely where I want to go. The question is, do I want to go there now? Maybe. It's still light and bright and warm. I'm going to take a little sip of water, and I think we're going to go towards trapper's cabin. Because this place isn't so good. I mean, sure, there are beds and things, but... Uh, most of what's in here that's useful is not useful for this run. We're going to have a quick triage of goods. Uh, I want to be able to fire things up. I'll cure my guts and things over at Trappers. Risky, though. Mm, riskier than I'd like, especially right now. I'm going to... Yeah, you know, it's just one gut. I'll take it with me. All right, let's go over to Trappers, then. Where's Trappers from here, anyway? Oh, crap. Now I can't remember. It's a 50-50 on direction from here, and I can't remember. I also don't know which way Stick North is. Hmm. I'd rather fully warm up before I move out. Not too much mind, but if I just climb into this bed and pass time... There we go. Nice and warm. 
All we need now is buckets of birch bark, and this run is in the bag. I don't want to sound too cocky, but this run is feeling very good. But it, ooh, ooh, this is not a good condition to be going out and about, but I think we'll be okay. It's only minus seven. I can't remember which direction I want to go in. Is it that way or that way? Crumbs. Um, I think I want to go this way. If I'm wrong, then I'm losing myself about a quarter of a day. But if I'm right, then I'm right. And that's clearly nothing new or unusual. Yeah, this feels like a less familiar path, and it's not usual that I'd be going towards Forlorn Muskeg, so I think this is the right way to go. Protozomac comes in just to say, hey Jake, good luck in the one shot today. Why, thank you. I intend on having good luck. That's all I've ever known. Also, even after I reach the turning point, it's still quite a bit of a trek to get to Trapper Cabin, but at least the way I'm going through will have plenty of birch bark, and after all, that's the name of the game. If things look grim, I'm not opposed to starting a fire, heating up some birch bark tea and drinking it for my get warm bonus. Uh, I'm definitely on the right track. Oh, oh, I don't want that crappy torch. You just go away. Yeah, the, the, the wolf rounded on me because I had a, a gut on me. The gut stinks to high heaven. So that must be very interesting to the local wildlife. Carrying guts on me is not very good for the sake of uh, hunting for birch bark either, because of course Fido is going to be following me every step of the way. But I've got my torch at the ready and it's not windy, and if it did get windy I can switch to a flare and that'll still spook Fido. So as I said, it's all preparation. Every situation you find yourself in is a situation you've crafted for yourself, and I'm crafting myself a situation in which I can handle whatever's being thrown at me, or so I hope. This wind is... it's not too bad, but it feels like it's picking up. And whenever I'm in the wind, I'm getting colder. Whenever I'm out of the wind, I'm heating up. It's quite funny, you can see that little arrow in the bottom left next to my... Uh, next to all of my needs. Although I am overburdened and getting more overburdened as I get more tired, I'm still picking up sticks. I like a game of pick-up sticks played by lunatics, as they say in Tattoo. Alright, the, the lone birch bark tree. Let me just nibble all of your all of your bark off of you. Okay, the wind is actually letting up a bit. That's nice. Hopefully it's not just the calm before the... Ah, crap. Okay, well, whatever. I wasted that match. I was trying to double click on the birch bark, but I ended up double clicking to light my torch. Very common issue in long dark, accidentally lighting your torch when you don't mean to. Well, let's look on the bright side. I'm not really cold it's right now. Dark out here. Minus two is nothing. Anyway, I am sick of this doggy. Could you please go away? So what you do is you aim your stone at it to aggro it. But then it goes, oh god, fire! Oh, I'm so sorry, master. I will just... Oh, he's going to go in the direction that I want to go. Well, that's unpleasant, but whatever. I don't like his little yiping. I hate hurting dogs in games. I love dogs, so the idea of bringing them pain just doesn't seem right to me. I'm aware I'm still hauling around all those um, birch saplings that I don't need, but them's the brakes. Yeah, so the, the dog doesn't run very far. And then he goes, oh, wait, I smell some guts, and he comes straight back. Nobody said all dogs are bright, just that they're all good dogs. But the best thing you can do is not panic. The dogs are very simple creatures in this game. They see you, or they smell you, they come towards you. They see something scary, they run away, like a flare shot, or a fire, campfire, held fire, flare. Away they go. Just have a plan, and you'll be fine. It's when you panic and start making terrible decisions, and if you think, oh god, all i got to do is get away, I'll just run and I'll be safe. Well, then you've ran into more wolves, or you've gone off track and you've gotten lost. Or you've ran into a bear, 
That guy who drank his own pee doesn't seem so crazy. One horrible right problem for an even more horrible problem. Be prepared. Also, there's a lot less birch bark here than I was hoping for. Maybe I haven't combed it well enough. But I am almost over at the trapper's cabin. And yeah, I gotta say, this has been a cool haul of birch bark. I was genuinely hoping for so much more here. It's alright though. Um, maybe there'll be a blizzard through the night that spawns more of it. Yeah, bear scares off everything other than a moose. Bears and mooses do not interact whatsoever. Okay, I'm not liking the flickering of my torch here. I think it just gave up. Yeah, the conditions here are not ideal. I was hoping for much more birch bark than here. Normally I find a lot of birch bark around here. Maybe I just missed it all. It's not unthinkable. Another cave over here. I forget where it leads. Where does it lead? Uh, racking through my head. I think it leads over to Bleak Inlet, actually. Making it a very undesirable place to go. But who knows, maybe there's more birch bark to be had over there. Not forlorn musk egg. Err. No. Ooh, maybe. Mm, no. Ooh, maybe. Forlorn musk egg connects with Bleak Inlet. Where does that go? That also goes to Bleak. Maybe the cave splits in two and one bit goes here and, uh, and the other bit goes to Bleak. Can't remember. In single region survivor, I didn't do connecting areas, so they haven't had a chance to solidify in my grey matter whatsoever. Alright, well, there's a fat lot of not much going this direction. There better be at least a mag lens inside the trapper's uh, cabin here to make this all worth my time. I'm running to tire myself out, that's fine. I need to get a good night's sleep anyway. I'll drink all my birch bark. I will take as long a sleep as I can to restore as much health as I can. And then tomorrow will be a brighter, better day for Commander Shepard on her summertime in Inverness holiday. Quick loop around the thing in case there's something outside. Doubt it, but... Oh, there's a dog. <laughs> Alright, oh, we'll, leave, we'll leave Fido be. And here we go, this is one of the best locations in the game, so happy days for getting here. First thing I'm going to do is lay out my stuff that needs to uh, dry out. These saplings, that gut. A lot of my equipment's getting kind of wet here. This nasty rabbit pelt. They just dry out on the floor here. They'll do so in any indoor location and in some outdoor ones. They'll dry out in the backs of caves. Painkillers here. Dog food. Granola bar. Even some very well hidden summit soda there. You know, this is a gold mine if you get to here during a regular interloper run. You are set from here. But uh, it doesn't have a lot for us on uh, birch bark only. Sewing kit, put you over there. There's a book. Rack our fingers through the tinny here. And there is a fire. Do I want to start any fire here? How much birch bark do I have? I could prepare another two, and I may or may not have some more on me right now, so I'll tell you what, we'll try and start ourselves a wee fire here. Yeah, I can use a stick. I hope I don't fail though, this torch is dying. What are guts used for? Guts are used uh, kind of like makeshift Come rope. On, little fire. You use it for making some clothes, you use it for making the bow, you use it for making snare traps to catch some bunnies, which is not something I often do. Alright, there we go, wood stove is going. Now we feel nice and cozy by putting on a little bit of fire there. And then, and then, and then... Tell you what, I'll still pull a torch so I can have a look around. A little note. We're not reading notes. We're not here for the rich lore of the game. Ding, ding, ding! Mag lens! This stuff will come in handy. Mag lenses never break. Do not listen to rumours that bears can damage mag lenses. I have empirically tested that. Bears 
or any kind of struggle do not impact maglens. You can sit one out outside and run over it for 100 days straight, it'll still maintain its condition. So why they even have condition, I do not know. Drink. Need to open up this safe. Uh, this is the least fun minigame in the game. Alright, so it's about 47. Okay, it's 45 on the dot. 45, 15. Okay, we'll go all the way around. I think in all my time in Britain and Sweden, I have never seen a lock like this. This must be a very colonial kind of thing. I did see a lock like this in Nancy Drew, and I was actually very puzzled how to deal with it. I think I saw a lock like this in that bad Santa movie as well. Alright, there we go. Could be anything in here. This Could even be home. things that I don't need whatsoever. So we got ourselves a tin of peaches. Bleh. Oh, you know what? Uh, oh, actually, I'd need to bang it open. I don't have anything to open it with. I didn't pick up the tin opener. And the boots that I found... Well, they're worse than the boots that I have, so they're just going to be dropped. Eh, backup boots. Well, I can't complain too harsh about this place. Getting a mag lens is wonderful, saves me a trip up to the lookout tower. As for you, wooden stove. Sorry, I wasted a bit of time there, didn't I? Shouldn't be wasting time. Oh, I'm thirsty as well. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Right, what's happening first and foremost? First and forlorn. Let's spend 10 minutes preparing our birch bark by grinding it up. I don't know how that takes you 10 minutes. Just crush the thing in your hands, Shepard. I'll just add a few sticks to keep you going. Not a few bits of coal. Actually, a bit of that rancid old stuff will do just fine. In go the tinnies. And then we have enough birch bark to make how many of these? Hopefully a bit more than two. I have one more, so I had three, and that's going to take me to a total of five cups. Do I want to drink all five tonight? I think that would overheal me. Yeah, I reckon three or four should be enough. I, I will come away a bit starved in the morning, but I think three tonight will do me fine. Current condition looks like it's about 65% maybe. Can't get a good number on it without checking this, but uh, I've I've been between 56 and 74 today, which is really good. Might even be up in the 70s. Hmm. What I'm saying is I'm doing really good. Can't believe people would bet against me on a long dark. Come on, this is going to be a one and done. Who puts ragged old work boots in a safe? <laughs> Canadians! Yeah, that answers most of the questions in this game. Who does the da 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 da? Who has such incredibly fragile sure legs? It's all Canadians all the way down. Is there anything I want to leave here? Because I'll definitely be coming back here in the future. I should probably leave behind... Well, there's already a sewing kit here. I'm going to use one of these to fill up my lantern, that's for sure. I'll leave behind a flare. I'm going to leave behind... Three and a half litres of water. A lot of the weight that I've been carrying has been water. I made a lot of it early on. Too much, honestly, but... Uh, eh, yeah, I will, leave a, I will leave a flare here. Useful things can sit over here. Useless things can get off of here. The pinnacle peaches. The sewing kit's actually quite useful. Leave you behind here. Uh, tell you what, I'll actually leave one of my other sewing kits here. They're not heavy for sure, but... Mm, all of these clothes I'm currently wearing, except for you. Ditch you. I like all of this stuff. I don't need two packs of painkillers. I'll drop one, one batch of you. I should leave behind some sticks or something similar for, uh, for burning. Don't you go out of me just yet. I, I'm not done with you. Behind 
find a book. Carry one on me for burning. Keep the accelerant, that stuff's very useful. Leave behind some coal. Leave behind 10 units of coal. I want to check the cave and see if it has coal. If so, I want the extra space for it. And I'll leave behind a bunch of sticks. Nobody needs this many sticks. I need something to drink and soon. I'm sure you do, Shepard. Oh, right, she's actually getting thirsty. Well, I swear she's getting thirstier faster than normal. Well, that's good for me. It gives me an opportunity to drink up my teas. Also, I didn't prepare one of them. Good thing you mentioned that, Shepard. Yeah, this low carry capacity is kind of painful. 18 units of cloth is far too many units of cloth. So I'm going to leave behind probably 10 of them. I'm going to let this finish. How am I doing on torches? Four. I'll pull some torches then. I'll burn my firewood for it. I'll burn some sticks because I'm going to find more sticks where I'm going. There we go. Give me four torches. Um, I prefer four better torches than that, but okay. That's a bit better. All it takes is a bit of bad luck, Jake. Not exactly what he's known for. <laughs> I like it. All right, bed is right over there. Surely we won't get lost on the way to it. Give me that birch bark tea. Give me back my cooking pot. Let's look directly at the bed so we don't get lost on our way to it. And let us consume three cups of birch bark tea. Three, yeah, three. And then we're going to sleep for probably 10 hours. 10, I think I'll do 8. There we go, fully hydrated. Maybe just 6 hours and see where we're at after 6. No, it won't be light out. I'll do 8 hours. Hmm. It just It just feels wrong doing this and not... Um, not having a full belly for it. Yeah, it must be like Christmas for Shepard here. She's never eaten so much. I need to go on a diet. There we go. Our health is looking immensely good. It's first light, which means it's bollocking cold outside. But, unfortunately for Shepard, needs must. I have got to get my hands on some more birch bark. So I'll be exploring around a bit here. If things get really bad, I can just come back here to warm up. I'm so hungry. And also, something I almost neglected to do, was to fill up my lantern. Ooh, ooh, that's going to use all of my lantern fuel. That's unacceptable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this 0.2 litre one, and I'm going to fill it up just using the 0.37 one. What a strange sound effect. Uh, as for the lantern fuel, I am actually going to leave it here. Almost unthinkable, I know, but I already have two accelerants, so why would I want yet more accelerant that's in a way less flexible? The answer is I don't. Also, I'm going to sleep another hour. It's really unpleasant out there at this time of day. Let's see if I can navigate to the bed. Workbench is next to bed. Yeah, I'm going to sleep one more hour because we're still a bit tired. That's going to hurt me because I'm starving. But we'll make do. Five days for I think the game will say four. Oh, it does say five. Very good. Well then. Let's go. Let's hope the weather isn't minging out there. Ooh, well, actually, for a morning, despite the horrible cold, it's actually rather nice. Uh, there is some sign of birch bark trees over here. I'm going to give them an errant check for birch bark that is blown off. Otherwise, I think I'll be rounding back to... I'll probably do a check here, come back, warm up, and then check the cave. Deposit any coal there, and then I'm off to Forlorn Muskeg. And, of course, flare at the ready in case there is a dog. It's okay. It, it, it's hard to misclick and activate your flare. Hello, birch bark. Oh, this stuff's paying off already. More sticks, more sticks. Always with the sticks. Okay. 
Getting a little light on the birch already. That was just one. I need a lot more than one. Remember, I need about ten a day. <laughs> we certainly haven't been getting ten a day. We've been squeezing every penny. Besides, one nasty encounter with a wolf and our health takes a nosedive. One encounter with a bear, our health takes a plummet. Are these or are these not birch trees? I actually can't really tell. I'm certainly not seeing any birch bark next to them, so I'm going to assume no. The birch trees tend to be lighter, like that one, right? And this one. But again, do you see birch trees? Uh, birch bark? Because I don't. Ah, hello, Baron. I uh, hope you're not nursing too much of a headache after your partying last night. But don't worry, your headache's not going to be anywhere near as bad as the guy that got married. So I did earlier say that cold damage is unacceptable, and it is freezing cold here. So I'm already going to go back and take a one, another one hour nap back at the base. I can't feel my hands. Which is funny, because I did give you some work gloves. But hey, sometimes those work gloves can be pretty punishingly cold anyway. Oh, I, I threw the lantern fuel on the bed. That can't have been very comfy. Uh, I'll just drink up a wee touch more shepherd and then take a one hour nap in that in that bad you, you go out you do like 10 minutes of work and then you, you're immediately allowed a one hour sleep for it that's good work ethic now get back out there shepherd now I want the coal Yeah, I think Glowing Boar Lizard meant specifically Lizard wants to time out Baron. But Baron earned his sword, meaning he can abuse it however he sees fit. The only way to lose your sword is to cross me, and that's not easy to do. I'm a, I'm a real laid-back kind of guy. Although, how many times have I broken Nitro's sword now? Give it like a Japanese sword hunt. Must be a setting. I can time out my streaming buddies' other mods. You must be some kind of super mod then. Maybe an admin. Or, uh. Th there, are, there are certain settings that you can give to people. I forget what they are though. Don't tend to have to faff around with them personally. Okay, so. Where does this lead? You know what? I'm curious enough. I might go all the way through this just to find out. Because for the life of me, I can't remember. Not going to waste a match, though. I will instead waste my lantern fuel. It's nice and warm in here, too. I don't think the editors have rights over other mods, though. Why did I give out so many editors again? I think it was so that we could host... Yeah, that sounds about right. But then Twitch killed hosting, so uh, please don't abuse your editor th editor rights. <laughs> the editors go into like monetization settings and just drain everything. Okay, this is good. Coal, 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 coal. We are looking really good on this run now. The only thing we need is a veritable bucket of birch bark, and we have got this. I'm quite confident. Again, as long as nothing terrible happens, like being blindsided by a moose or a bear. We don't even run the risk of getting parasites, because there's uh, there's no meat for us to eat. Meat is completely disallowed in this run. Well, I suppose cooking it isn't disallowed. I could actually carve up a bunny and then cook its uh, lovely giblets into food. But I just have to stare at it. Boy, that would be torture. Starving people and then forcing them to cook delicious food. Completely denying them any right to eat it. Oh, the smell. Mm, Jesus, that would do me in. See, I like cooking, but a big part of the fun of cooking is knowing that you're going to be eating it. 
I just realized it's a vegan run. Or rather, a vegan run would be more permissive. Yeah, at least in a vegan run I could drink the reishi tea, rosehip tea, herbal tea. I could eat pinnacle peaches. I could eat some tomato soup. Tomato soup is vegan. Oh, damn, I was meant to buy some tomato soup the other day. I completely forgot. I'm doing myself in here. Alright, where does this lead? I am... Mystified. Hmm. Oh god, it leads to Mountain Town. I'd forgotten that these two were connected. Well, not going to Mountain Town. Well, you know what? Mountain Town does have some birch bark spawns, I think. Down in the basin, actually. So I might go over to the basin from Forlorn Muskeg. It's a bit of a trek, though. And nobody likes walking through Forlorn Muskeg. It's a treacherous place to be. There are wolves, there's thin ice. If wind or a blizzard hits you, you are completely exposed. There's almost nowhere to take shelter in Forlorn Muskeg. But almost nowhere isn't nowhere. There is a train with a burnable barrel inside. There is a bunker next to... The farm area that has the forge. Some caves up in the north, but you're by that far, you're next to Milton Basin anyway. Yeah, there are options. Okay, I decided to cheap out and come through here without lighting a, uh, lighting my light, and that might be a poor idea. Don't know about you, but I can barely see here, and I cranked my monitor brightness up to 20%. I can feel my eyes being singed through for the second time in their lives. Yes, the outdoor forge. The one we had to use in Outer Loper, because the other forges are indoors. One's in the Riker, one is underground in the airport, in the airfield. Uh, where's the other one? Oh yeah, there's one inside Broken Railroad as well, inside the railway area. Do I want some stuff? No, I don't. I was considering whether or not I wanted some charcoal there, but charcoal would be probably worse than it would be good. There's the light at the end of this tunnel. Alright, there we go. Spared myself a bit of fuel coming through all this. Uh, ended up with more coal. Do I want that coal? 12 units of coal is quite a lot of coal. But if I'm heading over to Forlorn, that's okay, because I might really need it. Is there a way to win this game? Is there only survival? There is only survival. Define your own wind condition, because that's the only one there is for you. Okay, another comb over here for more birch bark, but in general, we're now heading towards Forlorn. Since we found the mag lens, there's no need to go up and check out the lookout areas. There's certainly not going to be any birch bark up there anyway. I was kind of in a hurry, and it was pretty dark when I was going here previously, so... Jesus, it's minus 13 here. Uh, I'm going to be losing heat kind of quickly here. Do I want to light a torch to preserve heat? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be lighting a fire no matter how you look at this, so let's just use the match earlier. Nice field for birch bark. Hey, there's some birch bark. This has already paid off. Yoink. Because it's so hilly here, it's actually quite unpleasant for scouring for birch bark. It'd be nice if it was good and flat, kind of like the ravine area. Okay, well the ravine isn't flat, but it's certainly easier to find bits of birch bark there than here. This is severely limiting my view. I'm also climbing up this thing is leaving me at risk of sprains. Could snap our delicate Canadian ankles on the way up here. Hope nobody got too injured on your uh, on your bachelor party the other night, Baron, or last night rather. I say yours. I'm sure it was your friends, but you were there, so it was yours. Actually, if you posted about how it went, I did completely miss it. You know how this game is. It does take a fair bit of focus. Where the heck is all the birch bark? In my head, this area was absolutely chock full of birch bark, and I am barely finding any. But 
Every little bit helps. Every bit of birch bark is 2.5% of my health restored, which is good because every in-game hour that I starve, I lose 1% of my health. What's the goal of this run? To survive for 13 days without eating any food. The only substance we're allowed is birch bark tea. Which is a real thing and is really edible and I've never had it, but courtesy of this game I do plan on trying it someday. Just like I want to try rosehip tea. I had an opportunity to when I was in Japan, but I did not take it. Because I didn't want to buy a drink. I was having a meal and I just wanted water. Which is what I often only order with food because I am a skin flink. Is that birch bark? It looked like birch bark. It absolutely was not birch bark. It was two sticks next to each other. Bamboozling me into thinking that I'd located some birch bark. Life could be ugly. Hmm. Huh. Well, this is a bit of a disappointment. I honestly thought that Mystery Lake was going to be far more forthcoming with birch bark. And this is the main birch bark area. I'm not aware of somewhere else that has it more densely packed in this region. There are certainly other places in this region with birch bark, but I don't, I don't want to be going out of my way for wee snippets of the stuff. I want buckets of birch bark. Kind of like my kilo of spiders. Yeah, well there's the birch bite behind me. Let's get away. It's okay, uh, animals will follow you between transition zones. And we're about to transition over to Forlorn Muskeg. Which is a horrible region. Oh god, I actually just dropped my mouse and pinged up there. Turned myself around. I hate this mouse. I hate the Spatha X. At least it doesn't double click. But that's the only thing it has over the Logitech G502. Alright, Forlorn Muskeg, I don't like you, and you certainly don't like me. If you liked me, you would have treated me better all the times I've been here. But needs must. I need birch bark. So I'm going to be making a... Am I going to go straight for the birch bark? Am I going to go around a bit? I don't know. I still don't think I have a single coat yet. I think I'm going to go for the derailed train first. Which is straight ahead, but I generally want to go in that direction. Follow this place around through the north. That is north, right? I think stick north is north here. Let's drop a single stick. Yeah, that's north. Okay, good, good. Then I kind of know where I'm at. So south has some stuff going for it, but specific to this challenge, I don't think I want to be going south. Not even to Spencer's uh, barn place. Going to go to that derailed train, that red thing right in front of me, and then I'm going to arc over to the right, because the plateau up there, if I recall well, and I should recall well, because I got double trampled by a moose up there during my Outer Loper shopkeeper run, has a lot of birch bark trees and a lot of birch bark. Did I say I hate being cold? Because I really do. Yeah, I might have mentioned it, Shepard. Even if I find myself exposed and in dire need of sleep, we now have the sleeping bag. As you can see by the little icons I keep in the top left of the screen. So it should be of no consequence to us if we need to take a nap. Normally, you would come to Forlorn Muskeg for the either the, the forge. If you wanted a forge, you could just continue on the Broken Railroad and get a more convenient indoor forge. But what you usually come here for are the vast number of cattails I think even on Interloper, there's somewhere in the region of 200 cattails on this area. You don't really care so much about the tinder, but that's 200 times 150 calories. We survived basically for 10 days here on just cattails. Cattails never go off, never expire. Even if you pick them and then just drop them down on a rotting corpse, they will still be 100% condition and ready to eat. But of course... We're not allowed cattails. So this ain't just a vegan run, this is a birch bark only run. The vegans finally having the upper hand on me, huh? Some burdock roots there as well. I don't think I've ever played around with burdock. I guess it is food, but it's not allowed in this run. Wow, 
Wow, 4 for 5 viewers, says Shen. That's a lot. Certainly a lot more than we get doing a Vorion. <laughs> People are sick of a Vorion. What was that comment the other day? When is it not going to be a Vorion? It's hard to watch. I think that was the nicest way they could have put it. Like, stop playing this game, Jake. But I must. I want to play it. Just like I want to play this. But that's okay, though. We never stream for viewers here. <laughs> we could also say we don't stream for the viewers here. Right, uh, it's cold. It's really cold. Uh, it's cold enough for me to start a fire here. I'm just going to use torch, tinder, fuel, uh, stick, and go. Doesn't even matter if we fail. But uh, cold damage is now absolutely forbidden. There is no situation that we should be in anymore where we start taking any significant amount of cold damage. <laughs> I googled to see if cattails and birch trees were in some way related to how. Right, I'm going to drop one bit of coal and a few sticks just to very rapidly warm myself up here. We've got a flare. Two more bits of coal. Hey, finally a top. It's terrible. The sport vest is awful, but at least it's something. We've just been wandering around in a plaid shirt and a thin sweater. Normally you'd get a windbreaker or a ski jacket, both of which I've seen down at the, um, the farmstead. So that's actually a good reason to head over there. Scrawled message about cash. That cash used to have an MRE in it, but that got removed because no MREs are allowed in uh, Interloper. Might actually make a little bit of water here. Uh, I'm going to be hanging around here for a wee bit anyway. In fact, you know what? I could take a nap here. Just build up a bit of energy while the going is good. You know, lay this out. Fire is here. Fire's going for a good long time. Set me up with two liters of water. Take a one hour kip here. I need myself a bit more water, honestly. Uh, do I have anything I need or want to make? I've got one bit of birch bark, look at me. Alright then, if you could be so kind as to cook me up that birch bark. Is there anything I need to do during that time? Bandages, head wraps, tinder plug. I'm still just going on my improvised head wraps, and to their credit, they're still holding out surprisingly good. But I would like a proper hat. A wool toque would be amazing. Cloth toque would not be amazing. Aviator hat, bunny hat. I'm never going to just find a bunny hat, but there are many things that would be nice. Wow, this bedroll. Are they really in 70 odd percent condition? There's all these patches and grime on it. I haven't even slept in the thing. Previous owner obviously didn't take very good care of it. Anyway, put that in. Ooh, take a bit more of a drink first. Sleep for one hour. I'm still taking damage as I sleep because, again, I'm starving. Uh, the weather just took an enormous ton turn for the worse. Give me my water. It's full-on blizzard out there, so I'm feeling very, very smug about having soup shelter here. Because, like I said, in Forlorn Muskeg, if you're out there, you are exposed. And not the fun kind of exposed. It'll be boiled in 32 minutes, huh? Can I maybe repair this bedroll? I don't like it being as mashed up as it is. Two bits of cloth, 45 minutes. Yeah, I can get behind that. Let's put on some more water. Don't mind making water here, because I can just dump the water here. I do mind this going off, though. Take some firewood to burn for longer. Take a few more sticks to burn for longer. I want you to burn for three hours. Although it'll burn for longer because it's so blessed cold out here. Uh, let's repair you. 70% chance of repair. Use the sewing kit. Don't fail me now, Shepard. You failed plenty. Oh, Shepard failed. You're boiling. You'll be boiling in a few minutes. Tonk. Let's make more water. Let's make more water. Let's realize we have too much water and leave a little bit behind for future Shepherd. We don't exactly have food to leave behind for future Shepherd, but water is about all we can do. Oh my lord, you failed very rapidly, and I'm actually rapidly running out of cloth now. I ditched a lot of it back at the old place. There we go, there we go. Fully restored. Boiling dry, boiling dry. The weather is still gash, so I'm going to take another nap in my nice and repaired bedroll. So, sling on another half litre in you, another full litre in you. 
choke down a little bit more myself, because all this sleeping is Thursday work. Okay, there we go. We managed to sleep through the blizzard, which we wouldn't have been able to do without the bedroll. We would have just been hanging around getting tired like a fool. Boiling dry, boiling dry, come to me, come to me. It's calmed down a lot out there, and it's late, e uh, late afternoon, so it's going to be the best time of day. I leave myself plenty of water here. I can always make more. Just drink myself up to half. There's no benefit to being more than 1% satiated on water, really. Uh, see this torch? It's terrible. Just dump it there. And take four additional torches. That's one. There's two. It'd be a real game changer not to be able to pull torches. You'd have to really rethink strategies on Interloper. Which is, again, another reason I'd really like to have torch pooling from these fires removed from the game. And I, I, I get the school of thought that says, well, why don't you just don't do it? There's a certain feeling I get when I'm playing a game and I purposely de uh, deny myself a strategy. I feel like I'm holding myself back and it always makes me feel very uh, frustrated with what I'm doing. So I'm constantly having to think, oh, no, can't do that, can't do that, why not? Uh, just because... It's different from this challenge, right? We've got a very set strategy, or a very set uh, rule book. You can only get calories from Birch Bark Tea. Nice and simple. But if you start adding in all these little can't do this, can't do that, can't do this, can't do that, uh, it becomes a bit mentally cloudy and pulls me away from the enjoyment of the game. Now, if I had a mod put in that removed the ability to pull torches, that would be a different story. And I know, functionally the same thing, but it's important to me. Anyway, that, that uh, little radio tower up there is an excellent uh, visual cue for the direction that we're heading to. We need to swing around the left side of the rocks that's just next to it. I'll indicate what I'm talking about with the tip of the fire there. It is bouncing over the rocks that I need to swing around. Unfortunately, this ice is thin ice. If I attempt to run across it, it's going to shatter underneath my big, heavy, clumpy feet. So we're going to go around. I wonder if women get sensitive about the size of their feet. Sounds like a very nasty thing to say about a woman. You got big, large, thumpy, clumpy feet. Shepherd probably break my neck for saying that. Well, that she'd say, "Oh, I thank you. Glad you noticed." I think it's weird that you can generate torches from a fire that's seven bits of coal in an old airport romance novel. Exactly. And it's also weird that it's something that would burn as long as it is. Look at it visually. It's got a bit of rope around it. It makes much more sense to have to craft your torches. Three sticks, some cloth, and some lighter fuel. Still renewable. You'll always be able to find sticks. Cloth can be found in a number of ways, even renewably from um, beachcombing. And uh, you can always get oil from frying fish. And fish are renewable. Unless you're paying on one of those... Uh, lofty challenges in which no animals spawn at all. Right, there's a birch tree or two here, but I'm not sure if this is a birch bark spawning area. It is windy, but it's not windy enough to put an end to my fires, thankfully. Dougals was talking about a really cool balance change to the game, which would be uh, wind does not blow fires out immediately. What it does is it makes the fires burn out faster. Very frustrating in this game when you're just going la da 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 and then a very, very short-lived wind spell blows out your fire. And then the wind passes and you're like, oh, I guess I have to make a fire again. Especially when it's a campfire because sometimes the wind changes direction. Never at any point was blowing against your fire, but just the game's calculations go, oh, changed wind, let's blow out your fire. Aggravating to say the least. I love this game though. Finding all these little problems with the game is a sure indicator that the game itself is great, because I wouldn't be investing myself so much to find all these issues. This game really drags me right in. I guess it reminds me a lot of growing up. I grew up in extremely rural Scotland. Every night was a cold night, even in summer. Hot water bottles bundled up, two dog nights. The even in summer bit is an exaggeration, none of the rest of it is. It could get very hot in summer because we weren't prepared for heat at all. <laughs> Dad's saying we're not allowed to turn the radiators on. It costs too much money. 
And then he spends gods know how, God knows how much bringing back these fancy oil radiators saying they're so much more efficient. Uh, thanks, Dad. They were not warm at all. I had to hug those things. Anyway, very cold upbringing. But it makes me really appreciate my life now where I live on a literal resort. Lake Balaton to dip in when it gets too hot and nothing to do when it gets too cold because it doesn't get cold here. In the past year it has snowed twice and apparently even that was quite rare. Alright, I hope I'm right about there being birch bark up here because this has been a bit of a pilgrimage if there's not. You'd need to start with 100% torch if they remove torch pulling. No, you just have to get good. Oh, I think I will actually take some of these cattails for their heads. Just in case I run low on tinder. I have no shortage of sticks, for sure. And actually, if I get cold, now that I have the bedroll, this cave is an excellent opportunity to rest up. The cave's full of coal, but I don't need coal. Does it have any tools in it? Maybe I'll check it out when it's darker, now that the day is nice. Have I overshot here? I have. I don't recall it being this far along. Hopefully I'm not just in the completely wrong area. It's been a while since I've been here. I don't want to run. I don't want to exhaust myself. I decided from the very start of this run, no maps. I will not be using any maps. Not my digital ones, not my printed ones. The only map I'm allowed is the map inside my brain. The only area that I'm not familiar with in this entire game is the... Uh, what was the new place added again? Toxic Hole Place. Yeah, I'm not very familiar with Toxic Hole Place. But that's not in this version of the game anyway. I branched off. No, not the airport. That's it, Marisa. The Zone of Contamination. Thank you kindly. It's the only map Jake can actually read. My map reading skills are not fantastic. I like to think this game has improved them a little bit, but... You know, polishing turds and all that. Now, let's hope that the moose isn't up here. That moose is going to give me a fright, because... Yeah, twice here it broke my ribs in Outer Loper, and I really thought I was done. But, although it took uh, something like 20 days to repair ourselves, we did eventually fix our ribs with copious amounts of bandages, which I... I've been informed is actually a bad way to repair ribs. Don't use bandages, is what I've been told. Right, so, 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 so. This is not a safe place to light a fire. It's not actually fully sheltered. That was a horrible lesson to learn, but I did learn it. Antiseptic is useless. Sometimes there are some nice tools here, though. Crisps and a ragged t-shirt. I'll leave those both there. Beef jerky is not as perfect as you think it is, Shepard. You can't eat it. Polaroid for the Vista. Uh, okay, I thought it said my torch burned out, but no, this burned out. Uh, yeah, I think we're kind of sheltered from the wind here, but still not enough. I don't strictly need this fire on me, but I'm keeping it for the minor warmth bonus so I can spend a long time here. I do want to spend a long time here plucking every bit of birch bark I can. There is no threat up here aside from the moose, and the moose might not even be here. Eyes peeled for birch bark. This should be a very birch bark rich area. Look at all these birch trees. Obviously not birch trees over here. Just seeing if any birch bark blew over in that direction. The initial finding of no birch bark. Ah, there we go. I was going to say the initial no birch bark leaves me a little trepidatious, but we've got some. It's difficult keeping my eyes peeled for the moose and for the birch bark, but. I don't see the moose, so I'm just going to make an assumption that there is no moose. The moose is not loose. Cue somebody noticing the moose and noticing that I'm walking towards it. Moose aggroes very easily. There is no outrunning the moose. The moose will catch you. You you have a few options. One is get indoors. Inside a car works as well. Another option is to just fling yourself off the nearest uh, hill. It'll still try and follow you, but it'll have to take a long way around. The moose does not jump off of things. Another is to get elevation. Climb up uh, anything. This wouldn't be enough, but there are 
fallen over trees that would work. This is a very sad amount of birch bark. Did the game realize I was doing a birch bark only run and decide to despawn half of the world's birch bark? Sorry, I'm being methodical. I'm checking out these areas which look like they're going to have fewer birch barks around. Nice to hear that Shepard isn't complaining much. She is starving, of course. But uh, we're actually keeping very warm, even though we don't have particularly good clothes on. Being out in the late evening is very good for temperature. Even when it, even when dark falls, you're still generally pretty good until late night when temperature starts really dipping, and then you're worst in the early morning. Just zigzagging back here, looking around for any bit of birch bark that evades my view. Having no grass graphics option settings would help for being able to see the birch bark that's around all these frozen bits of grass. Ooh, a bunny! Well, I am considering getting some bunny goods, but I think at this point we'd pretty much be at the end of the run by the time we had any viable bunny gear. That's birch bark, yoink! That's birch bark, yoink! Circle around a bit, come to the other side of this rock, grab more birch bark. Anybody been kept keeping count of the birch bark? I think we're at six here. Which is not enough, I need ten per day to survive, but we can subsidize survival with stim packs and some very good sleeping combined with our birch bark consumption. Nice thing is I haven't taken too much damage. Ooh, very, very nice. How are we doing on the birch barks now? Ten of them! Oh boy. Veritable feast for Shepard. <laughs> Body so hungry it eats its own vocal cords. <laughs> that makes no sense, but it's very funny. Well, maybe it would. I mean, the, the body can eat its own brain. Why wouldn't it be able to eat its own vocal cords? There's a sea life form that eats its own brain. Once it, uh, once it finds itself a home to attach to, it no longer needs its brain. Well, not all of its brain, at least, and it actually digests its own brain. I forget what it's called, probably has some fancy aquatic life name. Well, might as well take the sapling for the inevitable bow that we're not going to get. Ten per day, far less, I think. Um, 10 per day is 25 health restoration per day, and you lose 24 per day from starvation. The calories would offset some of that, so if you were eating 10 per day, then you'd actually probably only starve for about half the amount, depending on how much you move around. Okay, I think we have plucked this clean. What are we going to do? I actually wouldn't mind going over to Milton Basin and checking for Birch Park. There's a ha! Ever the Ronso. I knew some of these would be evading me. It's hard to spot though, and it's getting harder as it gets dark. Thought I heard the moose. I heard a noise. I don't want to crest that hill in case the moose is on the other side. Shouldn't be. I, I'm sure I was just. P doesn't seem so crazy right now. I'm sure, I was just hearing my own chair squeaking or something like that. All right, all right, we're good. Hmm. I think I will sleep tonight. Drop off a lot of my goods in this cave. They'll dry out in the cave rather nicely. And the cave will be nice and warm for me too. Oh god, I should be harvesting all these mushrooms, but I can't have them. Uh, yes, get ourselves inside. It's um, it's not a man-made cave, so we're not going to be denied starting a fire in there. I am taking that t-shirt to rip apart for cloth, because we had a very bad time with cloth repairing our bedroll. Probably drink two... Yeah, I think two uh, sips of birch bark tea tonight. 
have a good long sleep, although it won't be as long as I would like. And then we're heading up there to Milton Basin tomorrow, and then doubling back. With any luck, there'll be a blizzard, and more of this birch bark will respawn. And you know what I'm like with my luck. Okay, okay, let's be wary about our torches here. Womp. I'm explore a bit before I consider making camp. I still have a couple of torches left. I think it was here where I had the issue with that, that stick spawned about 40 times. And I just kept picking it up. I've seen that happen with sticks and coal. There's a rope here. And there's a gun inside. Don't know where, when, or why I'd want that rope. I could make a rope down into the bottom part of Forlorn Muskeg from here, but there's very little point. There are not many ropes in this game that are worth setting up. There's the ravine. There's one to get down into the river part of Broken Railroad. Yeah, this pack is getting kind of heavy. There's one to create a shortcut in Timberwolf Mountain, but I think every other rope is just kind of a waste of time. You can put them there, but ropes are very exhausting to climb up. They barely make shortcuts most of the time. So, better just to walk around than exert yourself on a rope. If time was of the issue, then sure, you could take the rope, but you're going to lose that time needing to rest up. Theoretically speaking, if you cut really, really tall tree from the top of the tree, reach such a high speed before hitting the ground, it will warm up and melt the snow when it lands, making the tea in one go. This is one of those theoretically tall trees in a vacuum on a frictionless surface. On a grid of infinite size with the uh, uniform conduction. Thank you, theoretical scientist. We're really slowing down. We're tired. We're heavy. Shepard just wants to put an end to this. So I'm going to double back to where I was. Light up a fire and sleep the night away. Well, maybe we can prepare some stuff first. Some extra water wouldn't go amiss. Just leave behind here. Welcome to the family there. Z Orlando. Been to Orlando a fair few times in my life. I like it. Maybe someday I'll go back. Just got too many places on my to-go list rather than going back to the USA for the ninth or tenth time. Recht, right here. We'll just set our fire up right on top of the snow. Disrespect a plenty. Use our tinder plugs. Use the sticks. Let's go. No, no, no. It can't be a vacuum. It needs friction. The heating from the falling. Uh, oh, oops. <sighs> Took it for granted that that's, uh, that fire was going to take. But it has to be a very thin tree, otherwise the bark's friction for the rest of the tree's Come mass on, would fire. slow it down too much. So really it's just a tall mass of bark. <laughs> There's no tree in this at all, is there, Mrs. Doyle? Right. What am I throwing on here? I don't even need my coal, just throw the firewood on. That's a lot of coal that we have anyway. Throw on some sticks just for duration here. Uh, let's not take damage from dehydration, please. And let's give ourselves about an hour to play around with here. So I'll set up a couple of these and then consider what I'm doing. Whilst that is happening, and whilst I will eventually sleep right here, what am I doing? Well, I absolutely want to prepare all of my birch bark. Mmm, that's good. Five more prepared birch barks. Additionally, I want to take that ragged old t-shirt that I have and just tear it apart. Just harvest it for one bit of cloth. Only takes ten minutes. Well worth my time. Any repairs or new crafts worth doing? These improvised head wraps are falling apart. The nice thing is you can actually harvest them to get one of the cloth back and they only cost, I think, two to make. Improvised head wrap. Yeah, I mean, you know, it wouldn't be too difficult to just make another replacement one here and now. 
I'm certainly having a hard time finding um, hats and clothes in general. You're about to boil dry. Uh, let's begin with the birch bark cooking. I can't really spend half an hour making it right now, but I will work with what I have. Anything else we're doing here? None of this needs to be torn down. Any old torches? Actually, I only have one torch now. It's a shame. Never repair, just remake. Yeah, it's a waste of time to repair your uh, your improvised head wraps, especially since it can fail. If I try to repair this, 70% chance of success. The repair amount, I don't know how high it gets, but really just tear it apart and make a new one. Well, maybe that's not true. How long does it take to repair? I haven't actually run the numbers here, have I? Yeah, it takes half an hour to repair and it takes half an hour to make a new one. Just make a new one. Fry. Fry, of course. Right. Boil you up. Take it. Take it. And we're cooking all the birch bark here. Unless I run out of water, which I'm not at risk of doing so. I've got four litres of stuff. And since there's a good chance we'll be coming back here in the not-too-distant future, I'm going to prepare by leaving myself some backup water here. Uh, I'm also going to do something that some people wonder why I do this, but... I am going to place one match here. One single match. Sometimes I get asked, why do you leave matches around the place? Well, the question I have is, why do matches go and drop down upside down on the ground? I do it so that in an emergency, I can always come back here, have water and fire. And those two things will generally keep me alive. I don't need 24 matches on me, so I can spare a match or two here. Take it, take it, and make it, make it. This is actually leveling up my cooking skill. I haven't cooked a single thing in this game, but my cooking skill is actually almost level two. If you were still enjoying Civilization's warm embrace, you might be able to cook a hot dog over a fire without burning it. That is miserable. I remember my mother's words well. She said, there's nothing more pathetic than a man who cannot cook. Well, I enjoy cooking, and I do remember those words often when I am cooking. Should be making use of that mag lens more often. I always, well, I did forget that I have it. Uh, in addition to this, I'm going to leave some of my sticks over here, and even some of my coal. I'll leave behind. I have a lot of coal, so I've got no problem dropping six units of coal. And I have a veritable ton of sticks. I'm going to be picking up more. I wish we could eat the sticks. Uh, let's drop 30 sticks right here. Lightens my load considerably. I do not enjoy cooking, really. I was under the impression that you did enjoy it, Marvin, but I guess I was mistaken. It's easy to project these things, I suppose. Right, we still have a bit of time in this. I am now a cooking novice. How, how do you rate my cooking skills now, game? You're getting a better cooking camp tools. Don't burn things so much, including yourself. 10% more calories from any cooked item does include birch bark tea. That most recent one I cooked now gives me 10 additional calories. Wow. Sadly, I can't recook them to get the additional calories, but a man can dream. Let's make another liter and a half of water. Shove on a couple more sticks. It's getting late at night, but unfortunately we're not very tired. Hmm. Hmm. Birch sticks in this challenge are pretty much like beef jerky, right? Could go for some beef jerky. I haven't had that in ages. But that was a nice reminder to drop my... Where'd it go? Here it is, my green maple sapling. Let that dry out over here. I shouldn't be carrying all these cured leathers. I don't need them. I should have left them back at the trapper's cabin. It's funny just looking at my food and seeing only water. Shepherd's again getting agitated at me not feeding her. I won't do new head wraps just yet, but I will consider it next time. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cups. Eight cups of birch bark tea, and we're about to head off and go and grab more, but I'm also about to drink some. Whilst all this is bubbling away. Yeah, I've also got 30 emergency healing on my stims. And those are for absolute emergencies. I'm still packing one bit of birch bark, but you need two to make the gubbins for tea. I'm happy with this. Very happy with how this run is going. 
Maybe I should make another one of these things. I've got the time. Uh, I'm going to take the more battered one. You're at 69%. I'm just going to harvest you. And then assuming these things are going to be fine for half an hour. We'll all be fine for half an hour. Let's improvise ourselves some head wraps. 30 minutes, well spent. Getting thirsty, getting very thirsty. That's why I'm taking my water, taking my water, taking my pot, taking my can, taking one last torch, because I like torches. It's not a bad, wait, hang on, how am I doing on torches? Miserably, whoops, okay, let's take a lot of torches then. There we go, four additional torches out of you. Unless they all stink like this one. Uh, you're all right. You're not. You are also not. All right, give me another couple of torches here since these ones are obviously bogus. Uh, I'm gonna need one more stick for this. Always like to carry a stick on me for starting a fire. You cannot start a fire with just coal, by the way. You need a stick, or some firewood, or a book, or something, but not coal. Okay. Oh, let's not forget to not take uh, hydration damage. I'm thinking two cups of tea, finish, fill the rest of my belly with water, and then we sleep for eight hours. Could drink three cups of tea. I'll probably drink three cups of tea. Odd choice to use your crotch to extinguish a torch, but I suppose it works, eh? Gotta get hot somehow. There we go. Well hydrated, relatively well fed. Top up the rest with just cold water. Good thing we brought this massive jug with us. And then I feel like eight hours of sleep tonight. <laughs> We'll burn 600 calories sleeping, and we only got half of that in our belly, but let's go for it anyway. It would be a very tragic mistake to accidentally uh, sleep with one of my needs unfulfilled, like being freezing cold or very thirsty. It would cost me a lot of health. As it stands, though, we're looking quite good. It is early Still morning. Feels like an empty pit. I can maybe see the way out. Here's my campfire, here's my bedroll. I feel like I threw away a few too many of my sticks, where are those? I'll take some of those. We are about five kilos underweight, which is nice. And there's the exit. Okay, well let's go for it. Does the healing benefit stack? Yes. It doesn't get any faster healing, it's still two and a half percentage of your health every in-game hour. However, oh, mag lens isn't going to work. Too cloudy, maybe. Uh, doesn't matter. Let's get moving. It is cold, though. Real cold. Tell you what, I'm already going to take a torch with me, I think. Uh, maybe not. I mean, maybe I'll find somewhere where the mag lens wants to work. But I guess it's just a bit too cloudy right now. Taking a chance up here. I'm not sure if there's a lot of birch bark. I'm not actually sure if there's any birch bark here, but my brain is tingling in a way that says there are birch trees over in Milton Basin, so that's where we're going. We are not proceeding up into Milton Town proper. That is a hefty amount of rope climbing that I'm not willing to do. It would sap my energy, and because we've been so starved, we just don't have the energy to climb ropes. We can climb walls, sure, but... I'd sooner climb a wall like that than a rope. I've tried rope climbing. It's very difficult. I don't mind climbing a rope, but... Uh, I don't mind climbing a rope ladder, but it's just a rope. Savage stuff. Uh, okay, this is very unpleasant and cold. And we're running into the wind, so we're moving even slower. Oh, that's all very bad, isn't it? But that's okay. Uh... Made it through another night. This is getting extremely cold. Feels like minus 28. I have made a mistake coming out here, but that's okay. I can rectify my mistake. If I can just push through this punishment and not run into a wolf. Oh, bollocks. Oh, double bollocks. Err. 
Just to be sure, you're not gonna go up from a mag lens, right? No, okay. Stay back, foul beast of the day. There we go, he's stuck by me and my fire and my rope, uh, my stone aiming skills. Right, that cost me valuable time. I need to get a move on now. I'm now taking hypothermic damage, which I really don't want to, but I specifically want to make my way over to that little shack over there. It's got a stove, which means no matter how bad this wind gets, the stove will continue to burn. Yeah, this is probably going to cost me about 5% of my health, so that's one of my birch teas just eliminated by coming over here. And I've only just arrived here. As long as the wind doesn't pick up any more, it's not going to blow out this fire, but it's actually within fire blowing out range. I can't believe this fire is still lit. Come on, Shep. Get in that little housey place. Okay, okay. Seems safe now. There we go. Alright, alright. Wooden stove. Wooden stove. I'm going to use the book. Oh, hell, I'll use my accelerant. Just to get it made really quickly. Wump. There we go. Immediately bang on two bits of coal. This was a mistake. I should have waited for it to get warmer, but oh uh, well. That's gonna... There we go. No longer taking hypothermic damage. That was bad. At our best, we were 90% condition. And now it seems more like we're about 80. Not ideal, but here we are. We'll warm up a touch. And we can look around here for, it, for some stuff. Whilst I look for stuff, I'll make water, make water. Oh, hey, we got the accelerant back that we just used here. Lovely. Okay. Take this wood, take this wood, check this first aid kit. Now, sometimes there's a log inside this crate. I'm not going to smash it apart with my bare hands. It would take an hour, and I would freeze horribly during that hour. Because it's too far away from the stove. I can't just drag it over to the stove and smash it apart, sadly. Uh, right. Feels like 31 degrees. I'll warm up nice and quickly here whilst the snow melts into delicious water. Whilst that is happening, I consider the fact that I didn't actually put on the hat that I made. Maybe if I had put it on, I wouldn't have taken that uh, damage from the cold. What a mistake to make. Really need a better torso clothing. The sports vest is terrible. These are okay-ish, but they're still just t-shirts. What I need is the wind protective quality of a good outer ski jacket or windbreaker or bearskin coat. That's a little out of the question right now. Surprisingly, my jeans are a bit knackered. I could actually stand to repair those. We're good for 30 minutes. Well, I gotta pass the time somehow. Let's repair these uh, these jeans. Good, good. I hate it when he gets almost done. Uh, she rather. I hate it when she gets almost done and then fails anyway. Could warm up some birch bark if I wanted the warming up bonus. Not an unthinkable idea. Stops me having to come crawling back here quite so much. I think I will actually warm up one of my birch bark teas and then drink it just so I can do a bit more exploring here. Yeah, look at all those birch trees! Oh boy, good, very good. Excellent, okay, thank you Canada. Don't want to forget my cooking pot. I would prefer to leave it here so I'm not so heavy and overburdened for my little journey, but I, uh, I do worry that I will completely forget. That's fine. No, that's not a fine torch. There we go. Okay, that's good. Let's go and grab that birch bark then, and make our way back. Nothing stopped me grabbing sticks along the way. Every stick is another seven or eight minutes on the fire. Eleven if you up to your fire skill massively. Uh, but it's also plus one degree on a fire, and that's a big difference. The run is going very well, Rainy, and you should be happy to hear that, as you knowingly, rightfully, morally justifiably, voted win in the lobbies. That's what I like to see. Yeah, my heat is 
plummeting already. Uh, so what I will do is I'll just drink my one hot birch bark tea. The calories are going to disappear very quickly because even walking around in this game drains your calorie meter like crazy. Is that a moose? That better not be a moose. That is totally a moose and he's guarding the birch bark. That is rotten. You can't scare off a moose and I certainly can't kill the moose. Ah, that's foul. Maybe I can make my way around and grab the birch bark around it, but if it starts stomping at me and staring me down, i got to run away from it. Oh, he's right in the thick of all the birch bark. Oh well. He's even looking at me. He knows what I'm about. Alright, I'll take the, take the way around. At least that way I get the high ground. Running is just going to eliminate the calories in my belly. Running on an empty stomach. Oh, that is rough stuff. Wrestle the moose. <laughs> the moose will come back for more. The moose will happily double or triple stomp you into oblivion. I don't want to crest that hill with the moose around, but look at this. We found some raggedy old bits of already moose chewed on birch bark. Still goes down the same. Hell, at this point we probably wouldn't be averse to boiling up moose droppings for calories. I believe that's done with elephants and other similar animals that don't actually process all the food that they eat. Where can I find something to eat? Shepard literally starving again. Gotta be very, very careful. I want to take the high ground so that I don't accidentally hop over and just meet the moose antlers head on. Where's that moose? We can see moose markings. The moose scrapes its antlers across the trees to... Uh, well, I don't know why it does it. Maybe it does it to loosen up some of the birch bark. In which case, thank you, moose. But yeah, hopefully you can see that tree right in the center screen. It's got some markings on it where the moose has uh, scraped against the thing. Not a lot of birch bark at all. Very sad. Probably only enough to just barely heal back the damage that I took getting here. I think I could spook the moose by throwing a stone near it, and that might make it clear off a bit. And since I'm pretty convinced that the moose is sitting right in the thicker where all the juicy bits of birch bark are, it might be well worth considering. How do trees grow out of a rock? Oh, hello. Didn't know this was here. You always find new things in this game. Just when you think you know everywhere in every place. You're going to find a backpack you didn't know about. You're going to find some campfire you didn't know about. Love this game. And you know what we don't have? We don't have some little sidekick yelling at us the whole time. Hey Leon, maybe you should ring those bells. Hey Leon, you're getting kind of cold. Maybe you should find somewhere to set up camp. Okay, Shepherd's sometimes yelling at you, but we are Shepherd. We're yelling at ourselves. The real fight. Okay, where'd that moose go? I might be able to scatter that moose with a well-thrown stone, but I think you can already see in your mind's eye how badly that could go. I'm going to try it regardless, though. Hey, he knows what he's doing. Get out of here. It's my birch bark, not yours. Cue it just running all the way around and just instantly aggroing on me. <laughs> Could see it happening. So it's, it's okay to admit, wow, Jake, that was a really good move you pulled there. I wouldn't have thought of doing that. I would have just cowered away. Tucked my sack between my legs and waddled through. It was clearly the moose is wearing the trousers today. Now that said, though, I was hoping for a bit more of a windfall of birch bark here. Clearly the moose has already eaten it all. Um, 
Yeah, you're right, Kitty. I have not killed a single rabbit in this run. Ignore the fact that I do have a rabbit pelt and some rabbit guts sitting back in the uh, the trapper's homestead. That was the wolf, not I. Not the snake, not the rat, not the pig, but the wolf killed that rabbit. This is dangerous, I can hear the moose. Yeah, sawed it. There may or may not have been a little bit of birch bark over there, but it was not worth risking my ribs. Okay, well now, with uh, an even larger stack of birch bark, we double back a bit. Like I said, making the big climb up to Milton is not a profitable venture. Well, I don't reckon it would be profitable. My best bet is actually to... Um... Now, I, I don't know if there's any birch bark in Broken Railroad, but my instincts tell me that there are not. So we're not going to waste our time heading over there. Just in case my fire... And burned out in the stove. I'll continue to carry this, but I hope it didn't, because it was a very warm fire. Ooh, bunnies! I might go and kill all those bunnies. Mm, there's no real need. I don't think this run's going to go on so long that that's a uh, consideration. Alright, is the fire still alive? No. No, it's definitely not. I'm going to bring it back to life, though. Just want to warm up while I'm here. No need for accelerant this time, though. Just stick on the... Stick on the stick. Now all we need is a perfect run of Frostpunk 2 whenever that comes out. Oh, man. Getting a bit worried about Frostpunk 2. If it comes out and it's absolutely terrible, I'm not going to play more than one or two rounds on, of it. Fire. And then can you imagine all the people going, when, when is Frostpunk? Where? And then people ask me, why? Why are you not playing Frostpunk? What makes it so bad? That's going to be even worse than asking me about when I'm going to cover Frostpunk 2. Come on, little fire. Come on. Or have you seen the latest trailer that tells us nothing about Frostpunk 2? All right, that was close. I don't mind wasting, so to speak, this coal. Oh boy, I just caught my temperature there before I went hypothermic. Good on me. Let's prepare ourselves just a little dash of water while we warm up. I'm gonna need a little bit more on you than that. Take these two bits of reclaimed wood. Whilst I... Tear apart these torches that are really crummy, all three of them. I feel a bit guilty eating my cream cheese bagel. What is with you Canadians and eating freaking bagels? It's like five slices of bread condensed down. Anyway, eating your cream cheese bagel while Shepard is out there starving to death on birch bark. Well, I'm getting into it myself. The only thing I had was a rice pudding for breakfast many hours ago. I am similarly... Rather hungry, like Shepard. Of course, on the other hand, I'm on a diet, but my diet still permits me plenty of calories a day, and I've only had about 200. Right, melting, melting, still going strong, so let's prepare ourselves our birch bark. Let's prepare ourselves our birch bark. How much do we find here? Eight. Well, seven. We already had one, but that was a worthwhile endeavor coming here. Very happy with that. Boiling dry, boiled, and now we make the birch bark. The sound effects for water in this game are really good. The sound effects in general in this game are fantastic. The crackling, the fire, the pouring of the water, the footsteps on the snow. It's good. So many games don't get that crunch just right. I get, I get it. Not all snow is nice and crunchy, but honestly, who wants to spend any time in non-crunchy snow? Uh, nothing worth crafting here, that's for sure. I should have plenty of tinder where I am right now. Nine of you. Nine should be plenty. We're not going to fail making a fire nine times. Mm. A baguette with pate and pickles. Mm. Oh, God. Hurting me now. Maybe that's part of the lose lobby challenge here. 
make Jake so hungry that he throws the challenge in favor of getting some actual bleeding food. Now remember, all of these birch bark teas that I'm now preparing give me 10% extra calories. Might not seem like a lot, because it isn't a lot, but at least it's something in a run where we need to scrape every penny. Not even squeeze, just scrape. Could actually take a kip in a bedroll next to here. A one hour sleep would not go amiss. Because we are getting kind of tired already. Mm -hmm. But the weather is so good. Why would I why would I stop when the going is good? How's the temperature out here if I'm away from my fire? Feels like minus seven, okay. Minus seven is not too shabby. It's gonna be more like minus four when we put uh when we carry a torch around with us, and you better believe I'll be liquidating this into torches. Alright, I think we're good to go without uh without sleep for a wee bit. Give me that, give me that, check the water. Water is good, it's good enough to drink a bit more. And then a little bit of overburdening is not too bad. The problem is we're gonna get more overburdened as we get more tired, but Shepard can handle it. Why is your eye gauge red? Blinded by Jake Sheer brilliant plays. I wish that were true. No, the, uh, the eye gauge, which is our fatigue, is red because if you starve yourself for too long, your maximum energy goes down a lot. Oh boy, the wind just suddenly came out of nowhere. Um, I don't want to go through the wind. Yeah, it's, it's windy enough to blow up my fire as well. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to throw on the reclaimed wood here. And a handful of sticks. And we're going to see if we can just sleep this away. So I'm going to put you down. I'm actually going to drink one of my birch bark teas. Yum, 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 yum. Because that way when I sleep, I won't lose health to starvation. I'll just take one little bit. One little hour of sleep. The fire next to us will keep us plenty warm. Although I struggle to imagine how... That fire is warming us up. Extremely exposed as it is. Okay, it's still windy as sin. But for once, we actually have quite a lot of burnables. I'm going to chuck a bit of coal onto you and sleep for another hour. I don't want to sleep the whole day away, but it's good to be alert during the late afternoon when it's the warmest part of the day. And... Wow! It got even clearer, and it's still in the air. And on top of that, I'm not quite as tired as before. So give me these torches. Complain about the food as usual, Shepard, and let's get moving. I'm gonna arch to the right over here. I wonder if I missed anything over there. I struggle to imagine, one, how you go to sleep so easily in the cold, and two, can bear to wake up after just one hour. Uh, going to sleep in the cold, I find very easy, especially when you're knackered after doing this much traversal. Walking around in all this condition whilst dragging 30 kilos of garbage is exhausting. As for waking up in just an hour, well, knowing that the fire is going to go out if you don't and then you'll die is probably a pretty good motivator. Also, the hunger probably gets you up easier. I find it a lot easier to wake up and get up when I'm extremely hungry. Could you imagine if you didn't get hungry through the night, you'd never wake up in the morning. The thought of breakfast makes me leap out of my bed. And my breakfast is usually their uh, porridge, although I haven't had porridge in quite some time. It's usually muesli, homemade muesli. I don't grow the fruits or grind the oats, but dried fruits, oats, flax, flax seed. Sometimes some nuts, but I don't use nuts so often these days. Mix it in with honey and yogurt. Apparently locally sourced honey, which was nice to see. Easy now, Shepard. We broke our ankles on a steep slope like this earlier on in the run. If you missed the start of the run, we immediately snapped our ankles. And that cost us a lot. Because we had to limp our way through, uh, through the cold. In Pleasant Valley as well, which has monstrously bad weather. But you did limp it, Shepard. Through sheer force of will. Following your own rules. Alright, out we come from Milton. We only dipped Milton. 
didn't even go to the uh, didn't even go to the little village part here. We're back in forlorn, hoping some of the birch bark has respawned. It may have, it may have not. I'm not super familiar with birch bark respawning mechanics. I think it respawns after heavy wind and blizzards. And we certainly did have some fair wind there. Let's check that there's no moose and look like any mooses around and check for any more uh, birch bark. Plenty, plenty of bunnies. But sadly, eating bunnies is not allowed on this run, even if I really want to, and I really want to. I think given my relative glut of both health and birch bark, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head down towards the little farm area. I forget what it's called. Spencer's Spencer's farm place. I'm going to go there because there's going to be some very good drops there. There's also a forge, which I won't be making use of, but you know, I could always imagine making use of it. That'd be nice. But yeah, it's just a straight shot south, uh, south from here. There's also a small chance that the prepper's cave thing next to it is a loaded prepper's cave. Which has an ungodly amount of goods in it, many of which I can't use because it's food and drink supplies that give calories and we're not allowed those. But it can be stocked with things like tools and matches, cloth. I'm not sure if there are any clothes in it, but certainly cloth. So we're going to be circling around forlorn now. And as long as it stays clear like this, we should be in an excellent position to do so. If it suddenly uh, starts blizzarding or otherwise getting very windy, we'll have to rethink our plans, but we won't have much flexibility in those plans because when it gets uh, windy and stormy and forlorn, you are on a wing and a prayer because you're caught out in the open. That spooked me because I thought that was a timber wolf a wooing, but no, just a regular woo. No timber wolves and forlorn. God, could you imagine this place of timber wolves? Oh man, I really don't like timber wolves in this game. Not just because they're challenging, but they're also mechanically really stupid. Set up a fire and throw torches at them until they go away, and their morale breaks very slowly. It's just absurd. Ooh, tell you what, I wouldn't normally go out of my way for one of these, but since we're right next to it anyway, we're going to check out the hunting blind. Hunting blinds can have amazing things and can even have matches. They can have invisible matches. Uh, maybe they fixed that bug, but I've seen invisible cardboard matches in one of these before. I think during our Outer Loper Shopkeeper run we ended up finding uh, cardboard matches which don't normally spawn in Interloper. Whenever they do spawn it's a bug. Uh, well, there's a Summit Soda that we're not allowed because there's calories in that soda. A lot, even. One of these is 250 calories. Thank you. That is crazy. What the hell are they putting in their drinks in America to cause it to be 250 calories in one can of that? Let's not draw too much attention to the amount of calories in one tin of iron brew, though. That's a cultural thing. Is this too thin to walk across? Oh, we're good. Don't want to fall through the ice. It would extinguish my torch, soak all of my clothes, set my temperature to zero, and I would risk hypothermia. It is so warm right now. Even without the fire, I would be warm. But I'm keeping the fire because it's a great deterrent from uh, from beasts. I could grab that ravaged carcass, but there is absolutely no need. We can't eat the food, and there's no reasonable use for the guts or hide in this run. If this were a 20 or more day run, I would probably be going out of my way to earlier get my hands on uh, rabbit and deer clothes. So one set of deer skin trousers, one bit of a rabbity hat and one bit of rabbity gloves. But 13 days, it doesn't make much sense. And this is why I kept the fire. This wolf is absolutely nothing to worry about. He's, he's just gonna, he's gonna suck a lemon is what he's gonna do. Come over here, Fido. He aggros when you aim at him, and then he sees the fire, and he goes... I'm Rory Raggy. Give me my Scooby Snatch. Yeah, well, away you go. 
Come back with Scrappy Doo. Unfortunately, they very quickly round and decide that no, they actually want a piece of you again. And then you just spook them again. Mechanically, the wolves are super stupid in this game. I actually don't like the way you handle them. I don't think they should run off in that situation. I think they should stop, eye you up if there's a fire, and then jump you after maybe 20 seconds of uh, eyeing you up. Because that gives them a moment to think, hmm, there's fire, but the fire isn't a threat. Campfires? Yeah, that should keep them in place indefinitely. But just a torch like this? Come on. Even if the ice below me is thin, which it was not, I could make it over just by legging over it. I am spooking the wolf rather than just walking the dog, so to speak, in the hopes that it runs off in yeah, exactly the opposite direction of where it went. Um, but also, if a, if a blizzard or some wind came out of nowhere, then this torch tactic would die. Wouldn't be able to use it. Because the wind blows out the fire, and then all I'm doing is brandishing a stick at the dogs, and they don't care so much for that. They say in reality, if you find wild animals like this, you should not uh, attempt to engage with them in any way and absolutely do not feed them, but I think that's just propaganda. I think there's some big wildlife keeper out there, or some organization that wants to keep all of the, uh, all of the petting of wild animals to themselves. And do whatever the hell I want with wild animals. Well, not anything. Then again, I knew a lady. Well, it was a long time ago. She was just a girl then. Uh, she got ripped to death by... I think it was hyenas. And I am certain that she would have gone and tried to make friendly with them, because she loved animals. But she's very dead, so... I'm sure there's a lesson or a moral to be had there. The hyenas... I can't remember. Anyway, it was some kind of animal. You're not supposed to feed them. Does that mean you need to soak yourself in vinegar prior to dying of starvation to obey that law? <laughs> Who wouldn't? I nearly lost my As the Dead Sleep run due to torch blowing out in the middle of a wolf charge. Yeah, that can happen. Also, we're getting foggy here. Fog is normally a non-factor, but that is not the case in Forlorn Muskeg. It's very easy. Look at, look at how I'm just losing my visibility here. Unpleasant. Oh yeah, a wolf wanted me so bad it wall clipped through the freaking forge. That was very unpleasant. Ripped my trousers off, and that was the reason I ended up getting double frostbite in my outer loper run. Losing those trousers was a huge setback. I think I've overshot it. Um, for the forge, that is. That's okay, though. I, as long as I'm going in the general direction that I need to go all as well. But yeah, I overshot it in this direction. I need to arc back in that direction a wee bit, but we're okay. It's so warm out here that this is really a non-factor. Ripped your trousers off. Is it the gas in the birch tree park? No. No, it was a damn wolf. We weren't only eating birch bark then, but we were outer loping, so our options for calories were kind of limited. Cattails certainly pulled us through a lot. Spencer Farm over there. Excellent. That said, I, I always forget the right path to go across the, the muskeg. It's, it's so risky with all the thin ice that you could just break through. You do get a warning about it, but then you've got about three or four seconds to get the heck off the ice or fall through it. That's all the generosity the game will afford you regarding them. Sometimes a briefcase around here. Actually, I've already got the... Um, I think it normally has the Vista Point, or the Polaroid. And we already have that. Ah, Providencini is saying... Oh, no, that's an L, not an I. Anyway, they're saying good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to you. It's a very hungry afternoon for me. It's 3.30, and much like Shepard, I've barely had anything to eat. Actually, in terms of calorie count, Shepard has had a lot more to eat than me today. 
I haven't had a single cup of tea. All I had was my rice pudding. And two balls of chocolate. Lint chocolate. Since I deny myself a lot of calories these days, I figure the calories I do have might as well be exquisite. So I got them salted caramel and dark chocolate lint balls. Which are something like 80 calories each, so... I get like two or three of them a day and that's my lot, but hey, ho. That's business. Contemplating eating some lasagna just now? Oh yeah, do it. You'll enjoy it even more knowing that Shepard is actively starving right now. It's immersive. It is immersive, right? I can I can feel the the stomach pains myself. I could well go for just about anything to eat. What do I have? Mm, oh, some kind of fish dish this evening. I got some fish, some wee oily fish. It's funny I come to hungry and I end up eating more fish than normal, but. Whilst there's not a lot of fresh fish, there's certainly loads of tinnered fish around here to enjoy. Right, so there is metal here. There's dog food around the back of this crate. Easy to miss, but that's an excellent pile of... 1,000 calories right there. There's also a safe right here, which if you angle yourself just right, you can open. But evidently I'm unable to do that from here. But you can always do it from the other side of the wall, even. You don't need to break these crates to interact with that safe. But I'm not going to interact with the safe, because the best thing it could have is maple syrup, and we're not allowed to use maple syrup. This is what I came here for, this ragged ski jacket. I will absolutely repair you. Oh god, it's frozen! <laughs> That's okay, it'll unfreeze, probably. Oh god, no, I don't think they had that fixed in this version. Uh, okay, I do want to get moving. But I'm going to set up a little fire here. I think I'll spend my night inside the, um, the little bunker that's nearby here. For now, though, I'm going to start this fire to thaw out my jacket. And there is another small, small bit that can have birch bark near here. So I'm going to check that out as well. I've heard of Mackinaws in saves. Well, that's true. Extremely rare, though. Yeah, you know what? We'll give it a go. Uh, there's tons of coal. I've got no problem just burning a bit of coal here. Coal, a bit of firewood just to give us some long lasting time. And this. Uh, where is it? Here you go. See this? I'm just going to drop the ragged ski jacket right next to the forge so it can melt. For God's sake, is there any tools? I can't believe we've come this far and not even found a crowbar. I don't want charcoal. I don't want this torch either. Yeah, I'm running the third release of the uh, the DLC. So just after they added the Burdox and the Airfield and probably some other bits and bobs. I'm not happy with the DLC, so I just froze my version on the least buggy version that I had. Which coincidentally also worked with Von Dougal's amazing quality of life mods. Hello, running shoes. I will leave you behind. I don't need anything out of you right now. Take that note, because it weighs nothing. Yeah, the devs are, for some ungodly reason, super anti-modding. Even discussions of mods are banned on the forums. What the hell, guys? Why are you, why are you going to do me like this? Right. So, I'm warming up. Well, I didn't need to warm up, but my frozen ski jacket is becoming less frozen. I'll take the opportunity to create one liter of water. I will smelt down my torches, which feels like something I do a hell of a lot in the game, but I use torches a lot. I probably even use torches more than most because I think they're so powerful. There's plenty of scrap metal around, which I don't need. What I do need is not this coal, but I'll take it. First aid kit. Bandage? Yeah, handy. sure. What you can do is use your go go gadget arms to open the safe from this side, and I hate these saves so much. Alright, so the first one's about 10 ish. Oh. There's no way to speed this up either. You just hold it down and it slowly moves its way around. So it's, it's like 10 and then 5 and then something. Then we gotta go around and then back around, and then we go 10 ish, 5 ish, 10, 5, 25. Easy money. 
10, 5, 20. Who the hell thought this would be fun? And we've got a book. And Canadian. I'm taking the money, right? <laughs> that money is going to be our vanity prize for all of this. I might even burn it later just to show my supremacy over Canada. You're not melted. You're still frozen. You are burning fine, but I'm going to put a few more sticks in you just to be safe. I'll just take a torch out of you. Let's go and get that potential um, birch bark. Got to be careful here. Could eat. Oh, ooh, sometimes there's a hacksaw on top of one of these. It's one of the most devilish item spawns in the game because you can't see it. But sometimes on top of... I can't remember if it's this or one of the similar ones, but there could be a hacksaw on top of one of these hacked off stumps. Not that one, it's too shallow. And uh, I found that when I was flying around with the debug command, because, hey, debug mode. Um, and I, I couldn't believe it. Such an out-of-place tool. Very hard to even notice. So over here, there are just a handful of birch trees and sometimes you can get as lucky as two bits of birch bark on the ground. Who the hell's... Oh, there you are. I think I'm scared of you. Get out of here. Oh, he's got a friend. Oh, of course he does. Anyway, you will not deny me my birch bark. That spooked me. I'm sure it spooked you. Any more for any more? Or am I just getting one bit of birch bark? Yeah, it looks like one's my lot. Well, one is better than none. On this challenge that is so birch bark centric. Let's get rid of Fido here. I forgot my long combination in three weeks of classes and just never bothered using it again. We had keys in my school. You get a locker and you get a key for it. But uh, the demand was always higher than the supply when it came to school lockers. But fortunately, uh, my brother had one and I just got it when he buggered off. The reason being that I lived incredibly far away from school. So, of course, I should be allowed to store my stuff at school. Hard to uh, exaggerate just how rural I live. It's a five minute journey to the nearest village. A five mile journey, not five minutes, sevens now. Alright, that should keep those wolves off my back for a wee bit. How's our. How's our gruelish water looking? Okay, just hug this for warmth. And. You know what? I'm actually going to take you, but I'm also going to take those running shoes. And also... Mm, there's no real point in repairing you. I barely use you for this run. Can't even break down these uh, these blocks. How's my, ja my jacket still frozen? Come on, thaw out, will you? Whilst I'm waiting on you... Actually, do I have the makings for more... No, I don't. Got nothing to cook but my birch bark teas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven birch bark teas. Yeah, looks looks good though. I've gotta say, seven is a nice number for that. Hey, it's five minutes if you go fast enough. Yeah, couldn't even go there particularly fast because it was all windy roads as well. Grim times. Those poor wolves are out there, so cold, so hungry. I'd have no problem just kind of bringing them in, trying to tame them in with a bit of meat. How hard could it be? How much could they reasonably fight back? I'm very big and strong. I severely doubt that a wolf could give me too much trouble. Unless I suppose they were one of those really big fairy tale wolves. Or if they were to hunt in packs, that would be a problem. Ah, uh, the good old windy Scottish roads with funny sounding villages scattered around exactly. I'm not even from one of those villages, I'm from one of the little offshoot, not even hamlets off of those. I would say good times, it was not good times. 
Right, anyway, uh, if I have to wait around here anyway for this raggedy ski jacket to not be so raggedy and awful. Actually, what I'll do is I'll take you and I'll do some repairs because I really do want to repair this thing a bit. And just to be ultra safe from wolves, I'm going to sit in the high ground. It's still warm up here. In fact, you get a slight warmth bonus up here. Get me on this bed, will you? This jacket is so good, I really want it to be in better condition. So let's try and repair it. Twice if I can. You can see my health just twitching its way down. Nice! I want to repair it again. Actually, I'd like to repair it two more times if I can. But I have no more cloth. Damn. Here I thought I would not be running into cloth problems. It's okay. I can always repair it even more later. Um, getting very tired. Very thirsty. Still literally starving to death. There's only nine minutes left in the forge. Should I move out? I shall move out. Give me my cooking pot. I don't think I left anything else behind. No need to hack anything down here. Certainly don't need this book. In fact, you see this book? I don't. There we go. Goodbye book. Bye book. Alright, let's go. We are taking a... Chancy walk out here. Not that we're in any danger, but the question is, are we going to... Oh my god, the fog is actually hurting me because now I don't know exactly where I'm going, but if we start seeing elevation, we're good. And these trees look elevated. There is a bunker over here. This bunker was integral to the single region survivor, and even then I still died in it. Because Shepard refused to sleep. Shepard would have been warm if she had just gotten inside the bed, but she was all like... Rah. I'm feeling a bit, you know, cabin feverish. I'm not going to climb in this bed and live. I'm going to stand outside it and die. Yeah, I can see why some people play with cabin fever off. Not going to be a problem for this run, though. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that the bunker up here has maybe a 10% chance of being full to the brim with goodies. Also... I completely forgot to actually wear the ski jacket. There we go. And putting that on has made us actually warm, because it's only minus 10 degrees with no wi no wind chill. Okay, minus 3 wind chill. No wind chill would be mad. Single region survivor in Forlorn is one of the only times I've ever gone out of my way to cut down uh, wood off of fallen uh, tree branches. Because normally it's a long, thankless, dangerous thing to do. You're out, you're exposed, you're cold. But if you get the right branches, it can slightly pay for itself. How do you have your weight listed in bottom right? There is a quality of life mod by the talented Von Dougals. It's pr it may or may not work on the current version of the game. As we uh, complain about often, this game is not very friendly towards modding for some bizarre reason. They just hate mods. Well, I, I recall what I read was they're visionaries and they don't want their vision clouded by things like zombie survival mods for the long dark. So they've made their game very mod unfriendly and I, I think that is a completely mad stance to have, but it's also their stance to have. I can complain about it, but I can't go and force them to add mod support to their game. Rockstar said the, sa uh, said the same thing about GTA 5 mods back in the day. I've still never played GTA 5. It doesn't look very enjoyable to me. Alright, this is... Oh, easy now. This is the prepper cache, and it has been abandoned and either previously looted or emptied out. We do not get the big windfall of goodies here. What we do get, though, is a place with a good ambient air temperature of only zero degrees and something that kind of constitutes a bed. Cardboard box laid out with a folded over tartan carpet on top of it and what looks like a brick for a pillow. But hey, you can get to hug other bricks or a cardboard box to lull yourself to sleep. As usual, there's nothing in the grates. That's great. Alright, well, well, we're going to be down here for the evening, so let's just get cosy. Out goes the fire, and ooh, it is dark, isn't it? Put away that torch. 
mulch down that torch and since we're in a relatively safe location nothing's even eating away at us other than our stomach eating itself we can do a quick recap on what we have and where we're going holy crap pola imagine trying to break open that frozen iron hatch using only your bare hands not bare hands we're actually wearing work gloves on our hands so these are probably the best gloves you could even have to open it up it just looks like we're bare hands because on my version of the game they hadn't added the visualization of your gloves yet I would like to fix the jacket, but it's going to be too dark and I don't have the cloth for it anyway. However, I did pick up these running shoes and one skill that Shepard does have is the ability to tear apart shoes in the dark with her bare hands. Takes an hour and 15, fine by me. There we go, and now we got fatigued, we are so tired. So what we're going to do is we're going to chug one, two, yeah, two bits of birch bark tea. I said I was going to do a check on our situation, but now that I've become super tired, I absolutely need to sleep now. Fill up the rest of our belly with water. And then we're going to go to sleep for 10 hours, I think. We're still going to starve in the middle of our sleep, so we're, we're not going to look very good on the health, but that's okay. Ooh, it was an aurora through the night. All the more reason I'm glad I slept through eh, slept through it. It's now morning. It is light. Let's get rid of some of that thirst damage and do a quick check on our everything. So, Damn it. I'm so hungry. <laughs> what a shame, Shepard. Me too. We are now on day eight. We have survived for seven days. We are more than halfway through the challenge. On top of that, I'm extremely confident that we're going to survive this. Because even if I had nothing but starve constantly for the rest of the run, it would take three days to lose... No, it would take more than three days to lose all this health. And I have two emergency stims. So if you voted win lobby, pat yourself on the back. If you voted lose lobby, you better pray I accidentally run into a moose or a bear or... A very nasty outbreak of wolves, but I think we are in the win zone right now. So let's not smudge the finish. What I'm going to do is, well, actually, whilst I am here, could actually consider my plan. Bear in mind, we started over here, uh, up this hill in Pleasant Valley. We came down, we broke our ankle coming down this hill, went along, hit the farmhouse, dipped back around, circled around, enjoyed the very large... Um, uh, birch forest here, although we didn't get that much bar bark out of it. Went over to the community area, went through Cinder Hills, uh, very quickly cut through Coastal Highway, took shelter in a trailer during a blizzard, came along the ravine, and it was at the other end of the ravine this run, run really got legs. Loads of birch bark over here, got ourselves well rested up. Over to Mystery Lake, did the Carter Dam, did all the way around Mystery Lake, got plenty of goods. Uh, did North Mor uh, Forlorn, did Mountain Town, back around, and then we came down and around Forlorn here. And now we are up here in one of the bunkers. So we're going to come around, back through the Mystery Lake, going to dip again for as much birch bark as we can, ditto the ravine, and I might even live out my days in Coastal Highway. We kind of passed it by, and I'm left wondering, can we get any birch bark there? I'm certain there's none in Desolation. Almost certain there's none in Desolation, but Coastal Highway, mm -hmm. the mind does wonder. Let's go. Uh, so that was the early choice I had to make, Pratis. Did I focus on Timberwolf to Ash Canyon, or did I focus on uh, heading towards the other places? And I decided against Ash Canyon. Maybe for better, maybe for worse, but if I needed to get matches as quickly as possible. And I found... Oh, well, actually, I would have gotten matches very quickly if I decided to go straight for Timberwolf, wouldn't I? Hmm. Ooh, tell you what. The sun is out. Let's use the sun to make a fire using our mag lens. It takes a bit longer, but it doesn't use anything other than one bit of tinder. Honestly, I went to Ash Canyon in my test run and I froze to death. <laughs> Ash Canyon doesn't mess around, but I really like it as a region. After doing single region survivor in Ash Canyon, I really came to appreciate it. It's uh, probably the best region in the game. Just in terms of, Perfect. well, everything, really. It's amazing. Uh, I realize I'm not giving myself much to work with with that. 
It's the best. It's very varied. There's so much different going on. It's full of different resources and opportunities. And let's just check this while we're here. Hello, Cairn. Thank you, backer number 4638. I never would have backed this game. Because I don't do early access. So I certainly don't do even earlier than early access. That said, I've made some silly decisions in my time. I, I backed Class of Heroes 2's localization. I, I still don't know why. But uh, somewhere in my possessions, I have a sealed copy of Class of Heroes 2 with a certificate for it. I never played the game. In fact, I even played Class of Hero 1 and thought it sucked. Why in earth did I back that? I don't know, but I did, and I have it, and I should really just sell it or something. I don't know who in Hungary would want a lo an English localized copy of Class of Heroes 2, though. Oh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Now, that, that's a lucky backing there, though, because that game was amazing. Wasn't aware they were looking for backage of it. You know what? I think going through the ravine, I will go down the ravine. Because I think there can be a stim Jesus down there. I don't, know, I don't remember it's been removed. Or not. Oh my god, it really is cold. Uh, cold enough to stop and start a fire? Yes. Where? Here, under this rock. I got very cold very fast. Afternoon all, says the real decoy. Having to remind me of a bag of crisps that I could certainly do with during this run. How's the birch bark diet going? Slimming? Oh yeah. Why didn't that work? Commander Shepard's gonna be getting her thigh gap before you know it. I myself am also very hungry here, but I'm not going for a thigh gap. Anyway, the run is going on, really Lord. well. Uh, short of a m huge disaster. I think we've got this. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, this has become beyond silly. I'm just going to accelerate this fire. Thump. Lob on a oh, bit of coal. Yeah. And that coal will be enough, but I'm going to lob on a second bit of coal just to warm up faster. Get out of here, torch. So when I set up my fires, I always like to do it against a big wall that hopefully branches off as much possible wind as possible. So if the wind comes anywhere within this, like even from there, we've got more than 180 degrees of coverage, so it's more likely than not that we're sheltered from the wind. If I was making it out there in the open, this wind would be a real threat to me. But, you know, me, I, what is even threat? We've got one piece of birch bark, no prepared birch bark, five cups of it, and our health is looking immensely good. So this is all very good. While we're sitting here, you know what I always do? I make water. Although I am overburdened, mostly because of all my water. I'll just drink up then. Actually, maybe I should drink one of these birch bark teas to get myself through all this. It's looking like a miserable day. I could do with a warming up bonus. Oh, crap. That was a mistake, but that's okay. I left-clicked instead of right-clicked. I need to right-click to place it down there. That's okay, though. I'll just get a slightly reduced amount of birch bark tea out of it. I drank about 20% of it. Looking good. I wish I had an extra bit of cloth so I could repair this ski jacket while I'm waiting around here. I can familiarize with what I'm doing here. I'm about here in Forlorn Muskeg. Time to just go up around through Mystery Lake. And then... Hmm. Which direction to go? I might just go back towards the... Um, the Trapper's place. Has there been a blizzard since I left Mystery Lake? Oh yeah, there was a blizzard when I was hiding, hunkering down in the Forlorn Muskeg train car. So there will almost certainly be more... Um, more birch bark blown off those trees towards the uh, towards the trapper place. I can go there. I can duck back into the central place. But yeah, my plan is to hit ravine, di uh, duck down into the ravine, come back out, and then hit up coastal highway. Because unlike last time, now I have my bedroll. Speaking of the bedroll, I actually could have taken a nap while waiting for this. Would have kept me nice and awake for the better part of the day. But there's always a risk of taking a nap out in the open here, that the moment you close your eyes, the wind just turns around, becomes a blizzard blowing directly at you, and then you're spending one hour in the freezing cold. 
Because on Interloper, you do not wake up from being too cold. On easier difficulty settings, Shepard actually just wakes up if she becomes dangerously cold. But Interloper affords you no such blessing. I'm kind of overloaded as it is. In fact, I'm way too overloaded. Let me just dunk some of this water here. I want to be able to move my ass. Take one more torch, take my hot tea. I'll just drink the hot tea while I'm at it. Those calories are being put to waste, but the warming up bonus will keep me in good stead even through this very unpleasant, yeah, very unpleasant wind and air temperature, uh, wind temperature. Eh? Yeah, wind and air temperature. It's very easy to lose track of what I'm saying as I'm saying it whilst playing this game. Somewhat regretting my choice of setting up a fire there because there is a cave, if not there, then around that hump, which uh, would be warm enough for me to seek shelter. And in fact, it is right there, isn't it? Hmm. That's the cave to Bleak Inlet. In fact, it takes me out at a part in Bleak Inlet that I'm 60% sure has birch bark in it. Am I willing to test that game theory out? I am. Let's go for it. Making a last, last ditch change of direction into the most dangerous area in the game. Except maybe Black Rock. I think Black Rock's maybe more dangerous than Bleak. Wait, this isn't a cave system, this is just a regular cave. Oh, well, it would have been a more clever place to set myself up at, but oh well. That's alright. Long dark streams are all about random rambling, so you certainly get a lot of time and low energy parts to do the ramblings. That's fine by me, I can ramble all day. I think my stomach is eating itself. Learn to enjoy the hunger, Shepard. This diet regime that I'm on right now is not my first rodeo with weight loss. Lost over to Oh god, this is turning into a blizzard. Change course! I have little to gain from standing out in the middle of all of this. However, I have much to gain by seeking shelter in here. We're going to sleep this blizzard off. Hopefully it's warm enough at the back here. Is it buggery? It feels like minus 6 back here. And it's probably only getting colder. Minus 7. Damn, if I'd preserved my fire, we could have kept it going here. Uh, minus 8. Yeah, it is getting colder. Okay. If I had warmer clothes or a better bedroll, I'd be able to overcome this. But no, it's getting very cold. To the point where I am going to use a match. Well, not a match, obviously. I'll light a torch first. I'm not a Neanderthal. Don't worry about the blizzard, Jake. Microsoft will swoop in and things will get worse soon enough. I haven't been keeping up to date with how that's going, but I'm sure that's very funny. Actually running a little low on Tinder, but I can make more while I'm here. Well, it's the nature of the beast. Sometimes you just lose your matches. Perfect time to panic. Exactly. Panicking in that situation. Oh god, oh god, what do I do? What do I do? Just I know work? where there was a cave. We just passed it by. Nothing really lost by just turning around and going back in. If I decided not to do that, I could have continued on and ta uh, taken a ditch into the cave towards Forlorn um, uh, towards Bleak Inlet. And actually, in retrospect, that would have been the cleverer thing to do. I had enough heat to make my way over to it. But I'm very shy of taking cold damage in this run. All damage is still damage, and we cannot get much of it back through sleeping. Come on, little fire. Long dark streams remind me of the trucking streams in that respect. Lots of time to simmer on ideas. That's the good stuff. I don't do so many trucking streams these days. Kind of trucked out. Uh, right, I don't need a lot of heat off of this thing, so I'm just going to slam down two cedars. Uh, one bit of coal, because I have a bajillion coal, and we're just gonna sleep this off. However, I did note my... There we go. I did note my lack of um, tinder. So I'm actually gonna make myself six extra tinder plugs. Sorry, it's very quick and easy to do. You're just breaking up twigs. Not much point in making additional water here, but even so, I'm going to slam you down and make two liters of water. It'll take a couple hours. Gives me plenty of time to take a kit for a couple of hours. I'm not going to drink my birch bark tea, I'll just starve. It's fine by me. Oh, 
Hoping that blizzard goes, though. Those blizzards can last a long time. I actually wish they lasted longer, truth be told, because blizzards really change up the game in a way that I very much like. I'll do another liter on you. Yeah, we can hear that it's still nasty and blizzardy out there. I, I wouldn't mind if blizzards could last days and actually put you in a situation where you're like, okay, now I have to eat bet cats. It's going that bad. Uh, add on that for another bit of time. Take another one hour kit. It's kind of like RimWorld. I wouldn't mind a toxic fallout could last years. The fact that you know it's going to go away within 15 days is always a bit of a bummer. Of course, it's always bad when it hits you during your very narrow growing season, but RimWorld is about overcoming such obstacles. If you don't want the obstacles there, turn them off. I want them all on. The only thing I don't want on in RimWorld is Death on Downed, and you know what I do? I disable it. Because the idea that I shoot a guy in the hand and he keels over and dies immediately, I do not like it. Hmm. Shepard's not enjoying this very much. I'm going to drink one of my birch barks and take a, take a nap for another hour. I want to mostly do away with some of that starvation. It was down to here. Okay, well, at least the blizzard has passed by. I have a lot of water now, more than I need. Uh, hold on to some of it, though. Pick you up. Pick you up. Grab another to Ooh, good torch. Mm, good coffee. Another one. I've seen Eternal Blizzard runs. Does that interest you? Uh, I think it removes too much. For one, it removes the animals. That's no fun. Yeah, it reduces too much to the game. All your visuals are all going to look the same. God knows what it's going to be like in the encoding as well. That doesn't sound very enjoyable. But longer blizzards sound good. Um, when I do Ultra Loper, I'm actually going to turn the weather variability to very low instead of very high. I actually think that would be more challenging. It means when the weather goes bad, you can't just duck out like I did there and uh, know that it'll pass in a few hours. It could last for a very long time. It does mean that good weather can last a very long time as well, but... The weather will eventually get worse over time, not better. So the wind is still against my face here, but uh, now that the blizzard has passed, and now that it's actually mid-afternoon, it's actually very warm. If you can make coal from birch logs and shave off the outside of it, you could have some lovely long-burning seasoning on your birch bark tea. I really don't like smoky teas. I, mean, I tend not to like tea in general. I, I, drink, I drink fancy, fluffy wee teas for wee girls. I remember when I was out at a uh, out with a meal and the tea was the tea was free. They give you a big load of tea bags. Yeah, I have whatever. And I just looked at the pinkest, most uh, effeminate looking tea, and that was the best tea there was. But yeah, aniseed and fennel is generally what I go for. And you don't you're not gonna catch me having some Tetleys or some That's Earl right, Grey hot. Okay, so if I had just stuck to the plan, I would have definitely had the warmth to make my way into here. And I could have already been and gone in Bleak Inlet, but we're still going to go and do it now, because I am somewhat convinced it has what I'm looking for. But before I go in, I am going to drop my coal. No way do I need 16 coal in there. I'm going to leave myself 2 coal. Lightens my load considerably. Also leave behind a couple bottles of water and... Holy moly, what kind of foul individual needs 51 sticks? I'm going to drop 30 of them here. And there we go. Now I've got 10 kilos of uh, free capacity on my back. Uh, interesting thing is that there is some coal over here. You can actually grab this coal before you hit the transition area. And actually, if you no-clip, you can grab all the coal from the other side. But let's go. Onwards to Bleak Inlet. We are only dipping bleak. We are not going to be exploring bleak like single region survivor. I'm just going in, grabbing any potential birch bark, which might not be there. I don't remember the place's layout for birch all that well. But I, I, I have a funny feeling in the back of my head that there is birch around the area where you pop out here. I think if I pop out and turn right, I'll see some birch. Bleak Inlet, which is where we're going to, uh, was one of the hardest regions in single region survivor. It's not as hard as Forlorn. But more interestingly, it was a very limited area because you couldn't climb up 
to the higher place without going via a ravine or using the rope, neither of which were viable in a single region survivor because you both you always spawn on a lower area. But we actually clipped out of bounds and walked up the mountain in order to make our way around to it. Hello, Marine Flare. That's a good find. We already had one, but I could do with another. And that was a tin, which I'm just leaving behind. How do we climb up here again? Ah, here we go. Yeah, can of juice is not for us. I don't drink, but I had a cocktail recently, hoping it to be fruity and sweet. But alas, despite having rum and fruit juice, it was far from sweet. Yeah, well, if it's rum, you can have some really nasty, bitter ones. Especially some dark rums, although I do like some OBD dark rum at times. I've, I've had a lot of different things to drink. I'd like to think that I could pair good drinks for somebody, depending on their taste palette. Especially if it's whiskey, but if it, even if it's not whiskey. If you want a drink that's sweet, try slow gin. S-L-O-E gin. That's never going to be bitter. Delicious. Sweet. Don't even need to mix it with anything, just have it straight. Although you, you could have it uh, like a gin and tonic that way, but I find that detracts from the, the slows. Dakoi coming in with the uh, unfathomably true opinion. Slow gin is indeed lovely. I think I'm going the wrong way here. It's easy to get turned around in these caves. Especially when they split and divide. It's alright though, we're perfectly warm in here. Our health is looking nice and cosy. The stalagmites stand mightily. The stalactites hang tightily. Uh, I did completely get turned around. Okay, alright. Let's try that again, shall we? What's the best affordable whiskey in your opinion? Uh, the one that you like. Whiskey comes in so many different flavor uh, varieties and tasting notes that I could not possibly label it down to just one. Also, what is affordable? To me, mm, I, I don't really don't really buy whiskeys that cost uh, less than about 60 euros a bottle. If I could find one that was good and cheap, then sure. Um, I forget its name. It piqued my interest. I need to go and remember which one it is. I'll be 20 seconds. check my, uh, my whiskey cabinet. I try not to be a toff in too many things in life, but I do have a nice, well-organized whiskey cabinet. Longmorn 16. Comes packaged in a nice-looking purple box that kind of folds open. That is probably the best affordable whiskey I've ever had. I hear it's gone up in price lately, so of course, but uh, I suppose if it's gone up in price, all the other ones have as well. Longmorn 16. A single malt. It's very tasty, very affordable, and it looks really stylish as well. So when if you present it as a well present, or if you whap it out at a party, you're going to look like you know your stuff. Oh, not lawn, not the lawnmower. Freaking forecares. All right, welcome to Bleak Inlet, most people's least favorite location on the map. I don't know that empirically, but I feel confident in saying so. Now, I am under the impression that there are birch trees over in this direction. Doesn't look like there are, does it? Looks like there's death in this direction. There is! There's a freaking moose in the way again! Does it look like there's birch trees behind it? They look awfully white, don't they? Could that moose kindly not be there? Tell you what, let's see if we can do our little trick again. I only have one of these. Yeah, oh god, no, not towards me! <laughs> it's gonna be awkward getting out of here now. Okay. Okay. Since when is Longmorn 150 euros a bottle? 
It was uh, 60 euros a bottle last time I got some, and that was only about four years ago. Not even that, I think three or two years ago. 150 euros a bottle. Where the hell are you buying this stuff? On a yacht? Alright, loads of birch bark trees here. The birch trees, the bark is on the tree, Jake. Alright, let's hope that we are able to scrape plenty of bark off. I'm joshing, of course, we don't scrape the bark off. We only take what's littering the ground. Not even in the UK. I, I bought it at that price in Sweden. You know, well-known place for cheap goods, especially cheap alcohol, Stockholm. 60 euros. 600 um, Swedish crowns, in fact. And I think that's even lower than uh, 60 euros. So yeah, somebody is having a laugh if they're charging you 150 euros for a bottle of Longmorn. Tell you what, come visit me. You can have some for free. I'm always happy to entertain guests with some uh, high-class whiskey. I only have <laughs> I only have two bottles that I won't offer to strangers. <laughs> One is my Pender and down the fruit mine. Well, actually. Quite a lot of people in chat helped me afford that bottle, so I suppose I'd have to share it. Um, and I've got an anniversary bottle that I plan on holding on to and eventually selling, because there's no way I'm going to be drinking um, drinking that. It's a Glenfiddich anniversary bottle in a giant golden case. I actually got it because a family member works in whiskey. And they don't even drink whiskey, so they just said, there you go, Jake. Happy, happy birthmas. And now I'm in possession of that thing, and, you know, I'd never drink it, even if I wanted to. It's not, I don't find it easy to sell whiskey. Okay, this was slim pickings, but it was still pickings. So as long as I don't get my ribs condensed into jelly on the way back, courtesy of our friend the moose... We will have come out on top. Actually, really on top. Look at all this birch bark that we're getting on the second pass. Yum, yum, and oh, it's a stick. But still, yum. Don't ask twice, Jake. I'm going to be close to Hungary in Romania in about four days. I've been here for a year, and I still haven't visited Romania or any of the bordering countries since I arrived here. I was in Croatia during my travels, but I... I did expect I'd do a bit more travelling once I settle myself in Hungary, but to be honest, I've just been enjoying lazing about here, getting on with the streaming, enjoying Lake Balaton, the summers here. I mean, why why would I travel in summer? Things travel to me in summer. All of Germany and Austria's hottest individuals coming out to Balaton in summer. And summer lasts for ages here. I've never seen such a long-lasting summer i got to be careful, the moose could well have come back. And I don't have an out for if the moose charges me. The moose is not cowed by fire. Also, I'm struggling to get up and over the rock. I'll take the high ground. It'll give me a better view on whether or not the moose is around. And I don't have a stone to throw at it to distract it anymore either. Threw my last stone at that moose. Any uh, fictional mooses that we have the name of? Because I realise I never give the moose a name in this game. Fido is a common dog name, so I don't mind calling the dogs Fido. And bunnies are just bunnies, but the mooses? Yeah, be very, very careful. I see the. I think I see the moose over there. Bullwinkle, Elliot, Rocky. Oh. Yeah, not familiar with these. I feel like I should know Bullwinkle. Okay, alright, just leave the moose over there. I really need to pick up a few more stones, but should be stones in the cave. It's amazing how warm it is. Uh, getting that ski jacket and repairing it has worked wonders for our body temperature. The day is wearing on, although it's still the best time of day. The temperature decreases by 4 degrees globally every 10 days in this game. For 50 days. So on day 50, 
the temperature ends up being 20 degrees colder across the entire, well, the entirety of Great Lake, or Great Bay, or Bear Lake, or Bear Bay, wherever this place is called. Great Bear, I think it is. Anyway, uh, we came, we saw, and we most assuredly conquered. Since coming out of Forlorn takes us very handily into uh, somewhere that we can take shelter in, in... Oh, I won't take that, I don't need any ruined torches. Takes us into a good place in Mystery Lake. I'm not going to sleep in this cave, there's no need. I can always find a trailer or something elsewhere. I bet the submitter of this challenge is kicking themselves. They're going to wish they'd added more stipulations. They're going to wish they'd made an outer loper. Or no pulling torches or no feats. That said, the feats aren't really doing much for me. I almost never play with feats. And I think after this I will still continue to never play with feats. So I did... Um, there were no stipulations against feats for this run. So I turned on Cold Fusion and... Uh, what's that? Snow Walker, I think. Running uses slightly less stamina, I think 20% less, and you end up, I think, 2 degrees warmer with Cold Fusion. Um, but, eh. Didn't want to throw the challenge, so I wasn't going to throw those away, but I don't think I'll play with them again. Interloper, no sticks challenge, no sticks! Oh, man. On one hand, sticks aren't very important, on the other hand, sticks are integral. No sticks. You'd always have to start your fires using things like firewood or books. Books are finite-ish. Yeah, I think books are finite. Could burn every book in the game. You wouldn't be able to craft torches. The question is, would you be allowed to pool torches? That would be a big balance consideration. But the torches you pool, you wouldn't be able to liquidate down to sticks. Wouldn't be able to make fire-hardened arrows. Not that I care about those at all. Is no stick even feasible? That's what I'm mentally calculating right now, Orlov. Couldn't tell you. Nah, my heart says yes. But my torch-pulling brain says... Maybe not. I really need some stones. I know stones challenge wouldn't be too tough. But I do like my stones. Sadly, all these big stones are too big. Oh yeah, there's another thought. You couldn't orientate yourself with sticks, but that's fine. That's pretty much an exploit. Sticks always point in a certain direction, usually north, but sometimes not north, in which case they are referred to as stick north. Oh, there's one stone. Come back to me, sticks. Mm -hmm. And my coal, please. Yeah, this pack is getting kind of heavy. I am aware, Shepard. Now move anyway. You're not that tired. But you're going to get tired, so let's get moving. Yeah, I think it always looks good when you form a wee stick faggot in the game, but I prefer to store them inside lockers because it's more convenient for picking them up and depositing them in, uh, en masse. Same for other bulky items that uh, don't take up that much weight, but you don't like carrying around loads of them or putting down loads of them. Things like cloth, cat tails, uh, coal even. I actually like to store coal inside containers rather than on the ground, but obviously that's not an option right now. You can make your own containers in the game, actually. You can make rock caches. But look at that. It requires 50, five, zero stones to build. But it is a way to put a container almost anywhere. And that has some utility. Hard weight limit. There isn't a weight limit on how much you can carry, but there is a limit on how much you can carry and move. You could actually pile up uh, Shepard with a literal ton. But Shepard would just stand there going, something's gotta go. And then something would have to go. Okay, I hope this isn't thin ice. Let's just drop a fire on it to be sure. It's not a real thing, I just needed to switch torch. 
What's in the rock cache? Rocks. It's <laughs> very funny. You can actually just put fires down on top of ice. There. Oh God! Why did I do that? God, yeah. Freezing. Hypothermic out of nowhere. Mistakes have been made. I repeat, mistakes have been made. All right, all right, just calm down. Warm up. Warm up badly. Get those clothes dried out. And pray that the weather doesn't take a turn. Hypothermic makes you tireder, makes you have lots of problems. You need to stay warm for 24 hours to get rid of it. Where did my clothes go? Oh, I think I only took them off. I didn't actually drop them down. I would do anything for a drink right now. There we go, go. Right, I absolutely must stay warm for 24 hours now. Ditch hypothermia. There we go. Let's just get these things no longer frozen. Nice and warm next to this blazing hot campfire. Let's undo the problems that we've created for ourselves. Let's have a nice warm cup of birch bark tea. That does it does flat condition damage falling through like that as well. I missed the past couple of hours. I was doing great until 30 seconds ago. I fell through the freaking ice. Oh, you can even see my hole there. Oh, man, alive. Yeah, because I was setting down the fire, it distracted me from the breaking through ice part, and then... I was too slow to turn around. Tragic. Alright, alright. No need to panic. We're just going to be waiting here for a little while. I don't think I need that birch bark, but whilst I have this, I think I will just take a nice little nap next to here. Right on top of the ice. Can I not place this on ice? I can place you over here, though. All right, all right, all right. Um, take a nice drink. Actually, take a nice drink of uh, birch bark tea. Just get some calories in me right now. Yeah, it will take a while for the clothes to dry, which is why so I'm going to take a one-hour sleep right now. Oh, God, what if it goes uh, Aurora and I get jumped by Aurora wolves? I don't have a flare gun. I don't have a weapon. You don't say, Shepard. Alright, still kind of wet, but if I give it another hour, I reckon it'll be fine. And we have the makings for another hour of sleep. As long as, you know, bad things don't happen to me. Yeah, you get very, very sleepy when you are uh, hypothermic, so I really need to fix that. So I gotta stay warm. Let's put our clothes back on. They are mostly dry. I'm so hungry. Why the heck are my boots still frozen? Ah, I don't think I placed the boots on the ground, did I? No, no, I did not. Am I gonna wait for those? I don't think I will. My carrying capacity is just plummeting because my tiredness is going to very bad places very quickly. Oh well, needs must. If I gotta stop and make some fires, I gotta stop and make some fires. I'm not sure I can carry much more. We're barefooting it then. My little mark of shame right there. Don't sweat it, don't sweat it, but don't get cold. I didn't leave anything behind there, did I? Make our way back into Mystery Lake and fix all of this. But right now I'm taking double damage because of fatigue. Fatigue and uh, hunger are now causing me 2% of pain. And yeah, just look at how slowly I'm going courtesy of all the extra weight that I'm carrying. 
frankly, it's more than I'm willing to bear. So let's go and grab our 50 sticks and drop 30 of them. Uh, not all of them. That'll do. Oh man, the treachery of four lines. You know, I fell into the wall. Uh, I fell into the ice also during my single region survivor run. So it's not like it's an unknown thing to to happen to me. Let me just count to thirty six. There we go. Drops all on the ground. <laughs> That's exactly how it went down. Okay, I will stop and make a fire if need be. The worst thing that can happen is a lot of uh, wind coming around, forcing me to not be able to make a fire. Well, I suppose that's not the worst thing in the world. The worst thing would be uh, Aurora out of nowhere and a sudden entourage of Aurora wolves deciding they don't want me to leave. They were having so much fun with me. Ditch the stock, keep the head. You know what suck the heads means? Can I even cross all of this? I hope so. Alright, alright, we're good. Over there's the train tracks. Um, the train tracks are built on solid-ish land. Yeah, there is no Aurora Moose. The Mooses, the Rabbits, the Deer, they all despawn during an Aurora. Shepard, stick with the program. I know it's very cold and you're very tired. And that was entirely my mistake. You can blame me all you want, but I'm only going to accept that blame once we get over to safety. <laughs> Day 12, wolves get guns. <laughs> you're not that cold, Shepard. It's only minus 5. Comparatively, I mean, it's actually minus 12 plus wind chill, but uh, no, that's not what we need. How do I, am I fat fingering everything right now? It's all right. We had a plan. We had the gubbins to get ourselves out of the grim situation that we created for ourselves. I was prepared. And what does the saying go about uh, a dose of preparations worth a pound of... Um, something something am I going the right way it's so hard to see here but I think I am very dark well you can see that can't you I can't run far too exhausted to run I actually need to just curl up in a cozy location and uh, wait out the horribleness which does mean another trek over to um, there's a wolf over there it does mean another, uh, another trek to get over to the uh, the trapper's den thing. But it must be done. And we shall do it. And then we're just going to curl up there and stay warm for 24 hours. How's the weekly one shot? Can't help but notice your fatigue bar is a bit something. Yeah. Uh, it was already pretty bad because the longer you starve, the more you take horrible fatigue. But in addition to that, I just fell through the ice. Rookie mistake and forlorn. Not even rookie mistake, it was a cocky mistake. I was trying to show off how you can make fire on top of uh, ice and then of course what do I do? I neglected the notification that I was falling through the ice. Hilarious to some, especially me. Right, I'm actually going to set up a fire soon because you don't want to reset your cold timer. But again, I'm going to do it on the other side of uh, some of these rocks just so that I'm shielded from any potential um, wind that might want to blow it out, because right now wind is my enemy. I'm very grateful for the wind staying off during my extremely vulnerable moment here. Now we just carry on over here. We'll make our way out of the forlorn dreaded muskeg. 
And then onwards to... Mystery Lake. Yeah, still walking on socks. <laughs> Fortunately though, uh, socks are enough to protect you from frostbite. They must have been coated in some kind of beeswax or something to... Not even coated, permeated with beeswax to keep them uh, as water resistant as they are. What are the consequences of hypothermia? If you are cold, as in your heat meter in the bottom left is at absolute zero, you will take double hypothermic damage, which I believe is 20% per in-game hour. That's a lot of hypothermic damage. In addition, your fatigue uh, goes very high very quickly. Even when you're standing still, you get ultra fatigue. That's why even after we took a nap, we just instantly went to red fatigue. So, when you do get full hypotherma, uh, hypothermia, what you should do is just instantly find a safe, warm place and remain there for 24 hours. Because traveling around is just going to exhaust you. And as I'm sure you're aware, we do not have the health to spare. Alright, let's get out of here. Wolves don't follow between regions. Be cool if they did. Be like Nemesis. Alright, relatively safe over here to warm up, and I need to get this fire going very quickly. I don't have accelerant, so I better get it started very quickly, Shepard. None of these 60% uh, failures, please. In Dutch, we have an idiom. Hero on socks, meaning you're a coward. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, that sounds very Dutch. Perfect. Alright, just slamming on two bits of coal. Don't even care. Hey, I'm a fire-starting novice now. Go me. There we go. We need to make this never go zero again or else hypothermia is going to reset. Remain above freezing for 20 hours. Very well. Still fatigued. Still having problems. I might just sleep here. I wouldn't do much for me, but i got to do something. Can I rest? Yeah, just sleep on the train tracks. That won't hurt a bit. Uh, let's add a few more sticks so this thing lasts for a good long while and then I'm gonna sleep for two hours I think and uh, maybe one hour at a time I just want to prevent taking the fatigue damage in addition to my starvation damage oh I forgot the boots yeah good point defrost the boots this is still a version of the game where things don't properly defrost where are my boots at Tonk. still frozen there we go but yeah, my my bar there is actively draining, even when I'm just sitting here doing nothing. It's causing me great pain. It's a shame that the conditions are good to keep moving right now, but I'd really like to warm up a touch. Well, I have warmed up, haven't I? You know what, there's no advantage to keeping these boots going well. I will pick this up, I will pick up my boots, frozen though they may be. I'm gonna drop some of this water just so I can move a bit faster. Grab a torch or three and get moving, unless the going is good. I will also actually cook one of my birch bark teas just in case I desperately need the heat for some reason. Decent-ish. Give me that. Give me that. And let's go. I'm already redded on fatigue after that nap, but that's okay. If I carry on this way, I'll get back to the uh, the trapper's place. And like I say, we're just going to curl up for 20 hours. Sure, we're going to starve. We're going to take damage from that, but that's okay. It's better than dying to fatigue, or uh, rather dying to hypothermia. I'm being called away for things. Good luck, Jake. I can't watch you go through this again, because I'm running out of wit. You, you've had wit this whole time? You, know, you wouldn't think fog is so bad, but not being able to see where you're going. I mean, if, at least if it was a clear night, I'd be able to see generally where I'm going here. I have to trust my instincts. Also, it's getting pretty damn cold. Too cold for comfort, I'm going to drink my hot birch bark tea. It's going to heal me up a little bit, get rid of some of that hunger, but uh, 
Still knackered. It wasn't even for the restore condition, it was just for the uh, just for the warming up bonus. Yeah, I can't see the bear coming, but I can slam down a fire very quickly. I can't believe I dropped through that ice, but you know, there's the brakes. Mistakes will happen, just gotta be able to deal with them. Although that was a very sloppy mistake. <laughs> Well, at least we can laugh about it. I can laugh about it. Realistically speaking, it's surviving. It's surprising that Shepard came out of that as uh, prim and pretty as she is, because that was, that was that was horrible. It's actually surprising not everything got completely sodden and frozen. I don't know how my hat things didn't. Yeah, I guess we kept our head above the water somehow. The muskeg is only a swamp after all, the water can't be that deep. Just so riddled with icons in the bottom left, so we're healing, but and we're warming up, but it's also cold, um, and we're also tired, but super tired, but also ultra tired, and we're healing, but we're also worried about it because it's going down whilst it's going up. I'm not seeing any um, birch bark on the ground whatsoever. Now, it could be I'm just not seeing it because it's dark. And we're wearing sunglasses. But it doesn't bode well. The blizzard, I had hoped, had blown down some additional uh, birch bark for me. The only thing that's blowing right now is my situation. This stomach feels like an empty pit. The lack of calories is going to make this a very hungry night for Shepard, but I will drink my birch bark, crawl into bed, and we are going to essentially pass a day here. Alright, running into wall here is actually a good sign. Tells me that I didn't stray off too much in the very wrong direction, just the slightly wrong direction. And there's an old torch from when I was here before. There's the cave that I was in previously, but I'm not going to rest in the cave. I'm going to rest over in the Trapper's place. Which is right over there. <laughs> it's midnight now. Oh well. No sanity loss mechanic in this game. There actually is. Yeah, insanity is something that happens to you when the Dark Walker is coming to get you. And the Dark Walker, Walker scenario is really cool. Very spooky as well. Dreaded monster chasing you through. It was actually uh, my main introduction to this game. We had a weekly one shot to complete the Dark Walker. I've gotta say, I died a lot. Alright, there you go, Shepard. Quit your moaning. We're back in the relative safety of the trapper's cabin. Hey, my, my rabbit pelt even cured. Birch saplings are coming along well, even though I've got no real use for them. Hey, some spare work boots. However, I'm just going to put down the work boots that I have here. Should be warm enough for them to thaw out in here. It's six degrees indoors. Especially as I sleep the day away. Alright, alright. Yeah, is there a little bit of stuff that I could tear up for cloth? There's that cloth, but that's about it. Alright, well in that case, can I still see? Not at all, so I'm not going to fumble around in the dark here. I'm just going to locate my bed, drink my birch bark tea. And even though this is going to hurt me a lot, we're just going to sit back and relax here for as long as I can. So just take, I don't know, 10 hours of sleep or so. I'm surprised TLD caught your interest. You spent most of Dark Walker Challenge complaining harder than you did for Morrowind. Of course I did. I was completely blind and I had no idea what was going on in a game that's very reliant on map knowledge. But I did see it through. And by the end, I wanted more. I don't get some food soon. You're not wrong, Shepard, but you will die a lot faster if we don't pass hypothermia. I need to spend seven more hours not freezing my bits off. I could go outside and have a look for birch bark. It's not a terrible idea. 
I am going to get fatigued extremely fast again, though. So it might be for the better that I go in here and I say, take all this coal, it's too heavy, take all these sticks. Maybe not all, all. What if I need to warm up out there? Uh, keep two matches, just as backup. Hey, I've got all this birch bark that I could make. I should have had that birch bark, but I wasn't thinking straight, evidently. How are my boots? They're only 63% wet. Works for me. Good enough to wear. Does reduce the amount that they heat you up, but they're fairly water retardant, so we can keep them on regardless. Uh, I'm going to stash one of each flare. They're not completely weightless. Old man beard like, and I like to keep around on me. It's good antiseptic. Otherwise, there's no way I need this whetstone. You can just stay behind now. Okay, your mastery of the game has caused hubris a uh, normal outcome. Maybe for you, Andarius. Come on, I'm used to being the best. Uh, I am already so tired I'm about to take fatigue damage again. I'm going to take one look outside, and if it's not absolute pristine condition, I'm going back to bed. I don't have a leg to stand on to complain about this. Let's have a look around then. Look at the bottom right. See how rapidly my weight limit is dropping? 100 grams down, another 100 grams down, and another 100 grams down. That is how heavily we're being affected by our fatigue. It's a lovely day. I could just start a fire with a mag lens. Kind of a waste of time, though. I'm just going to go out do a quick search for some birch bark over here. I could even run a little bit. Ooh, but then just look at how fast the fatigue, the uh, the weight limit goes down even further. Scary stuff. That I think is a moose marking. Could be wrong though. I'm thinking I am. Way too many of these trees have that for it to be a proper moose marking. Hypothermia will pass in seven hours, so I need to stay warm for those seven hours. <coughs> yeah, I could see that coming from a mile away, but that's okay. We're going to be going back to bed anyway, so Shepard's going to sleep off this broken leg. And it's starting to snow and get a bit windy, so that's all the more reason to be heading back right now. Ow. Just to get the immediate dip of the temperature, and of course we're just going to hobble our way there. And uh, you're right, even our vision is getting a bit blurred from this. Got to be quick though. I, I really, really cannot afford to get cold on the way back. If my uh, if my heat reaches zero, oh man, damn this. Uh... No, it's okay. It's okay. We'll be fine. We'll get back in time. If my warmth gauge reaches zero, it's just straight up reset for my hypothermic counter and i got to wait another 24 hours. We don't have the time to wait for that. What just hit him? And nothing hit me, but climbing around... It's a bit... I should have made the fire. Now it just suddenly clouded over, so I can't make a fire, but that's okay. I've got plenty of matches. I'm just going to make my birch bark tea, drink it, and sleep for a few hours. Uh, yeah, we we slipped from climbing a, a, a tall area. That's just something that can happen. You get a risk of falling over when you try to ascend. So I'm going to light you up, Buttercup. And uh, you know what? I, think I can also just drop my shoes here so they can dry off even better. Start ourselves a fire here. Not using cash. Just use a tinder plug, please. 75% chance of starting the fire. That's a lot better now that we've leveled up our fire starting. That's why I often joke about Canadians and their uh, incredibly weak, on, spindly, twig-like ankles. Because in this game, you sprain your ankle just at the drop of a drop of a hat. Speaking of someone who's played DDR for uh, a very long time now and not had any such horrible things happening. Okay, okay. In you go, in you go. Make me water. Make me water. I'm going to need a bit more than that, but if I recall well, I dropped a whole load of sticks. 
And those sticks are just getting bunged right in. See, the weather really changed quite rapidly out there. I could have spared myself a match by using the mag lens out there. But that's neither here nor there. What I am going to do is create all of this birch bark. All, you know, only three of them, but better than a poke in the eye. You can see my condition steadily going down. 2% per hour, courtesy of the fatigue and the hunger. But that's okay. I'm going to take this newsprint and turn it into more tinder, because I'm getting through tinder faster than normal. Because again, I don't have the tons upon tons of cattail heads that I'd normally have. So there's no point in getting cattails, aside from their heads. Alright, 4 minutes till boiled, 26 minutes till boiled. I'm just going to smash this crate in a blind rage. There we go. Boiling dry. And then we cook up our birch bark. Boiling dry. Birch bark. And birch bark. And... No more birch bark. Okay. And our work boots are now ready to go. Onto our feet, that is. Still want to repair the ski jacket a bit more. I don't have two bits of cloth. I don't even think I have anything here to tear apart for cloth. Coal, rabbity bits. Oh, the weather outside is grim. But that could be a good sign that the birch bark is going to respawn. If it hadn't already. I didn't actually get a good look for it, did I? Hmm. I'm going to pick this back up because I used my accelerant already. And I want to be able to accelerate. Might even pick up this book as well, just so I have something easier. Ooh, this scarf. Nice, nice find. Well, we knew it was there this whole time, but... The scarf can be melted down for... Cloth to repair the other thing with. More birch tea. Uh, cook me up another litre of water, please. Just keep this fire going. Keep it nice and warm in here with this reclaimed wood. Some of your clothes take condition damage when you take the plunge, I'm not entirely sure, but maybe. It's surprising how poor this cotton scarf is, but I can still harvest it with some cloth. Any more for any more. Cloth, cloth, cloth. There is this cloth on the table, but you can't actually grab it, sadly. my lot. It's a shame because I ditched a lot of cloth somewhere and I can't remember where. Well, I'm sure it's a little problem for me. I need to repair you, or I want to repair you. 45 minutes. It'll be boiled in 8 and 16 minutes, so I think I will let you we'll create another litre of water. And another half litre of water. I'll make sure that you're able to go for long enough. And then we will try our luck at repairing this thing, because it's really, really good. Hopefully we don't fail, but there's a reasonable chance that we do. A for aces. Got it up there. A decent looking ski jacket with very good stats. Love the ski jacket. More water. More water. Give me back my pot. Give me back my can. The wood stove is about to just be done with, but that's okay. It's regrettable that we're not heading out at what is an amazing time of day, but listen to the weather out there, it's not a good time to be out. In terms of progress, we are eight days deep, only five days left to go. And now we're going to chug all of our birch bark tea. I've only got three of them, that's going to have to do. He knows the game too well, it was a soft challenge when he chose it, says Yosef Hassan. And yet, where is your gambling on victory? Calories, give me the healing, which I now need. Didn't need it before, but I sure need it now. Top ourselves off with water and sleep for well, as long as I can, really. I'll take, I'll take eight hours of sleep, please. Start the stream later, Jake. I don't want to wake up 4 a.m. on a Sunday. Ah, uh, touche. I wouldn't want to either. 
Okay, we did it, right? We saw through the hypothermia, the sprain, the starvation, and we're looking very good on our health. In fact, our health is so good. Could I be dying from starvation? We're almost at nine days with four days to go and two stims. We are almost invulnerable to losing, unless we just throw the situation, which we almost did before. I will probably wait here until light. There's no... I mean, I'm happy to take a bit of damage here and just head out later. Depends how it is out there right now, right? For all we know, it's just a, a wonderful situation out there. Let's go and have a look outside. Ah! Yeah, no, maybe a great day to see on Christmas Eve, but right now, no thank you. Hobble our way back to bed, just play with ourselves for two hours, and then take a proper nap. Constantly losing health, of course, because of starvation, but starvation doesn't hurt that badly. Remember, a human can go like three weeks without food, so... It's the laws of threes, isn't it? Three minutes without air, uh, three hours without shelter, three days without water, three weeks without food. So really, the fact that we didn't even have to last three weeks is just... <laughs> that was good, though. I wouldn't want to do a challenge that involved playing this game for 21 days or so. That's one thing I learned from the single region survivor. I think I set out to last a month in every location, and not one of them lasted a month. I had to say, we'll last until we are fully uh, self-reliant or something like that. Because a month is a long time to play in one go. Three hours without shelter. What? In, an, in extreme environments, hot or cold, you'll generally die uh, from exposure. You don't get... Well, depends how kitted you are, but these are some general rules. I don't think it applies during Canadian winter. Hmm. Right, what are we doing here? I guess I'll sleep for another four hours and see how we do. Normally, you don't want to sleep in short batches. The longer you sleep, the more you heal. But that's only if all your needs are met, and my hunger need is anything but met. Doesn't sound very good out there. Sounds very blizzardy. Yeah, well, hopefully a good sign that that birch bark is being shaken free of those trees, because all I need is one last Asda bag of uh, birch bark, and we are good to go. We have loads of matches, loads of capacity for water. Can I just sleep for two more hours? Normally, they wake up after a short bit of sleep and say, oh, I'm not tired enough, but I think if you actually have this starvation going, it doesn't stop you from it. That's kind of cool. But of course, our condition has gotten even worse. But it's slightly later in the day. It's not going to be so cold and brutal, and the blizzard has been and gone. So let's go and... Well, I might not even ever come back here. So I'm going to grab some of the sticks. Some of the coal. I'm going to check what I've got. Nine bits of coal, nine sticks. Let's make it ten bits of coal. And let's go for it. Is reverse outer loper possible, a.k.a. you can't use stuff from outside? Huh. Probably not. Eventually you're going to run out of food. It is anything but warm. I'm going to start my torch already. It's not bright enough to start a fire using the mag lens, I can tell just by looking. But let's go and hunt for some birch bark. And then, if there's no birch bark, I'm actually in a lot of trouble, because I would have thought it would respawn by now. Uh, but birch bark or no birch bark, we're going to hobble our way over to the ravine. Getting desperate for that birch bark. The ravine is actually a good direction to go, because if I'm incredibly desperate, and let's say we find no birch bark here and no birch bark in the ravine, then suddenly the run is at risk. So what I will end up doing is I will hail Mary towards um, Timberwolf Mountain. Timberwolf Mountain will still have some birch bark. And uh, if we still can't survive off of that, we'll have to go through to Ash Canyon. The proof of the pudding will be in whether or not we can find any birch bark on the ground here. Cold damage is still verboden, but I grabbed all that coal just to offset that. I'm not seeing a whole lot of birch bark around here. I'm seeing a whole lot of nothing. 
which is a very, very bad sign. There might be other places with birch bark in Mystery Lake, but oh, thank God, right, I've definitely walked over here before, so yes, the birch bark is back. Now we just need to find it. That's a good, uh, good reason to head back over to the ravine as well. And we can also just dip the ravine and dip back out and then sleep in Carter Dam or the Carter Dam trailers. Both are good. Quick, you're shivering and you're shaking, Shepherd. The situation is looking up. I saw that about petting the dog. I don't even think I've thrown stones at the dogs. As I said before, I don't like hurting dogs in games. Don't have a lot of empathy for people in games, but dogs? I grew up around too many animals. It is a bit cold. As we approach day 10, it's undoubtedly getting colder. I'm going to knuckle up against the wall here, set down a fire, probably make one of my birch barks. I mean, it's too windy. Get right up against here, shall we? There we go. Oh boy, the um, the oil that I picked up is insufficient accelerant. Maybe you need three hundred liters, uh, milliliters. God, no. You imagine needing three hundred liters? All right, Come I'm on. taking hypothermic damage, which is bad. Shouldn't be doing this. I should have set up this fire a Do I, minute prior, but that's okay. I can just have it down, oh shove on. A bit of coal, shove on a handful of sticks as well, and I'll warm up plenty. I got plenty of water, perhaps even too much water. And whilst I'm sitting pretty here, let's go and prepare ourselves two portions of birch bark. Our weather effect regional, yes and no. Probably no. Actually, it's not something I've looked into enough. But if it's blizzarding here and then I transition over to Forlorn Muskeg, it will still be blizzarding. As for whether or not a blizzard in Forlorn Muskeg will cause blizzard effects here, like, uh, say, blizzard effect of restocking beachcombing over in Coastal Highway or shaking loose the birch bark tea, I don't have an answer to that. I am not sure. 21 degrees here, perfectly nice and warm. I can warm up a little bit more even if I set this thing down and I just pass a little bit of time there. It's burning a bit, it's burning a bit. Well, that's no big deal. I will leave it here just to keep it warm. I'm not going to make more water, that would be wasteful. I don't think I'll pass an hour sleeping here, although it is tempting. It's extremely tempting. I know I've barely come any distance, but... Oh, what if it turns into a blizzard? What are my options then? I don't know what my options are. Tell you what, I can just keep you going here for a little bit. And I shall... I'll leave that there for now as well, just so I'm... Eh, I'll take you with me. I'm actually going to go and hunt for some birch bark, and I've got a little place there to go back to. Is that a wolf? No, no it's not. Shepard immediately shivering in her wee booties. Come on, Shep. You're harder than this. After playing this game for so long now, what do you find is the biggest challenge? Outer Loper. The biggest challenge in sex is the biggest challenge that I'd want to do. I know there are harder challenges. Some people play no Goa. Some people play outer no Goa. I don't like no Goa. I don't like two main things for it. I hate the fact that you just cannot heal outright. I feel it dips into your exploration um, opportunities far too much. And I really don't like how in outer in no Goa, you are constantly setting fires. You you walk for about a minute. You go, oh, I'm cold. Time to set down another fire. It's very flow breaking. I don't mind taking damage when I'm exploring. Because I know that I will get it back when I rest up. And you can start taking chances. How much do I want to explore? 
This looks promising, but my health is low. Do I double back and miss out on the opportunities, or do I keep on pushing through? None of that exists in Nogoa. It's just, oh, I'm cold. I better heal. Uh, not heal. I better start a fire, or else I'm going to take damage that can never come back. Rob's too much of the uh, decisions that you can make in gameplay. Is my opinion, and only my opinion. I know there are people that love playing Nogoa. Well, they seem like they love it. Otherwise, why would they be playing it so much? It looks like torture to me. Alright, I feel like the wind is picking up rather than the opposite. And it is more of a feeling than anything else. I might take a one hour kip next to the fire, warm up, get back some of my fatigue. My fatigue is just always in the red because I'm so hungry. I know the feeling. It looks like Birch Park spawns near the birch trees, says Mary Beast. A brilliant observation! <laughs> Do you think the sticks? Do you think the sticks spawn near the trees as well? <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay, okay, let's, uh. Let me. Let me not have the birch. Well, yeah, I'll drink one birch bark tree. Lum, num, 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 num. That campfire will be fine. I will take a one hour nap right here. Almost absolutely full of water. You know what? Since I'm going to be out for the camp for an hour, why don't I make a liter of water? One hour sleep. Please don't blizzard me while I'm sleeping here. This is always the risk of sleeping outside next to a campfire. You can wake up and just find your campfire is blown out in a blizzard going directly into your face. Didn't happen here. Although the wind did pick up. But still, I'm, I'm mighty warm right now. I even have a few calories left in my belly. I'm going to take two torches and move along. Still always on the hunt for more birch bark. Well, it was... It is a powerful wind. Too powerful to maintain a torch. I will probably squeak in past the camp office on the way back. Damn it. So hungry. I am aware... The calorific limits of this run, Shepard. Like a moaning to me about it. Although I was hoping for the birch bark respawns, and I do get the birch bark respawns, I feel like the respawns are not quite to the same caliber as the initial spawns. Either that or just missing them all, which is certainly possible. I'm certain what I'm looking at here just sticks on the floor. Right, I gotta pick up the pace here if I want to make my way over to camp office. There is a kind of train wagon thing that I can dump a uh, duck into if I need to. And I've also got this flare to keep the dogs at bay if the dogs need to be kept at bay. Don't want to waste the flare on it, especially since I dropped one of my flares back at the old uh, trapper's area. So I will hold on to the flare and only utilize it if the... Uh, situation necessitates it. What would you say is the best part about this game? The immersion. Honestly, a lot of the game can be pretty dull, laborious, esoteric. It's a freaking walking simulator, but it's just so immersive. When I fire up this game and play it, even when I'm talking on stream, in fact I play most of, this, most of the times I'm playing this game it's on stream, I just feel really sucked into it. This is me trekking through the snow, I'm hungry, I'm cold, my feet hurt, I can feel the gaps in my clothes so the wind blows right through me. It takes me right back to life in Scotland. I, I don't intend on living in Scotland ever again, but you never know what life has in store for you. But this almost makes me nostalgic for the freezing cold, thankless life I live in Scotland. Fond memories of motorbiking across between Inverness and Aberdeen. It was so unbelievably cold that I finally got to a traffic light after riding for, I think, about 40 minutes. And I, I remember the great feeling of warming up just because I wasn't moving. Right, the wolf can aggro like this. It's not frequently something that happens, but he can aggro. He will aggro if you aim something at him. If he sees you doing something aggressive, plus like this, he will aggro, but 
For now, he just kind of is, is walking the dog, basically. Just walking Fido along. But I made it to the camp office. Huzzah. No animals can enter through the doors. You can you can dev spawn them in, but uh, I'm not dev spawning anything. Or am I? What about those water breaks? This this footage looks spliced to you. All right, we're nice and warm in here. Not only that, I've got endless access to cloth, and I have been wanting some access to cloth. Yeah, I'll tear down the curtains for this cloth though. Good opportunity to repair some of my goodies. We'll warm up while we're doing so. Maybe take a brief nap for a couple of hours. I can do that upstairs. Don't need to use my bedroll here. Uses calories to break these apart, but my calories are already zeroed and they don't go negative, so happy day for Shepard. What day are we on? We are on day 10, meaning we have survived for nine days, four to go, and we are done. Pretty sure we could survive these four days just sitting around here. Uh, smelling our thumbs, but we'll be okay. Right, what am I doing here? What needs repaired? This would be better if it were even further repaired, and I will spend the time to do so. Good job, Shepard. Didn't fail. This thing is terrible, but it's all I've found. But you only repaired 25%. It's just garbage. I don't even want to waste my time with you. The work gloves are wet. The work boots have dried out. Socks are never worth repairing. My jeans are okay. Uh, I could do with repair, uh, replacing this head wrap, so I'm going to tear it apart for its cloth and make a new one. Then I'm going to take a nap for about an hour, and then we're heading out. I can't believe I haven't found any hats. I found a baseball cap and a scarf, but those hardly count. Don't you be making noises at me, Shepard. I heard that. Oh boy, listen to that. The weather actually got worse outside. You can hear the, hear the window frames rattling about. There we go. I'll keep the better one on the outside, because the better the condition, the better the wind protection. Whereas clothes that are under other clothes do not provide wind protection. In fact, of these four torso pieces, each of them have a wind protection stat, but only the outer one matters. In this case, the ski jacket, and of course it's got the best wind resistance anyway, but... Uh, if you did have different, uh, different coveralls, consider putting the one with the best wind resistance, like a windbreaker on the outside. All right, I have one whole cup of birch bark tea. I will drink it and take a nap. If only the first thing you done wasn't spraining your ankle, it would have gone all in. Best to be safe, I suppose. No, it's best to go all in and win. None of this best to be safe nonsense. You know that's not true. You're only lying to yourself, Calmist. Uh, let's not perpetuate the non-channel emote stuff, Marvin. We know if somebody came in spamming channel emotes, they'd be eating the hammer pretty hard. Never forget poor Invictus fellow. They subscribe, the first thing to do is spam emotes, and then just get smashed down. Uh, before we head our way out, let's make some last of that birch bark. We are technically healing right now because all of our needs are met. We've got zero calories. Oh, now we have zero calories. The lower end of zero. Okay, what are we doing now? It sounds sounds peaceful outside. It's late in the day. I might be able to make a little. I'm gonna look at the world map. Hmm. Hmm. Halfway towards the ravine. I think I'll. Uh, do I want to head towards the ravine? I do. I do. I want to be able to dip a ravine really fast. Situation is good. The mag lens will not start me a fire. You can quickly check by just thumping down this, and then if it doesn't say start fire with mag lens, it's not possible. But you can just look up in the sky, it's way too cloudy. Never in my life have I started a fire with a magnifying lens before. I've wanted to, but life in Scotland does not really allow for that. On the rare occasion where there is unadulterated sunlight, you are never going to find any tinder dry enough to ignite. Everything is wet in Scotland. I mean everything. Well, our, our humor, I suppose, is dry. Yeah, well, I can even set the game to auto-walk while I enjoy a drink. Hmm. 
So do acorns count as birch bark? Because I could grab some acorns from around these acorn trees. See how out of place they are compared to the other trees. Those little mounds next to them. Acorns. Uh, how many sticks do I have, anyway? 17 sticks is fine, especially coupled with my coal. And I seem to recall leaving coal behind over in the ravine, so I'm feeling quite confident about this. Do acorns come from birch trees? Yeah, also, are they bark? <laughs> God, I am hungry. I cannot wait to have my dinner tonight. I'm gonna have wee bits of fish with bruschetta. Some leafy greens. I think I ate all my tomatoes. Uh, do I get any kidney beans? Been hankering kidney beans lately. Ate my way through two tins of them. I'm pretty sure I bought a third. I'll eat my way through that as well. I'll eat my way through whatever I bloody well want after this run. I'm hungry. Just like Shepard. A book, a scarf. Uh, a scarf is worse than an improvised hand thing, strangely enough, but it is cloth. I think his one dying possession was a book on guns, but his other dying possession was a single piece of tinder. This snow is making my clothes wet. I don't appreciate that, but that's okay. We have plenty of opportunity to dry them out in one of the upcoming trailers. Now imagining losing this live now and having to start over all oh my days. You imagine another eight hours of this. Be 15 hours. Oh, I can't believe I've been at this for seven hours. Time really ticks by quickly when playing the long dark in my experience. But once victory is assured, I'll probably just pass the, the surviving days and just let Shepard die on day 13. You should play more of it, says Regulus Pratus. I have milked this game dry, in my opinion. At least until the DLC is complete, I've had my share. The, the game is back now because when I saw the entry on the weekly one-shot challenge, I just couldn't resist. Birch Bark Challenge, I haven't done that before. I haven't played the game. Good opportunity to de-rust. Just everything coming together. Also, isn't it beautiful? Can you imagine playing a Blizzard-only run and not being able to appreciate this? This looks... Even though this game is highly stylized, with a beautiful like, oil painting kind of look to it. This looks so much like real life. Big, heavy bits of snow fall, uh, falling down. Yeah, I, if, I, I can, if I immerse myself a bit, I can feel the snowflakes landing on my face. Yeah, you know that several strong jolts. It's better when there's no wind. When there's wind, it feels like your, your face is getting whipped constantly. And it's far less pleasant. Alright, what do we have in here? Use print, unnecessary. Often there are flares in here. Nothing but a newsprint. That is sad. What this does offer me is wind chill coverage and the ability to start a fire here with relative impunity. But that ain't happening. I think you climb inside one of those in the story mode. Yeah, yeah, and a bear. A bear pushes you over. I know what you mean, Shepard. I'm hungry too. Could even say I'm hungrier than you. There might be birch over there. I'm not taking the diversion. Don't want to risk this going unpleasantly. We're already getting uh, cold and wet on our way towards our target, which is a trailer. A couple of birch trees here, though. I suppose I could have a little gander. I'm not seeing any birch bark falling next to them. Tragic. We did spy some birch trees down by the trailers as well. I might take a diversion there, but we should remind ourselves that there is a moose guarding that area. Ooh, you see that tree rubbing? Yeah. A couple more over there. I'll take a gander. I'll see you. Brain risk is here because now I am carrying more than I reasonably can because Shepard is too tired. A question often comes up, why are you calling, uh, what are their actual names? I think it's Mark and Astrid. Why are you calling them Shepard? They have the same voice actor as male and female Shepard in Mass Effect. And I can't not hear it, so I just call them both Shepard. Besides, what kind of name is Astrid? 
Hello. Oh, it's a winner. Yoink, yoink. That is a pretty good find. And I know you're expecting me to just crest this and find a moose and go, and that isn't a... But no, I'm using all of my super senses, especially my ears, to tell if there's a moose nearby. I don't hear its clumpy stomps. I do see the moose markings there, though. There's definite moose markings in that tree. A couple more birch trees over there, but I don't want to go that far over just to check for them. At this stage, just two additional birch bark pieces is already a lovely boost up for us. that I should head over to the trailers now. I like to think I'm heading towards the trailers. I hope I didn't turn myself around. I did turn myself around. I've come over to the... the wrong place. 180 degree got turned. I don't even know how. I was looking at the bridge that I was meant to be going towards and then still made this mistake. Uh, this could just be a storm or it could be a blizzard. Either way, as long as there's no moose or wolf nearby, I should be fine. So that's the kind of experience you rob yourself of if you play with maps. Getting wet though. Getting real wet. Oh gosh. You can do it, Shepard. I know you're running directly into the wind, but you can do it. And hey, we're rewarded for our mistake by being greeted by yet more birch bark around these birchy trees. Come to me, yum, yum. Oh, if Shepard could just strip these trees bare of their birch bark, what a different run it would be. Our trailer is right there, we're safe. Hey, that's a tiny little moose marking on there. But there are no tiny little mice, uh, mooses. Only big, stompy mooses that just break all your ribs. It is probably the single most debilitating affliction that you can get in this game, broken ribs. Your, uh, your stamina and your fatigue just get mulched and you are unable to climb ropes. I, I'm not even sure if you can climb just regular little rock things. Uh, no, I want to go into this one, this one's got better, better bed. There we go. Conditions are getting grim, but that was a good bit of journeying through that we did, and none of our clo none of our clothes froze. They only got wet. And hey, look at these proper beds. To think we slept on the ground in the other place. This is good, though. This is very good. I can holster my flare. We don't need it here. I'm not hypothermic, and I've got two additional loads of birch bark to consume. I don't have the gubbins to be cooking them up here, so it's going to be another hungry night for Shepherd. But that's okay. Uh, is there anything I want to do while the going is good? It is technically maybe bright enough to do some mending, but there's really nothing worth mending right now. What I will instead do is tear apart this new cotton scarf. I don't think I have any birch bark ready though, do I? No, no, I do not. Well, that being the case, let's just drink our woes away. Who knows, maybe there's enough bits in this water to source some calories out of, and let's just sleep for eight hours. Very unfortunate. Look at our health bar, it's gonna drop by 8% during this sleep. Too hungry, too hungry for words. Still hungry, still nighttime, still injured in every way, but we just gotta drink and sleep some more. You thought moose was already the plural like geese? What do you think one moose was? I 
should be very grateful that your fatigue doesn't drop below half. All right, it's looking good. It's looking damn good. 10 days survived. Pretty confident we could just live out the rest of the days here, but let's actually go and grab our birch bark tea. We spent a lot of time outside. I don't think that uh, we run any real risk of... Oh, it doesn't sound nice out there. Any real risk of cabin fever. This is nice and bright. I could actually go around the back of one of these places as long as there's no wind. As long as I'm sheltered. I can't tell which direction the wind is coming from. Well, not this direction. Anyway, it's bright, so I can use my mag lens and start a wee fire out here. And just get these bits of... Um, bits of birch bark processed. Something weird happening in chat there. Am I still here? Feels like it's just suddenly went blip for me. Maybe it's something in my settings. <laughs> Review on ban request, that's what it was. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Maybe. Maybe in due time. <sighs> Alright, put your moaning shepherd and make me two batches of birch bark tea. Heat it up with a stick. I'm not going out in a day like this. We're just going to make our tea so we can drink it whenever. That wolf won't notice me. When you're crouched, you're far harder to spot. I just want my birch tea. Oh, the campfire blew out already. Got it. Got it. I doubt I can even throw a stick on you. Oh, I can. All right. I'll give you a torch for the hell of it. He noticed me the moment I stood up, of course. That's no big deal, though. There's no point going out and risking my bacon out there. Mm, I'll tell you some bacon would be good. Well, I can eat whatever I want if I just survive for three more days here. Let's just put this torch out on my belly. Drink up a bit more. Sleep up a bit more. I'll take another hour of sleep. Review. Jake seems the type to run in rough draft as a final. Ooh, well, hmm. I was never a great student. Probably because I discovered uh, Paradox Games whilst I was a student. And you better believe that put an end to anything resembling studying, attending lectures, attending... Uh, well, attending a lot of things. Actually, I'm surprised I didn't get kicked out based on attendance. Maybe they didn't measure that. It was a Scottish university after all. <laughs> They're just there to take foreigners' monies to subsidise the free guys. In Scotland, a surprising amount of things are free. Um, glasses are free. Eye checkups are free. Healthcare is free. Prescriptions are free. University is free. Man alive. It's good to be Scottish. Paid for by England. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Ugh. You guys are the best. Love you all. Alright, still just waiting for it to be much better outside than it is, uh, or it was. It's still all blustery and nasty. Should I go and dip anyway? I think I will dip anyway. I can always start a fire if I need to. But for all I know, the weather's not going to get any better today, and I do need to get out, and I need to not provoke the wrath of cabin fever. We have fre he free healthcare and make the English pay for it. Lovely, eh? it's a good setup. Yeah, everyone's happy. <laughs> I didn't know Scotland had higher education. <laughs> uh, well, actually, a uh, a standard bachelor's is four years in Scotland as opposed to three in England. So they do think we're dumber and make us study for longer. I'm sure there's a much more nuanced reason for that, but that's how it feels. First year of university actually just felt like hires, not even advanced hires. Really felt like a way for all the dum dums to catch up. And at least in first year, I was no dum dum. Problem was, wasn't until second year that I think I discovered paradox games. So there's that. Anyway, as we can see, the birch bark has respawned, and failing some incredible mess up, I am confident that we have everything we need to succeed in this challenge. I'm so cocky that I'm going to deploy the rope and dip into the ravine 
and you know, one, one bad slip there and I'm dead, so let's hope we don't dip it too badly. I'm a little injured, right? It's, it's not free in that regard. But I am confident that we win is not the same as this is a free victory. Free victory is do nothing and win. You don't, don't often get those in games, but they do happen. Anyway, birch, 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 birch. Branch. Oh, that's a branch. This is a stick. Stick. As long as I'm out of the wind, it's pretty warm, but when I am in the wind, it is Baltic. Which is just a term for cold, and I don't actually mean that I'm in the Baltic. Did I say I hate being cold? Because I really do. Who hates being cold? I don't mind being cold. Feels good. It's easier to warm up from being cold than it is to cool down from being hot. said being cold has always aided me in DDR, more than being hot has. DDR is much of my life. Alright, I shouldn't be over here, I should be dipping into the cave, get some warmth, do not take hypothermic damage. Hey, we're good, we're good, we're plus seven at the back of the cave here. And we shall warm up slightly at that plus seven by making all this birch bark, look at that, another five cups of birch bark. If birch bark didn't respawn, this would be a very different challenge. I would have had to, I would have had to make my way around to Timberwolf and Ash Canyon to get their birch droppings, or maybe even braved my way up through Mountain Town into Hush River. But then that would be a grim way back. There were certainly ways to make this run harder, but I don't think they would have been reasonable. Right? The reason this run is going so well is because I'm very good at this game. Once upon a time, I was passable. Now I consider myself very good at it. It's not uh, bright enough to use the mag lens, but we don't care. We are drowning in matches, so I'll just use one of my 18 matches. I'm not going to burn that cash, though. I'll keep that cash as a trophy. Oops, I shouldn't have used the match. I should have used a torch. Oh, well, there's a 25% chance I regret this and waste one Come of on, my 18 matches. As good at... Uh, no, I'm the best at Frostpunk. Perfect. Right, I'm just going to shove on coal. I can be wasteful like that. We've got all this coal, got all these sticks. I've even got this lump of firewood that I can shove on. Let's make some tea. I make tea, I warm up, I go out, I get more tea, I warm up some more. The cycle of life continues for us. I might be at this campfire for a wee while, so let's just throw on quite a bit onto it. And then you're ready, you come, you come, put you in, put you in, 13, done, done, put you in, put you in, boy this is so much birch bark, done, done, and there we go, 8 cups of birch bark tea, more than enough to get us through to the end. Even so, mm, I'm drink one of them right now, since they're nice and hot. And I'm going to go and deploy that rope. Uh, rope deploying takes, I think, about 15 minutes in game. It's not free to do. So I'll have that. I'll have a torch. Yeah, I've got other torches as well. That's okay. Wasn't chuffed with this torch. It's kind of crappy. But we're going to go and pick up more birch bark and deploy this rope. Don't think we'll go down just yet. But we'll be in a position where we can go down into the ravine. Historically, the ravine had a stim and a flare gun. I don't know if that's the case right now. But we'll find out together, shall we? Hope I don't fall down. You can fall off the rope and die, so let's hope that doesn't happen. I believe you can also run off the edge of the ravine and catch the rope. If you do not catch the rope, you die. I've never attempted to do it, because this game has permadeath. If you die, your save just goes blip gone. There is no way in-game of backing it up. You'd have to go and externally back up your save. Which is easy to do, but it's something I'd never want to do in this game, because the moment you start backing up a save in a game like this, then you start going, oh, I'm just going to reload my save because things didn't go so well. And, oh, yeah, I only died because I did this, uh, so I'll just reload my save, and then before you know it, you're rerolling saves on everything. 
I'm not the world's biggest fan of save scumming. It's not to say I don't always. Uh, it's not to say I don't do it. There are some games that I do save scum. And I think they're better for it. What was a game that I was save scumming quite a lot in lately? Because someone told me it's just how you play this kind of game. I feel like it was an old strategy game of sorts. It was certainly an old game. It detracts from the experience, so we'll just, just make a game in which you're not so beholden to loading saves. Maybe it was an FPS? Hitman? Was it Hitman? Oh yeah, of course. Oh man, when I didn't know how to play Hitman. Saving all of the scum, but now with uh, Hitman contracts. Uh, freelancer, that's it. No save scumming. Feels a lot better. I haven't played it in probably over a month now. Even more birch bark. What a time to be alive. I think I have squeezed Hitman Freelancer dry of content. I feel like I've done everything everywhere now in that. Alright, alright. Give me another torch. It's reassuring that laziness stops Jake from save scumming. I almost forgot about the Hitman arc. Grim times. You didn't like it? I love playing Hitman. But uh, let me think. I did the Hitman Go. I did Hitman Weekly One Shot. I did three sessions streamed of Hitman Freelancer. Then I had the Hitman Freelancer Weekly One Shot. And then I was done. I did play more Freelancer in my spare time, but in terms of streaming it, I was done. Alright. I should be fine just setting up the... Oh wait, crumbs. Where does it go? I should only go here. I think it's a little bit further along. It's been a while since I've deployed this rope. Will you eventually take a look at Victoria 3? When it is eventually worth playing, I will take a look at Victoria 3. That's also an if. If it becomes worth playing, I will take a look at Victoria 3. Okay. Do we chance it down there? Should we chance it down there? A bit risky, but I might. I might. Yeah, go on then. Come on. I'm not scared. But yeah, if I slip and fall from here, I'm dead. So let's not die. And just seeing the sprain risk, <laughs> no longer warming up. Should have left more of my goods at the top, but I'm only down here to see if I can get myself a stim and a flare gun. Vicky three devs. We never considered in a game about constructing things, people might get their construction output very high. Does the game just break at certain output levels? Not be surprised. Well, I'm not surprised, but I'm quite sleepy. Okay, well, I don't see the stim that's normally in here, but that is that has quite likely been... Oh, 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 there we go. This has just become worthwhile. Excellent. As long as I don't kill myself on the way up, but I will endeavor not to. Check and see if there's anything else worth our time down here. We are very tired. Even climbing down a rope is very knackering for us because we're so hungry. You'd think it'd be easier. Shepard surely lost a lot of weight, so climbing that rope, especially on the way down, should be nice and easy. On the other hand, since we've lost weight, proportionally carrying around 23 kilos of gear, especially down a rope, probably takes a lot more out of her. Wow, still going. I've been to the pub. I've had a Sunday lunch. I've walked the dogs. I've been shopping. How many days are we up to now? How many stims down? Zero stims down. Ten days survived. We now have three. Count them. Three stims. As well as seven cups of tea. I am quite confident in how this is going. I could sleep down here, but I plan on stimming my way up, so I won't bother. This is actually a nice place to be. Plenty of sticks, rabbits, cattails, forageables, that stim, of course. And it is the way to get to Bleak Inlet to set up the... Uh, the rope to allow you to go between the upper and lower parts of Bleak Inlet. Yeah, Shepard getting her beach body ready for her uh, her holiday out in Tuchanka. 
Get that radiation tan going. <laughs> Worth it for the stim, using it to get back up. Yes, but the net benefit there is plus 15 health. You're not wrong, right? Use a stim to get a stim, but in a run like this, that's a good trade. Of course, the better trade would be don't use stim, get extra stim, but uh, there's no way I'm risking that rope climb as a malnourished, literally starving, twig-limbed Commander Shepherd on her Canadian holiday. Hell, if I have to use two stims to get out of here, I'll do it. Fifteen. I thought it was five. Nah, stims give you fifteen. Look at our health right now. I suppose we're not going to get a number, a numeric value for it, are we? But the important thing is getting up and the heck out of here. So, Shep, let's freaking go. That is very, very, very slow climbing. I might actually need to use two stims to get out of here. <laughs> Oh god, oh god, she's slowing down from the tiredness because it's uh, because of the starvation. I need to get up to that little ledge there and stim again, or else I'm gonna die. Yeah, wow, okay, cool, I didn't know that. Guess we're all learning stuff today, huh? Alright, let me let me onto the ledge. There we go. Alright, so you get this this uh, energy boost. But I had no idea that uh, starvation overwrote it like that. Over, it, uh, it's, although it's meant to maximize your, f uh, your fatigue thing, it actually doesn't work the way I wanted it to. Alright, I'm going to let that energy boost subside and then use the other stim to get out. How many kilos of water? I've only got a kilo of water on me. And I suppose my seven cups of tea. Nom nom nom. A cleverer person would have left more at the top. But don't worry, this is all part of the plan, because in the end, this is just flat health gain. Whether I get it at 80% uh, health, is that what I'm at? I'm at 78% health. So now when I stim again, I'm probably going to go up to more than that. Anyway, it knackered, so we stim again. What do you mean, two encumbered to climb? <laughs> go, Shep, go! Uh-oh, uh-oh. I didn't have all my, uh, all my stamina back. Crumbs, come on. Why did I not have my stamina? Why does Shepard not have any stamina? I need you to have that stamina. That energy boost doesn't last forever, you know. I should have waited a bit longer, maybe? Alright, that's gonna have to be enough, I think. Come on, Shep. <laughs> Still one stay. It would be funny if Jake dies here, says Acronymous. Card carrying member of the lose lobby. Come on, Shep. Just get up and over. You can fall even from here, but we made it. I have fallen even from there. I uh, fell even from there. Alright, there we go. We got a huge amount of healing out of that. Look at that. Up to 93% health. We got all the birch bark. I wasn't worried for a moment. Unlike that rabbit. He was very worried. I would have been so good if I'd nailed that shot. But no. Uh, now we're very, very tired. But that's okay. We're also very full of good goods. I, lay down and have a little sleep right here. I wonder if my fire is still going. I was just teaching that rabbit some uh, necessary survival instinct, kitty. It is the circle of life. I see the rabbit. I eat the rabbit. I poop out the rabbit. That poop fertilizes the land to grow the grass that the rabbit eats so that I can eat the rabbit. I am so hungry. <laughs> In real life, I am so hungry. <laughs> I didn't have my usual muesli for breakfast. I had uh, a rice pudding. Reason being was that, um, yeah, I woke up at 8, as I often do. I was like, ah, can't wait to do the, uh, the long dark. But, you know, I'm a little bit tired. I want to be in my A game. I'll, I'll just take a little... And then I woke up at 9.40. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, it's time for 
time for some uh, streaming. I didn't want to be late for this one either, because I know there were a fair few people looking forward to this one. So I just wolfed down a rice pudding rather than a slightly longer to make muesli and yogurt breakfast. Proving to be my undoing. Very hungry. Would be a lot less hungry if I had all those oats in my belly. A Scotsman lives and dies on his oats, after all. There we go, back with seven minutes to spare on my campfire. So let's just throw on some firewood onto it to keep it going. Your fire does not lose heat until it burns out. So if you put two bits of coal on it and then just leave it be for ages, it'll still have the 40 degree heat from the coal until uh, it burns out and then you can feed it later. Anyway, did I leave water behind here? I, I thought I left water behind. Maybe I did next to the rock. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to make myself another liter and a half of water here, whilst I actually take a nap first. I don't want to take unnecessary damage, so let's take a one-hour kip. Yeah, nice venison steak as reward for surviving would be nice. I don't think I have much in the way of meat here. I got some frozen beef, but I'm not going to thaw it out right now. Oh, golly gosh, I thought I'd put more in my campfire. Boiling dry, boiling dry, and I got four of you, so I'm free to make another, yet another, two bits of birch bark. Yeah, some good health. Might be able to max it out here, actually, just to really style on the entire challenge. Cook us up the prepared birch bark. Cook us up the prepared birch bark. Anything I can do during that time? Uh, nothing comes to mind, so I'll just pass it through. Chonk, chonk. Where's the rest of my birch bark? Oh, I must have made all the other ones, right? Yeah, no birch bark here, no birch bark here. But look at all that. One, two, three, eight, nine. Nine cuppers and a couple of my stems. Well, one. I used a couple, but that's okay. I think I'll make myself another batch of water. Whilst I take a kit, drinking one of my birch barks, and then we are going to feel resplendent. There's steroids, not adrenaline. That will royally bugger your heart. Oh, well, that's okay. The second one will surely unbugger it. Water, water, make me more water, and water, and I'll take another hour kip. Oh, well, maybe if the fire is able to go for another hour here, have some more cold, I don't care. I think the weather's turning a bit out there. Yeah, only a little bit. Water, water, pot, pot. Look at that staggering amount of health. 95%. If I chugged one more birch bark tea, we'd be up at 100. I see no reason to. I'm not going to throw this challenge just because I'm feeling cocky. But what I will likely do is... I'm not really in any... Uh, is there any real threat here? There's really only two days that I need to survive now, aren't there? once this night passes. So I honestly think I'm just gonna go back to the Hunter's Lodge and win the challenge. So I'll just take these goodies with me. Not even the Hunter's Lodge, I don't need to go that far. I just need to go back to the trailer and call it a day. I should be able to pass a couple of days on these cups of birch tea. Then again, what if I get cabin fever? Eh, then I just go outside for a while. I am brimming with confidence, and I'm extremely hungry. And would you look at that, nature has decided to congratulate my foregone conclusion by giving me even more birch bark. Have we seen an aurora? There have been auroras, but only when I'm sleeping. I saw no reason to risk myself out in the aurora. Feels good to still have my touch at this game. I had thought since I hadn't played it since July last year. I hadn't even been playing it in my spare time once I finished doing, what was it, nine of the single region survivors, maybe ten of them. I just put the game down and said, I can't wait for that DLC to be complete. Every eight to ten weeks, a new release. Freaking Hinterland, man. What are they doing? 
Did they just luck into this amazing game? Surely not. This, this game has been a real labor of love. So what in God's name is happening with the DLC? If I had to guess, it's being... Uh, there's a B team working on supporting the Long Dark, whilst the A team are moving on to new projects. It's only a guess, but it's an educated guess. Good God, it's been that long. Where's my life gone, says Rusley? Only you can answer that. I know where my life has gone. Gone to chilling out at Lake Balaton, where I'm very happy to be. The sun is setting. It's gonna get a lot colder soon. Not my problem, Shepard. Let's play juggling with the torch for extra laughs. Can I catch it? Can you let it catch you? Oh, no. Not even sure if you can interact with it while it's falling. I really comb through this yard enough? It's very strange to have gone this far and still not found a crowbar or a hammer. The hammer have ver uh, the hammer's locations are very set, but crowbars are all over the place. I'm normally drowning in crowbars. I know I could get one easily by heading over to the broken railroad maintenance yard. That one always has a crowbar. Did I just hear a bear? Well, I know the bear is never in here, so I'm fine. sudden bear out of nowhere now. That would be a stim to win situation. Oh god, yeah, they're adding a trader to the game. I really don't think that's a good match for uh, for free play. But maybe they do it in such a way that's amazing. My initial instinct is that adding extra planets to Factorio is a pretty bad addition, but I've never played Space Thingy, and uh, if there's one company I think is going to do a good job, it would be Woob. They are the current can-do-no-wrong developers. Until they do wrong, that's where they'll remain. Jeez, this is cold. Don't slam the fence in your face, Shepard. are over here. And of course that's against the wind, so it's even slower to move. There we go. Oh, no doubt there'll be settings to turn off the trader. If not, well, uh, good thing they love modding communities in Hinterland. I can't see a damn thing, but fortunately, aeons ago, we found this. There we go. It's turned completely around. All right, let's just I look at the bed. If the hypothermia wouldn't kill me. Put you away. And then what's going on? Well, there's not really any need to drink any of my birch bark tea. I'm just going to drink water. Lovely water. And then we just sleep for ten hours, or whatever. I'm sure it's an unfulfilling and alienating end to this run, but we have done everything we need to do. We've got all the resources we need to survive, and it's all we can do to survive. And because we're so tired and starved, I think we can continue to sleep. At least until we end up with, um, with cabin fever, but that's its own problem. You've survived 10 days and 23 hours. All right, uh, let's, I don't know, add another 10 hours to that. This is the ultimate diet regime. <laughs> don't eat, but also don't move. That's got to be the worst for you, though. There we go. 11 days. Huzzah. Two more days and we're out of here. And then I can just you just keep drinking my birch bark tea and sleeping my woes away. And get a bit more healing out of this if I just slurp down maybe three cups of it. And even if we end up starving horribly, I can always stim to get a little bit more out of my health. We're gonna sleep for another ten hours. Uh, if that, where are we on the? Oh, wow! We're not seeing any risk of um, of cabin fever. Isn't that wonderful? All right, sleep up again, Chef. Depression is known to make you lose weight, but it's also it's also known to make you gain weight. All right, all right. 
still no even risk of uh, of cabin fever. So, I'm so hungry. Would you stop complaining, Shepard? It's all you've done, all run. Just because you haven't eaten for twelve days, you think you need to tell me about how hungry you are all the time? Jesus. How in God's name do we still not have cabin fuel? That's a good testament to the amount of time we've spent outdoors on this run. And that stands to reason because we've been out there hunting for birch bark, so of course we'd have uh, spent a lot of time outdoors and not feel the cabin fever. Although, God, sleeping in some mangy old shack like this, a very cold one, it's actually freezing inside here for uh, about three days. Probably not going to do well for anyone's psyche. We are on the 13th day, so of course 12 days have passed. Mm, yeah, let's just sleep for another 10 hours. Normally you wouldn't be able to sleep for so long because you'd be maxed out on your fatigue meter, as in you have no fatigue. But thanks to this challenge, thanks to the fact that we're always starving, Shepard's always happy to go to sleep. Cabin fever risk is building, but I reckon the next time we hit the hay, we're going to be looking at 13 days survived. So... Shepherd, just uh, drink your tea. Chumro can taste the points. Does it taste a bit woody there? Good thing I made all this water, actually. I wasn't even thinking about how much water I'd need for this extended period, but it seems to be working out just fine. Take another 10 hour kip there, Shepherd. Just my health bar yo yoing up and down due to starving, yet sleeping, yet gaining birch bark magical health. You have now survived for 13 days, 2 hours, and 15 minutes. Damn right we have, and that is victory. I think my stomach is eating itself. Don't worry, Shepard, you're going to have a real treat. You're going to have two whole cups of birch bark tea. Didn't need the second life. So much wasn't needed in all of this. But honestly, uh, no ill will against the submitter of the challenge. I'm just too damn good at the long dark. <laughs> Okay, there were a couple moments here where I was feeling a bit antsy, falling through the water and the initial spawn with the broken leg, but we made it through. So the obvious thing is to go and hug the nearest wolf and call it a day. Just make absolutely sure you have survived for 13 days. Great. Let's go and say hi to a wolfie and uh, feed our malnourished body back to the wildlife. Actually, if I can find the moose and get... Oh, yes! Yes! The only way to end the run... Hug the moose. Hug the moose. Oh. It's not your tinnitus that is making you the ear ringing noise. Oh, you get shepherd. Oh, <laughs> not even really controlling, you just stagger backwards. Alright, I'll show you what's for Moose. Ugh. God, we're still alive? Get up, Shepard. There's life flowing through your veins yet. Barely. There we get the broken ribs. I'm, I didn't even know it could go up to uh, a counter of them. But yeah, Shepard doesn't feel so good. <laughs> Stamina bar is now just minced down to not a lot. But yeah, it could, could live after all that. We'd be stuck with broken ribs for 168 hours of recovery. That has to be 168 hours spent resting or sleeping, so in reality it's more like a month. I knew a guy that broke his ribs because he got ran over by a horse, and I seem to recall it being a long time before he was really up and operational. 
All right. Well, the obvious thing to do is just to take our shot steroids straight into the heart and see if we can't go and hug another animal. Can't explain it, but for some reason we're freezing Damn. cold. I'm freezing. Unlikely to find a bear, but at the end of here... Well, Lord Barrington has been known to prowl at the end of this wee corridor here. Is that really the kind of yawn you do after being stomped on by a moose? It would be like, uh, oh, oh. I imagine. I've never broken a rib or any other bone in my body. I plan on keeping it that way. Teeth are not bones. Oh, I've Stop broken my teeth before. Broke a tooth on a pretzel. That was painful. Still love pretzels. I still don't love breaking my teeth. Okay, well there's a bunny. Can we can we get the lesser known Aurora bunny to help us out? Bunny! I'm sorry. Can't even pet the bunny. You broke your teeth oh, eating a Malteser's McFlurry. Good God, man. Oh, ah, yeah, frozen chocolate could be no joke. With a bit of leverage, I'm sure they could do some damage to your teeth. At this rate, I'm going to die to the cold rather than finding the wolves. But just beyond these two rocks, there's almost always a gaggle of wolves. After all, they hunt in packs, but we are so broken we can barely move. The obvious thing to do is just to shed our everything drop it all, right? We, we don't need any of this where we're going, which is straight to hell for everything we've done against bunny kind. Get rid of the water shepherd. Get rid of all the tools as well. There we go. I broke two ribs in June last year and I still haven't fully recovered. Oof. Man, that must have hurt. Must still hurt. Laughing must be really painful then. Which is funny, so that must be doubly sucky for you. One of the little chocolate bits they put in the McFlurry got stuck and the cold basically shattered the tooth. Ooh, yeah, that sounds grim. I've had a lot of painful experiences in my life, but never breaking anything. I like to imagine if I did break something, it wouldn't actually feel that bad, because there's no way it can compare to some of the greater pains I've felt in life. I had a dentist in Sweden who did not use anaesthetic. I went through the whole um, Invisalign procedure, actually. Not once did that man give me any kind of aesthetic. He just went right in there, <laughs> whole drilling and sawing and shaping and crushing, and I'm just, I'm lying there going, <laughs> and he says, hey, it's okay, it's okay, yeah. One one day I even said, listen, buddy, could I please get some anaesthetic? And he said, yeah, no problem, no problem. Sits me down. And it goes, no anaesthetic, just straight in with the drills again. What a guy. Well, he certainly wasn't from around there. Who the heck doesn't use anaesthetic and dentistry, this guy? Okay, I was certain I'd find some wolves here. I just wanted someone to end poor Shepherd's misery, and it certainly is misery. Maybe Lord Barrington is over here. He's often on the prowl over on this side. Is nobody coming to put poor Shepherd out of her misery? She is so brittle right now. You lay down and you've got a, a frozen Shep sickle to eat. Yeah, exactly that, Marisa. The one time you want some hostile animals and you can't find them. The ice won't break either, but ice would put a swift end to Shepard as well. But there's no thin ice in... Uh, I think the only thin ice, actually, is in Forlorn Muskeg. Aside from, of course, the coast, but coasts don't count. Then you can just run into the water straight up. At this rate, we're going to die of the cold. 
Can't believe the wild animals aren't around. On this lake, there's almost always wolves. I don't think I've ever been here and seen no wolves whatsoever. And not even Lord Barrington is out in the prowl. Normally, this is a stomping ground right here. Well, I absolutely want to sacrifice my body to some kind of thing, so this is why we go, Whee! Where are they? Where are all the animals? Did we actually unlock some kind of super ability where we despawn all the animals just through our sheer force of will? And maybe we've just become so woody. We are just a puppet now and nothing wants to eat us anymore. But where, oh where, is the freaking anything? Anyone spot a bear? I can hear a wolf in this general direction at least. Oh, there's always a wolf around here. I don't wanna I don't wanna get another hug from our friend the uh, the moose. I can't, I can't believe it, where are all the animals? The hostile animals that is. I don't really care about the bunnykins and the others. This is the fly command, by the way. Really fun way to get familiar with a map. Or just get a bigger picture of it all. Of course it is cheating, but I don't care. We've already won the challenge. Wolf, please put an end to me. I have lived for too long. There we go. True Ascension. 13 days survived. 53 locations. 19% of the world. That's more than I'd expected. Did more exploring than I thought. Calories expended, very, very few. Considering my 238-day run did 800,000, this one did, uh, well, a lot less average calories per day, 506. <laughs> you die. You die on that few calories per day. If I was traveling 60 kilometers total, I wouldn't want more than double that, more than triple that, probably. Resting, indoors, outdoors, that's not a bad ratio of indoors to outdoors, especially considering, what, like, 40 or 60 of those are right at the end. And then, of course, Mystery Lake was the king. Pleasant Valley, Forlorn Muskeg, Six Repair, ah, none of this is interesting, is it? Just get me out of here. Ooh, we'll not be saved. Well, no skin off my nose. Anyway. Anyway, anyway. You know what that means? That means we choose our prediction. There were 66 people backing me versus the 56 that voted against me. And I see, well, well let's just see the outcome and get it on screen first, shall we? It was victory for me, obviously. Five and a half million channel points flowing into the very correct coffers. And let's get the point summary up and on the screen. I don't have it ready here because this is not my usual scene, but I have the Power, add existing, what's this thing called again? Predictions? Predictions? Eh, predictions. There we go. Oh man, my beloved chosen brothers in Christ. 66 of you, led by the mighty Junan, Matty Mayo, Lama, Aether, Gravoid, Anon Numbers, Pandy, Lamlarm, and Ion Shix all going in with the big money. And it was only Jumro coming in with, oh, uh, it's not quite top amounts. Inflation is killing us around here. I hope Twitch will trash the point inflation. Anyway, phenomenal, truly phenomenal. But of course, wouldn't be glorious victory if there weren't people just generating their points and then just throwing them over to the win lobby. They don't need them. Pitter patter splatter didn't need a quarter million, needed a million. Von Duke, how could you vote against me, Dougals? You of all people should know that I have what it takes to defeat this baby challenge. Birch Bark Tea Challenge, difficult, long, dark challenge, as if. Sinan, Kruzak, and other bloody losers that I shouldn't even name, they all dedicate their points to the win lobby, and I myself don't have to roll a punishment game. Don't have to do anything for a couple of days. I've got a couple of days off, which is rather nice. Maybe I'll just watch Avorion hum in the background. Enjoy some lovely food. I want to go and find some head cheese as well. That's been preying on my mind. But anyway, the future is mine to hold, as my fellow win lobbyists have. And until I am back with more streams starting from Wednesday, is a cheers and a cheerio.